<laughs> Hi everyone. Welcome to Foundry virtual class. Actually it's an open webinar. No, uh, welcome and uh, I'm very happy to meet everyone, you <laughs> know. So I'll just uh, uh, borrow some time, no, and uh, share to you the protocols of the class. So uh, I first of all I would like to introduce myself. I'm architect Gerard Michael B, one of the founders of Foundry. So uh, can you see my screen, guys? Yeah. Okay. So thank you. So welcome to Foundry. So today, you no, know, we have this uh, open webinar, you no know, RA ninety two sixty six Architecture Act of two thousand four in legal methods. You no, know, will be presented by architect Alfredo Fernandez. And uh, welcome to the Foundry virtual class. So to just uh, share to you some webinar protocols. You no. Know, so let's follow the schedule. Uh, we will be having our recess break also uh, during uh, in the middle of the the program. And uh, if there are any technical difficulties, you no, know, uh, please give us 15 minutes allowance to fix the problem. Okay. And then uh, and then next another protocol will be uh, for the tech. You no. Know? So please use the Zoom platform. You no, know, in your laptop or your PCs. No, but if you are using your smartphone, okay lang po yan, no? Kaya lang medyo limited lang po yung features ng, ng Zoom sa, sa smartphone, no? Uh, anyways, no, so you, uh, kasi meron po mga features ito na kapag sa laptop, no, you can participate fully by uh, raising hands and also uh, participating through annotations, no? So anyway, so we encourage you to use your laptop or your PC, no? Uh, when joining our webinars, no? And uh, the recording of the class is discouraged, no, but the screenshots may be allowed. And uh, it will be further discussed to you by our uh, mentor, uh, by our speaker no, later on. And then turn on your cameras. No? So this is a very important webinar protocol right now. No, since this is a free webinar, we would uh, like to practice yung responsibility natin by um, turning on your camera so that we can see your face. And then we can monitor the class. No, it's for your security and safety as well. No, so we we uh, request everyone to turn on their cameras so that we can see you. And then mute your microphones when you enter the virtual class, okay, or the webinar, okay. So you can also use the chat feature and the annotate features of this Zoom platform not to participate. So for those who just uh, came in and participate here in Foundry through the Zoom platform, you will notice that there is a uh, menu menu bar at the bottom of your screen. No, can you check it out right now? And then there is a on the left up uh, lower left portion there is a microphone, diba? Nandun yung mute button. And then followed by the uh, by the video, diba? So please turn on your cameras. And then it will be followed by participants. So as of now we are 56 participants as of now, as you can see. And then there is a sharing button and then there is an um a chat no you can see there this there's a chat no there's a chat feature chat uh window you can click that the chat window and then you will see that there's a group chat no in this platform you can ask your questions and raise your concerns to me no through the platform for uh, through this zoom group chat okay so now i'll be uh can can we all try it? No, I'll be uh, typing typing here. No. Okay. So I type something. No, to everyone. I typed in good afternoon, everyone. Can you see it? No. So I hope you can see it. No, you can reply. No, to that uh, message, so that you can try to. Uh, yeah. So everyone is uh, replying. So you can use that chat feature or group chat not to ask your questions or any concerns okay okay yeah thank you yeah maraming salamat marami po nakakita dito okay so next no okay so next po no uh hindi po tayo pwedeng makapag-record ng class no, nakita nyo at the bottom of the screen there is a record button that but we are discouraging the recording of the class no uh, and also, but you can screenshot no if you if you need no. Uh, anyways, so uh, next no next uh, webinar protocol is body. So be responsible with your personal needs no. If you need to uh, go 
ano tayo, excuse muna tayo, puta tayo sa toilet or need the water break, no, you can do so. Just be responsible about your own personal needs, no? And maintain a conducive environment for learning because we are uh, spending the whole afternoon, no, medyo mainit po, di ba? Pero we'll be spending the whole afternoon today, no, please make sure that you have a conducive environment for learning, no? And uh, para mas maganda po, no? Wala pong ma masyadong maistorbo sa atin sa pag-aaral natin. And then material natin, uh, please have your pen and paper to take notes, no? So that for those who are joining right now, na magte-take ng ale, no? Na October and January, this is a very useful uh, seminar for you and for our professional architects who are here right now, it is also very important in our practice, right? Diba? So please take this opportunity to take down notes. No? And also, lastly, no, interaction. No? So please respect one another because this is a virtual class. No? Uh, this is our way of reaching out to, to one another. No? So let us, let us respect one another and uh, use your full name no, when entering the virtual classroom. And also, very important thing is to have fun learning. Okay. So again, no, welcome for those who uh, just came in. No, welcome to Foundry. And uh, also, we are live as well in our Facebook uh, group, no, the Foundry Ale Mastermind. It is a Facebook group dedicated no, and uh, uh, exclusive no, for all the Foundry students and Foundry a community, you know, mga mentors, mga architects, nandun po lahat, nagtutulungan po para uh, ma-reach po ang goal natin na makapag-review at makapag-board makapag, makapag, uh, uh, exam, no? At maging licensed architects, no? So, it's a lively community, no? So, hello, welcome to our friends here in Foundry Ale, uh, Ale Mastermind. Okay, so, that's it, no? Guys, at uh, I hope you follow the protocols. No, uh, we will be monitoring the class closely. We have some, we have foundry administrators here who will be monitoring the class as well. Okay, so the schedule. Okay, so we will be having our webinar. No, later. No, medyo na skip na natin ng konte. No, but uh, it will be up to 5:30, and after the, after the webinar. Uh, to be uh, conducted by our, our uh, speaker, you no know, architect Alfredo Fernandez. You no, know, uh, we will be having some uh, promotions, you no, know, and special announcements, you no, know, for those who attended this webinar, you no, know, and also some programs about uh, Foundry. Okay, so now let's try to uh, use the annotate uh, feature of the web of the Zoom platform. So hello everyone. Again, I'm architect Gerard D. No, I would like to know kung saan po kayo galing. No? Kung saan po kayo ngayon nanunood nitong webinar na ito. Okay? So can you use the annotation button? No, so you drag your you drag your cursor on top of your screens and then there will be a uh, toolbar. Lalabas po yung toolbar doon tapos meron doon isang feature doon annotate. Okay? So when you click on the annotate Makikita nyo po doon, you can write, you can type, you can stamp. Yeah, sige, paki, paki sulat lang po kung saan po kayo galing, kung saan po kayo nanunood ngayon. Okay, so buong Pilipinas po tayo <laughs> ngayon, di ba? Okay, so marami, meron po nanunood galing sa Manila, galing sa Bulacan, galing sa Pampanga, Dagupan. Hello, kamusta po sa inyo? Taga Laguna. Wow, meron tayo taga Cebu. Maraming salamat po no sa taga Davao din, Naga, Kamsur, Palawan. Ay kinikilabutan ako, ba't ako kinikilabutan? <laughs> Kasi wow, ang dami nating nanonood ngayon. So maraming salamat po no sa Cavite, no? Saan pa po? Sa Fairview, Mandaluyong, Pasig, Kam Palawan, no? Kamsur. Okay, maraming salamat po. Pangasinan, meron din. Paranaque. Okay, Laguna. Ito yung iba po, hindi ko tapo makita. <laughs> Ayan, maraming salamat po. Meron po ba tayong taga ibang bansa po dito? Ha? Meron po ba tayong taga kasi meron po tayong mga nag nag uh, register na galing pa po sa Middle East, no? Sa ay taga Ilocos, meron din po. Maraming salamat no sa Sampaloc at napakaganda po no. Hindi ko na po ito may screenshot kasi sa sobrang dami. 
<laughs> okay, anyway, so maraming salamat po sa pagdalo ngayong Foundry Virtual Class po natin. No, uh, ay. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay, so now no, I would like to ask our participants to to mute all your microphones, no? Paki-mute lang po lahat ng microphones po natin para hindi po tayo uh, ma masyadong maingay. So again, no, I'll be uh, asking everyone to turn on their cameras no, so that we could see your faces. Okay, it is part of our protocols po. Okay, so next is this one. Okay, so Foundry is a progressive school no, and uh, this is our vision. No, this is... Uh, it, we are not just a review center. No, we are a uh, uh, transition learning uh, school. No, and uh, we envision that uh, Foundry will become a growing ground for progressive adult learning. We are here to assist you from your point A to point B. So, kung point A natin is ano tayo nag apprentice tayo ngayon, and ang point B natin maging licensed architect. So, we provide you with the transition learning. Now, if you're a professional architect already, that's your point A. And your point B is to you want to become, um, to have your own architectural firm. You have you want to expand your business. So we offer you the PDPs or the professional development programs natin sa Foundry. So transition learning po ang, ang Foundry. You know? And this is our these are our core values. What I resonate right now today is... Um, uh, openness, no. So openness, openness to learn, no. That is what I resonate right now, uh, because syempre, and dami na natin parang learning, si ba? But we embrace learning, di ba? So open to change, open to new learning. Okay, this is our community. This is our. This is. I'm sharing to you some pictures that we uh, took, no, from the previous. Op para nung open po namin, nung nag, nag launch po ang Foundry last year. These are our, our community of architects, progressive architects in the Philippines. This is a picture of our mock board exams. Very successful students. No, it's a two day seminar. No, it's actually it's not a seminar, but a workshop. No, that uh, prepare them. No, really prepare them for the the ALE. No, this is a, a very uh, in demand class in Foundry. We also help hold uh, professional development programs just like this one. We have a very uh, nice classroom that you can also uh, see and check. No, because sat ngayon naka quarantine tayo. Pero in the future, if we will be needing classes na naka social distancing po, we can we can have that because uh, our space is and uh, can accommodate it. No, this is our focus on design class. It is very interactive. No, and the people and students, no, we really learn uh, many things, no, in the in the class. Uh, we also hold uh, uh, coaching, something like this, no. And most importantly, we have a very fun community, no. You mga students po, dahil sa ganyan nagiging mas close po sila, no, nagiging talagang family, no, at uh, supporting each other to achieve their dreams. We can hold up to 200 participants, no, in a class. This is a bubble event, no, held by or conducted by the Buen Salido Architects, no. And uh, this is our scholars, no. So watch out, no, for our our uh, announcement uh, later on because we are we will be launching our next uh, scholarship program. Okay, so please watch out for that. So we because of the COVID nineteen. We also responded and adapted to change, and thus we have the virtual learning, no, so virtual classes, no. So I hope you can check out our virtual classes, and it's really uh, effective, no. We we just fit, we will be finishing our first batch of uh, virtual classroom na course, no, and uh, we are very happy that we are able to actually learn, no. And these are sample snapshots of our Zoom classes that are highly interactive and very. Uh, no, uh, are live. No, they are live, not recorded, but they are live and very interactive. Okay, so uh, yeah, so we will learn more about of these learning programs later on. No, but for now, uh, we're here you no know, to introduce our speaker for today. You no, know? so uh, yeah, so magandang hapon po ulit sa inyong lahat. You no, know? so si Architect uh, Fernandez is also here. Okay, so hello, Architect Fernandez. So I'll be uh, introducing our speaker for today. Okay, 
So our guest speaker is a graduate of BS Architecture at La Consolacion College in Bacolod. He passed the licensure examination in June 1998 and uh, took his oath of Oat, oat no at the Western Philippine Plaza no before the PRC in August 10, 1998 no so his expertise in architecture has led him to focus on residential and small scale commercial establishments he also formerly served as an employee at the LGU in one of the cities of Negros Occidental so meron tayong mga taga Negros po dito no <laughs> welcome okay so our speaker was also a former overseas <laughs> OFW in uh, Malaysia and Dubai, no, where he was employed no, as an architect coordinator and quality control and quality assurance architect, and was later assigned as an assistant construction contracts administrator of Ogre Dubai LTD. He formerly joined the Academy in De La Salle das Marinas, Technic Technical, uh, Technological Institute of the Philippines, and CCP, no, and as a reviewee reviewer in La Consolacion College, Bacolod. He was also formerly a, formerly a lecturer at the Brown Bauhaus Studio Architecture, Atelier Center for Architecture and Workshops, and a professional lecturer in construction contracts and claims management. So architect Fernandez was a former employee of Santa Clara International Corporation as a contract administrator, a former contracts manager, and Ryder Levitt, uh, Bucknell, Philippines, okay, and as a vice president of contracts and project management of YEC International Engineering Services. He serves recently as the contracts manager of Mega White Construction Corporation. Nako, napakadami ng, ng, ano, ng experience po ng ating speaker. <laughs> no? Okay, at present, no, his firm is engaged in... Uh, the private practice in the field of architecture specializes in different modes of alternative disputes, resolutions such as construction contracts and claims, commercial arbit arbitration, mediation, and cons construction arbitration. No? So he further advances his studies in project and con contracts management in Dubai and at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Okay, he completed his degree in Juris Doctor at Philippine Law School in 2018 and completed his training in commercial arbitration at Philippine Dispute Resolution Center in 2016, construction arbitration at the, at the Construction Industry Arbitration Commission this year, 2019 as well. So in 2008, no, he published a book. No, this is a very, very important book. No, the Essentials of the Practice of Architecture. And last year, just last year, he published another book, which is the RA 9266. Okay, the Architecture Act of 2004 Q and A with notes and cases. Both are available in Central Bookstore nationwide. Our speaker holds membership in various professional organizations, both in areas of law, arbitration and architecture. He is a proud member of the following distinguished organizations, UAP Negrense Chapter, PIA Makati Section, Philippine Dispute Resolution Center, Philippine Institute of Construction Arbitrators and Mediators, Philippine Institute of Arbitrators, and Mu Kappa Phi, Exclusive Law Fraternity and Sorority established in 1948. And also, our speaker for today, you know, is a very famous uh, influencer in YouTube and Facebook. <laughs> yeah, no, nakikita nyo ba siya, no? Alam ko, ang alam natin, siya post ay si Maestro, di ba? So, uh, yeah, I'm very, very uh, honored, no, to uh, present to you our speaker for today, no, si Architect Alfredo Fernandez, Juris Doctor Arbitrator. Hello. <laughs> Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, good afternoon, guys. Good afternoon sa lahat. Uh, we are all uh, 57, uh, 57 participants. Yes. You know, medyo kinabahan ako. No? Alam nyo, meron akong uh, takot sa harap ng camera. No? So, usually, baka uh, ma-overcome ko pa yung aking uh, fear mamaya pagka after two hours ng uh, lecture. Baka doon pa lang ako magkakaroon ng uh, sense of humor. No? Uh, anyway, thank you for that good uh, introduction, uh, Architect uh, Gerard. Ang galing ni Gerard uh, di mag-research, no? <laughs> uh, thank you, sir. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So, 
Uh, the topic for this afternoon is uh, the Architecture Act of 2004 in, in legal methods. No? Why uh, legal methods? Because uh, we will be discussing uh, architecture law in a way uh, lawyers interpreted the law. As a majority of us uh, architects, uh, we only read our law in uh, our own interpretation or uh, literal interpretation, but not in a manner on how it will be interpreted in illegal manner. Okay? So that is why I came up with that uh, book, no? this uh, 9266 with uh, notes and cases para madaling maintindihan ng mga uh, magbabasa ng uh, libro dahil may mga citations and uh, example cases decided by the court. Okay? So sa mga hindi pa nakabili, uh, you can check uh, with the Central Bookstore. Okay. So, uh, we will start with the uh, discussion. Are you okay, guys? Okay. Uh, alam ko itong uh, oras na to is uh, ito yung medyo uh, maantukin, no? So, you, you can uh, have your coffee no, by uh, listening to my lecture. Okay? Kasi medyo uh, 2 o'clock, medyo talagang uh, nakakaantok. Okay, so I will be sharing my slides now no, for you to uh, see my uh, presentation on the uh, lecture. Uh, by the way, you will be with me for about three hours. No? So kung na-late tayo, yung 5.30 natin baka magiging 6 o'clock na. Okay, and uh, let's see. Okay, have you seen the slides? Full screen? Yes, po, sir. Yes, po. Okay. So, uh, this will be my screen and uh, you, you can see my uh, YouTube channel. No? Uh, I have lots of uh, lectures in uh, the YouTube channel uh, regarding professional practice and uh, construction contracts management. This is the website of the Central Bookstore uh, wherein you can... Uh, buy online the uh, book no? and uh, the uh, my, my qualifications with uh, architect Gerard already introduced uh, a while ago. So warning, this uh, material has been reproduced and communicated to you by uh, or on my behalf no? in accordance with the RA 8293 or the intellectual property code of the Philippines. So, pinagbabawal natin yung uh, pag-copy yeah, ng uh, mga materials. No? But you can use it. No? Uh, you can screenshot if you want. And you can use it. As long that uh, you will not uh, send it to others na gagawing business. Okay? So, that is just in the copyright. Uh, I uh, emphasize that usually in all my lectures. And uh, later on, I will be discussing also copyright law with regards to the architect's uh, postings no, sa social media. Okay. So let's discuss, no, let's uh, begin the topic if uh, all of us are uh, ready for this uh, lecture. So the first question will be, are you one like him? Okay, so sabi nila doon, trust me, I am an architect. Diba? Hello, yes, hello, sir. Architect. Excuse me, sir. Yes, architect. Sir, uh, apa, sir, ano lang po ang nakikita po namin yung uh, ano lang siya yung PowerPoint na window. Hindi po siya nakaplay. Hindi siya nakaplay. Apa, yung first page lang po yung nakikita namin. Tapos hindi pa po siya naka full screen. That one. Ay, wala pa rin po, sir. Kaya sa parang ipiplay lang yun sa, siguro, sir.
Okay. Yes, sir. Yan po. Nakikita na po namin. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Apa. Okay. Okay. So, the question is, uh, are you one like him? This is in the U.S. No? Uh, sa Pilipinas, uh, marami, pero walang nanguhuli. No? So, hopefully by uh, next uh, following year, sana magkakaroon tayo ng mga nanguhuli ng mga illegal practitioners. So, trust me, I'm an architect or an unlicensed architect. Okay? So, this man in uh, Texas was employed by uh, one uh, architectural firm and uh, representing himself as an architect. Then later on, uh, nalaman na hindi pala siya architect. So, he was uh, fired. Okay? So, ang nangyari is uh, kinasuhan and uh, nakulong. Okay? So, maraming ganito sa ating uh, organizations, no, sa society, na nagpa-practice ng architecture without having a license. And, uh, well, siguro one of you is uh, same with uh, this guy. No? which is uh, illegally practicing the profession of architecture. So, little by little, as we go on with the discussion, you will uh, understand later on kung ano ba talaga yung practice ng uh, architecture and uh, how it affects the uh, industry with regards to the uh, practice of those legally qualified to practice architecture in uh, this country. Okay? So, our RA 9266 composed of five articles and 47 sections. So for those who are reviewing, madali lang kami sa duhin, no? uh, 547 lang. So we have five articles, 547. So we have Article 1, the general provisions. We have Article 2, the uh, Professional Regulatory Board of Architecture. Article 3, examination, registration, and licensure. Article 4, practice of architecture. And Article 5, the uh, final provisions. Okay. Uh, ito yung pagkaka-arrange ng batas ng codal provisions pag binasa natin yung RA 9266. But I will discuss RA 9266 not in the same manner the way uh, professors discuss it in the academic institution. Okay? So I will be starting uh, maybe from Article 2, connect this to Article 1, connect this to Article uh, uh, four, uh, so in different sections. So expect that this uh, discussion will not be in a proper order uh, the same on what uh, reflected in the CUDAL provisions of RA 9266. Okay? So to start with the architecture uh, law discussion, we will start first with the sources of the practice of architecture. Saan ba nagsimula ang ating batas? No, kasi hindi yan nadidiscuss uh, karamihan ng ating mga professor sa akadem. Kung uh, ano, yung ano yung nagiging legal basis in the creation of our architecture law. So number one, we have the 1987 Constitution. Okay? So yun yung pinakaunang reference natin, 1987 Constitution. Kasi pag wala yung 1987 Constitution, wala tayong batas. Take note that uh, laws uh, was promulgated by Congress and Congress composed of the uh, House of Representatives and the Senate. So pag wala sila, walang uh, batas na nagawa. And uh, that uh, Congress was uh, created under the Constitution. So pag walang Constitution, ibig sabihin walang Congress. So walang batas. And then uh, R8981, the PRC Modernization Act of 2000. That is one uh, reference. Uh, R8981 was enacted in 1989. Okay? And then 1989. Two, two, three. And then uh, we have the uh, RA545, the old architecture law. Kasi kung wala yung, yung 545, wala namang amendment na mangyayari. Because RA9266 is an amendment of RA 
0.545. So kami nung pumasa kami, ang uh, batas na kumuha kami ng uh, exam is regulated kami ng Republic Act 54, uh, ng Republic Act 545. Okay? Ngayon kayo pag pumasa kayo, regulated na kayo ng RA 9266. Okay? And then uh, the next one is the oath of professionals. Okay, oath of professionals is one sources of the practice of architecture. Bakit? Kasi pagka hindi kayo nag-take ng oath, kahit pumasa kayo sa exam, you are not an architect. Hindi kayo architect, no. Hindi kayo pwedeng mag-practice ng uh, architecture profession. Uh, ngayon, nasa pandemic tayo, uh, I believe there were passers from uh, 2019 licensure exam that uh, were not able to take an oath. Di ba? So the question now is, uh, are the architects or not? The answer is no. Until such time that uh, they have taken their oath of profession, that's the only time that they will be called an architect by profession. And then uh, the architect's code of ethics and uh, ethical conduct. And then uh, the PRC resolutions, the PR BOA resolutions, the civil code of the Philippines. So sources of the practice of architecture is also the civil code of the Philippines. Bakit? Saan nakikita ang ating liability? Under Article 1723, it's in the Civil Code. Once we uh, uh, engage with uh, the clients, ano yung reference natin sa paggawa ng kontrata? It's the obligations and contracts under the Civil Code. Okay? Damages. Pag nagkaroon tayo ng dispute with the owner, dispute with the contractor, ano magiging reference sa practice of architecture? the law on damages under the Civil Code of the Philippines. Okay? And then uh, we have the uh, Revised Penal Code of the Philippines. No, sir, bakit na naman napasok ang Revised uh, Penal Code of the Philippines? Kasi pag tinignan natin ang qualifications ng uh, examination, uh, applicants for examination, pag nakita nyo dyan, ang pinaka-last requirements is that that an applicant must not uh, be convicted or has not been convicted of a crimes involving moral turpitude. And what are those crimes involving moral turpitude? Crimes enumerated under the Revised Penal Code is TAPA, theft. Well, that is uh, a crimes involving moral turpitude. Okay? And then um, we have the civil service rules. One uh, sources of the practice of architecture is also the civil service rules. Bakit? Pag ikaw ay arkitekto, unemployed ka sa government institutions, you are governed by the civil service rules. Di ba, hindi ka pwedeng mag-practice pagka hindi ka binigyan ng authority ng uh, Civil Service Commission. No? Yun yung mga architects na tinatawag nating limited practice. Okay? And then, uh, we have the local government code. Bakit uh, napasok ang local government code? Ang uh, governing law sa pagkuha mo ng PTR is under with the local government code. Hindi yan sa RA 9266. It was only cited in the RA 9266 that a requirement Uh, for a professional to practice his profession is the payment of the uh, professional uh, tax, no? which is uh, yun yung binabayaran natin, 300 pesos, and you will be issued a professional tax receipt, yun yung PTR na tinatawag. But the regulating uh, law that uh, governs the issuance of the PTR is the local government code, hindi yun sa RA 9266. And then we have the Corporation Code of the Philippines and its issuances. Bakit? Pag nagtayo ka ng corporation, you have to register with the Securities and Exchange Commission. And that is governed by the, the Corporation Code of the Philippines. Then uh, we have the writing of scholars and authors. So pag sinabing writing ng scholars uh, and authors, yung mga references nating libro. Diba? Yung, uh, like for example, kay Max Pajardo. Okay, D.K. Ching. That is a writing of scholars and authors. And then we have the Supreme Court jurisprudence and other borrowed legislation. Bakit Supreme Court jurisprudence? Pag nagkaroon ng dispute later on in the practice of architecture, you will resort with the uh, decisions and jurisprudence decided by the uh, Supreme Court and other uh, laws and uh, legislation that has a relation to the practice of our Profession. So that is the sources of the practice of architecture. So doon dapat tayo nagsisimula para maintindihan natin ng mabuti. Ano ba talaga ang practice of architecture and what our law uh, says with regards to the uh, practice of architecture. Okay.
Okay, let's start with the uh, Constitution. Pag uh, tanin na natin kanina doon sa discussion natin, the first sources of the practice of architecture is the Constitution. Bakit Constitution? Section 17, Article 2 of the Constitution provides and uh, discuss about education, science and technology, arts and culture. Okay, so our professions of architecture, di ba? We are a bachelor of science and architecture. We are an arts. We are a science. Okay. Then uh, we have section 14, article uh, 12 of the constitution. It speaks about professionals. We are all profi uh, professionals after we uh, have taken our oath of professions. Then uh, section 10, article uh, 14 of the constitution uh, declares science and technology, development, education, etc. But the most important provision in the Constitution na dapat natin na uh, intindihin or malaman is that Section 14, Number 2, Article 12 of the 1987 Constitution provides that the practice of all professions in the Philippines shall be limited only to the uh, Filipino citizens, save in cases provided by law. So malinaw yan sa ating uh, 1987 constitution na ang practice of profession is only limited to uh, Filipino citizens. So in fact, uh, when you pass the board, you were uh, given the the uh, privilege and authority to practice our profession. You can only perform our profession within the Philippine jurisdiction. Although marami naga abroad, di ba? Ngayon nga, ang mga health workers natin pinuprohibit lumabas ng bansa. No? And uh, the government wanted our health workers to render service to uh, the Republic of the Philippines. Ano sinasabi ng mga uh, nurses natin? Walang kwenta yung gobyerno, uh, doon sa labas ng bansa, kumikita sila ng malaki. But they don't understand that their uh, practice and profession should only be practiced in the Philippine jurisdiction. No, paglabas mo ng bansa hindi yan walang walang effect ang iyong uh, license no ang iyong authority to practice is only limited within the Philippine territory no kaya lang syempre because of our uh, education and training uh, we are uh, hired by uh, the foreign uh, countries no para magpractice ng profession but legally speaking wala talagang effect walang uh, full force and effect ang ating authority or license to practice in the other countries. So it becomes only our bread and butter. Later on, we will relate natin yan doon sa apprenticeship uh, issue. Okay? So that, that is one of the most important provision in the Constitution that uh, relates to the practice of our profession. That all, uh, that the practice of all professions in the Philippines shall only be limited to Filipino citizens. Ngayon may dugtong, okay? Pag binasa natin 'yan, nandun sa dulo, nakalagay doon save in cases provided by law. Ano yung ibig sabihin ng save in cases provided by law? Doon ngayon papasok ang reciprocity agreement. Okay? Ibig sabihin, pag kami reciprocity agreement, doon pa lang pwede mag-practice ng profession sa Pilipinas ang foreign national. Okay? Pag wala ang reciprocity with their country, they are not allowed to practice the architecture profession in the Philippines. They are prohibited by the Constitution. Okay, now, let's relate this to the qualification of an applicant for examination. As I said a while ago, yung discussion natin is hindi siya yung Article 1, Section 1, Article 1, Section 2. No? Patalon-talon tayo. Okay? So, Let's go now to the academic qualification no? sa mga mag exam o sa nakapagtapos na ng exam. The first qualification for an applicant for examination in the architecture profession is that he or she is a Filipino citizen or a citizen of a foreign country qualified to take the examination as provided for in this act. So take note guys, na ang unang requirement talaga is you must be a Filipino citizen. So kung hindi a Filipino citizen, hindi talaga pwedeng mag-apply uh, po for examination. Pero may dugtong or a citizen of a foreign country qualified to take the examination. So hindi pinuprohibit, di ba? Uh, one example is that uh, Ed Calma. No, kung kilala ninyo si uh, Ed Calma, 
Ed Calma graduated in the US. Hindi naman siya nagtapos ng kanyang uh, architecture sa Pilipinas. But he was given the opportunity to practice in the Philippines. Bakit? Naggrant ng uh, Commission on Higher Education yung uh, subjects, yung course. Nag-apply sa PRC, natanggap, pumasa, nakapag-take ng oath, nag-practice ngayon sa Pilipinas. Okay? So, isang qualification yon doon sa hindi ka nagtapos ng pag-aaral. But how about a citizen of a foreign country, hindi ka Filipino? Okay? Later on, meron akong babasahin case. No? The case of uh, Yasuyuki Ota versus Professional Regulation Commission. Dahil ito si Yasuyuki Ota is a Japanese national. Pero, na-allowed, nabigyan ng authority, nabigyan ng lisensya sa Pilipinas na mag-practice ng profession. Okay? The next uh, qualification is he or she is of good moral character. Napaka-importante ng good moral character. Kasi pag nawalan ka ng good moral character, hindi ka na arkitekto. Okay? Matatanggalan ka ng authority to practice your profession. Later on, meron ako example case ng uh, good moral character. Take note, guys, that this good moral character requirement is not only a requirement for uh, the examination. The good moral character requirement should be possessed at all times. No? Ibig sabihin, doon sa time na pumasa ka or nag-apply ka for examination, pumasa ka, hanggang sa time na bago ka mamatay, dapat you possess that qualification of good moral character. Kasi pag nawala yung good moral character, grounds for determination, grounds for uh, revocation, grounds for suspension of your professional license. And then uh, the next requirement of the uh, applicant for uh, qualification is that he or she is a holder of a degree of Bachelor of, of, bachelor of Science in Architecture. College, academy, or institute duly recognized and or accredited by the Commission on Higher Education. Of course, wala namang ibang pwedeng kumuha ng exam except doon sa nagtapos ng architecture. Okay? But take note, ang kadugtong niyan, no, nakalagay, and in addition, has a specific record of at least two years or equivalent of diversified architectural experience certified by a registered and licensed architect. Take note of the qualification. No? Ang sinasabi sa qualification ng uh, applicant sa, uh, sa examination and in addition, kasi may mga questions, Sir, pwede bang during my third year, during my fourth year, mag-OJT ako? So yung OJT ko ba is counted? as diversified training? The answer is no. Okay? Previously, it was allowed. During the time of uh, Chairman uh, Jonathan Gan, inalaw nila yung uh, OJT. No? So may mga schools, college, universities, na during their fourth year, third year, merong OJT program. But uh, it was, uh, it was uh, dropped, no? by uh, the present uh, professional uh, regulatory board kasi nga violation sa RA9266 kasi ang wordings ng batas sinasabi and in addition kadagdagan doon sa iyong pagtatapos ay ang iyong diversified training equivalent to 2 years di ba 2 years or equivalent yun ang wording ng batas in fact pag tiningnan ninyo hindi diyan specific yung 3,840 hours. Walang figure na sinabi ang uh, batas ng 3,840 hours. What happens today is that pag uh, dating na two years, nag stop na ng apprenticeship and then uh, pinifill up na yung logbook and nilalagay doon yung 3,840. Okay? Take note ang sinasabi ng batas at least, okay, minimum, at least two years or equivalent. Ibig sabihin, hindi dapat talaga nagtatapos sa two years lang ang diversified training. May call of judgment dapat ang isang apprentice. May call of judgment dapat ang mentor. 
Para sabihin niya na two years ka na nga, pero parang kulang pa ang iyong diversified training. Pwedeng hindi i-allow yung uh, apprentice to take the examination no? or hindi i-allow dapat ang pag Uh, certify ng lagbo. Pag nakikita doon na in the two years ay hindi ka pa talaga qualified no, to take the licensure examination. But yung practice na ganyan nawala. No, nawawala and uh, in fact uh, dinadaya yung lagbo. Okay? And then uh, other requirements for that pagka ikaw ay nagkaroon ng master's degree that is equivalent to one year of diversified training. Eh ang master's degree two years yon. Uh, tapos equivalent mula sa one year. Hindi mag-diversified training ka na lang. No? And then, uh, saka ka kumuha ng uh, uh, masters. Okay? So, yan. And then, the last uh, qualification is that uh, he or she has not been convicted of any crimes involving moral turpitude. Okay? So, napaka, napaka strict no requirements on letter D. No? That he or she has not been convicted of any crimes involving moral turpitude. But I don't know kung ano yung... Uh, ginagawa ng PRC regarding to that uh, qualification under letter D. No, may hinihingi ba silang certificate of uh, of uh, non-conviction sa, sa court? Parang wala naman. No? In uh, the profession of lawyers, pag nag-apply ka sa bar, confident, mayroong certification na hinihingi. No? Yung uh, dalawang uh, certification of good moral character. So, kailangan kang i-certify ng iyong mentor na meron kang good moral character and uh, another lawyer na para magsabi na you have the good moral character. I don't know if that is also practiced in architecture. I, I think wala yan sa PRC. Okay? So that's the qualification for, na, for an applicant to uh, the examination. Ngayon, titingnan natin yung uh, Article 2, Section 5 sa qualification naman ng Professional Regulatory Board. Ano yung pagkakaiba? Okay? Sa qualification ng Professional Regulatory Board, ang nakalagay doon, be a citizen and resident of the Philippines. Question. Pwede ba ang uh, citizen by uh, yung uh, citizen by naturalization magiging member of the board? Di ba? Naturalized citizen. The answer is yes. Kasi hindi naman uh, nilagay sa qualification ng batas that you must be a natural born citizen. Wala. ba? Diba? So, ibig sabihin, kung ikaw ay citizen by naturalization, pwede magiging member of the board. The other requirements only is that you must be a resident of the Philippines. Kailangan dito ka nakatira sa Pilipinas. And wala sa qualification ng uh, Professional uh, Regulatory Board ang a citizen of a foreign country. Ibig sabihin, sarado ang qualification sa PR BOA sa Filipino citizen only, whatever uh, modes of citizenship requirements. Okay? And then uh, we have the uh, qualification of an active practitioner of architecture for at, least, for at least 10 years on the date of his or her appointment. Okay, so ang requirements na isa, pagka ikaw ay magiging member ng PR BOA, active practitioner. Uh, practitioner okay? Ang question ngayon is that, paano pagka ikaw ay hindi ka nagdi-design, pero ikaw ay nasa akadem, nagtuturo ka lang, will that be considered as an active practice of architecture? Kasi magkakaiba yung Practice of architecture and active practice of architecture. So, in fact, uh, sa practice of architecture, pag tinignan natin yung uh, Article 1, Section 3, Number 3, and 4, sa scope of practice of architecture, teaching of CAD, no? of uh, AutoCAD subjects is uh, a practice of architecture. But the qualification in letter C of this uh, member of DPR BOA, is an active practitioner. So what do we mean by the word active practitioner? The Supreme Court, in uh, the case of uh, Cayetano versus Munsud, no, defines the meaning of active practice of profession. Ang sinabi ng Supreme Court dun sa case of Cayetano versus Munsud, na pagka nag-practice ka ng profession, there should be habituality. No? 
palagi mong ginagawa, paulit-ulit mong pinapractice. No? There is a habituality. And then the other one is application of knowledge. No? So applications of knowledge of law, applications of knowledge of architecture. So meron tayo doon sa dalawa, habituality, application of knowledge of architecture. And then yung pangatlo is compensation. You must be compensated. And the last will be the uh, architect's client relation. Ang tanong ngayon, ang tanong ngayon is that pag ikaw ay nagturo sa academic history, ba is your client? Di ba? Kasi sa institution, ang mayroong relation is the institution itself and the students. Walang direct Uh, walang direct uh, relation ang uh, architect sa kanyang student. So walang architect student relation. So yun ang kulang doon pagka nagturo ka sa academic institution. But of course debatable kasi wala pa namang cases no, na halimbawa nagpa-practice ka lang sa akadem, hindi ka nagpa-practice sa uh, outside, hindi ka na nagdi-design no? and you were appointed as a member of the PR BOA. Wala pa namang nangyaring case na ganun. But the, the Supreme Court Uh, give the meaning of this uh, active practice of profession that there should be habituality, uh, there should be application of knowledge of that profession, there should be uh, compensation, and there should be uh, an architect's uh, client relation. So, hindi natin kliyente yung mga estudyante. It's, uh, it is a client of the academic uh, institution. And then the next uh, requirement is that uh, nag-stop ka na dapat sa teaching no, or sa pagtuturo ng review center for at least five years prior to the nomination. So hindi ka na nag-teach no, five years prior to the nomination. So ako, kung hindi na ako nagturo sa CCP, hindi na ako nagkakandak ng mga lectures for a period of five years, hindi ibig sabihin na ako ay uh, magiging member ng board. No? Malay nyo, baka sumali lang ako sa Big Brother, no? Architects Edition. Okay, But <laughs> okay you, sir. Uh, <laughs> ano yung Big Brother? Uh, <laughs> Architects, Architects Edition. Edition. <laughs> uh, so baka kasi uh, isipin ninyo, dahil na wala na ako, wala na kayong naririnig sa akin, uh, nagiging member na ako ng PR BOA. Okay? So that's the requirements, no? For at least five years na nag-stop ka sa teaching. And then the last requirement will be has never been convicted of the crimes involving moral turpitude. So, yun palagi ang pinaka-importante dyan. Because if you commit a crime involving moral turpitude, then that is a grounds for the revocation, suspension, and the uh, termination of your professional license. Okay? Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Sir, yeah. Ma maestro. Ito naalala ko po, ah, meron pong mga tanong sa board exams na regarding this. Mm -hmm. Ito, ito, ano yung, sino daw yung mga, ano yung mga qualifications yeah. ng PR BOA. Uh, uh, PR BOA. So, so, please take note po. Thank you. Okay. So, let's discuss now the case of Yasuyoke Ota. This case of Yasuyoke Ota, uh, in relation to the qualifications ng applicant for examination, doon sa a citizen of a foreign country qualified to take the examination. Ano ang nangyari dito sa case ni uh, Yasuyoki Ota versus uh, Professional Regulation Commission? Yung case na to was decided uh, 2008. Uh, 2008. So almost 20... Ilang years na ba? 15 something? No? So ito sa kay Yasuyoki Ota, Ota uh, isa sa Japanese national and uh, tumira dito sa Pilipinas. Then, uh, for more than 10 years, nag-aaral siya sa Bicol Christian College ng Medicina. Okay? So, nag-aaral sa Bicol Christian College, nag-graduate. After mag-graduate, nag-apply ng uh, board exam sa Professional Regulation Commission. Ito yung pinakamalala doon. Nung mag-apply for examination, napayagan. Sa pag-apply pa lang for exam, hindi na sinabi ng PRC na bawal ka kasi hindi ka Filipino citizen. So pinayagan ng PRC, ngayon pumasa. Nung pumasa sa exam, nag-apply ngayon for registration, 
nag-apply for uh, taking an oath, doon ngayon hinarang ng PRC. Ang sinabi ng PRC, hindi ka pwede dahil uh, ikaw ay Japanese national at walang reciprocity agreement ang Pilipinas sa government of Japan. Okay. Umakyat ngayon ang uh, kaso sa court and uh, hanggang Supreme Court. No, umakyat yung case sa Supreme Court. Ang question kasi ngayon nun is, can OTA practice medicine in the Philippines? You know, the answer is yes. No, sabi ng court, OTA can practice medicine in the Philippines. Nowhere in said statute, it is stated that the foreign applicants must, must uh, show that the conditions of practice of medicine in said country are practical and attainable by Filipinos. It is enough that the laws in a foreign country permit a Filipino to get a license and practice therein. Thus, since OTA has all the qualifications and does not possess any of the disqualifications, he can practice medicine in the Philippines. What happens kasi yung sinasabi ng PRC, walang written agreement ang uh, Japan government with the Philippines. Ano sabi ng Supreme Court? Sabi ng Supreme Court, hindi ni Cesare na merong uh, written agreement ang uh, Philippine government and Japan government for that reciprocity. Ang sinabi ng Supreme Court, as long that the uh, government of Japan does not prohibit Filipino citizens to practice uh, medical profession, that is already tantamount to a reciprocity. So itong si uh, Yasuyoki Ota nabigyan ng lisensya kasi inutos ng Supreme Court na you have to allow Yasuyoki Ota to take an oath of professionals. So nagiging uh, doktor sa Pilipinas pero Japanese national. No? Kasi tantamount to reciprocity na as long na hindi pinoprohibit yung uh, Filipino citizens to practice profession in Japan. So a classic example, no? the classic uh, example of this uh, reciprocity, reciprocity requirement, kasi pagkakaintindi ng iba, pagka nagkaroon ng uh, reciprocity requirement, dapat mayroong uh, reciprocity agreement, a written agreement between the government of the other countries. No? So, pero iba ang interpretasyon ng Supreme Court. No? Sabi ng Supreme Court, as long na hindi ka prohibited doon, pinapayagan ka, that is already tantamount to reciprocity agreement. So napakaganda nung nung uh, kaso, no? A, a classic uh, example of this uh, requirement in the qualifications of applicant for examination, no? That is citizen of a foreign country qualified to take the examination. Biro mo yun dito pa nag-aral, no? Pag tiningnan natin ngayon, ang daming mga daming uh, foreign national na nag-aaral dito sa Pilipinas, no? Yung mga dentistry, no? So ang tanong ngayon doon is uh, Later on, can they practice uh, dentistry in the Philippines? Well, there is a possibility of yes. No? If, if the same, the same uh, requirements or the same scenario with the case of uh, Yasuyoko Ota will exist. Okay? So, yan. Then, uh, the next will be diversified training. Kasi isang qualification. No? So, we go with the diversified uh, training in architecture. Uh, we have the uh, objective, bakit mayroon tayong diversified training? No? To map generally recognized standard of practical skills, to practice architecture in a way that protects the health and safety of the public. Now, in the diversified training, I believe, dahil nagre-review kayo ngayon, and some architects also is uh, naka-tune uh, in sa atin, no? yung mga mentors, Itong logbook of diversified experience, merong uh, six phases field of practice. Di ba? So pag nakita natin yung letter A doon sa mga nagre-review, ang uh, first field of practice na dapat i-comply is architectural designing, drafting, structural conceptualization, planning, and the like. Okay? So with that uh, phase, mayroon kang 30% maximum or 1,152 hours minimum credit hours that you must comply. The next one will be the preparation of contract documents, specifications, writings, bills of materials, cost estimates, general conditions, bidding documents, clerk of works, and the like. 
So meron kang 25% maximum or 960 minimum credit hours. The next one is Technical, Economic, and Financial Feasibility Studies, Project Promotional Services, Pre-Design Services, and the like. And then we have the uh, Field Superintendents, Project Management, Administration, and the like. And then we have the uh, Architectural Layouting of Mechanical, Electrical, Electronics, Sanitary, Plumbing, Communications, and Utility System, Equipment and uh, Fixtures, Architectural Lighting, Acoustics, and Allied field of practice. And the last one is architectural interiors, space planning, restoration, preservation, and other ancillary services. Now the question is, was it really filled up in truth? Or it was always filled up of false misrepresentation? Kasi ang dami kong kakilala na two years CAD operator Ang trabaho, but all pieces of that uh, requirements sa logbook na isulat na permahan ng mentor na kakapag-exam. Okay? So that's the big question. Ito critical areas to sa akin. No? If that logbook was really filled up in truth or it was filled up of false misrepresentation. Bakit kailangan i-discuss natin ito. Kasi, mayroong kaakibat na liability. May kaakibat na responsibility. Pag tiningnan ninyo yung logbook, kung mayroon na kayong logbook ngayon, no, sa mga mentor din na nanonood sa atin ngayon, no, pag nag-sign kayo ng logbook, tingnan ito mabuti. Okay? Sa logbook, nakalagay yung affidavit. No? Yun, makikita mo yung first sa first page ng logbook ito. No? And then, uh, naka-blow up siya, no? affidavit. Ano ba nakalagay sa affidavit? Pag binasa natin, I, di ba? Ang magpi-fill up nito yung mentor. Okay? So, sasabihin nito ng mentor, I, architect uh, Juan de la Cruz of legal age with the uh, residence and postal address at after being duly sworn upon by uh, my oath, depose and state. Okay, Biroin mo yun na ang wordings ng uh, affidavit. Okay? After being duly sworn, nangako ka, no? You, you you take an uh, under oath statement. The post and state that I am a practicing architect with certificate uh, registration number 14,500 issued in uh, etc. And then the number two, nakalagay that pursuant to section 13, paragraph C, article 3 of R in 9266, and in accordance with the requirements prescribed in the logbook of diversified experience in architecture, records of my office show that Mr. Uh, Jose Rizal has undergone diversified training under my mentorship and supervision covering the period from sinasabi mo doon no? ang, ang logbook ha, nangangako ka doon na sinasabi mo may record ka di ba? Pag tinan mo yung number 4 that I am willing to appear before the Board of Architecture the Professional Regulation Commission or its duly authorized representative and present satisfactory evidence of all the trainees, diversified training in my office, and the diversified experience that trainee has acquired if and when required. Pag kayo ba talagang tinawag ng, uh, ng PRC, makakapag-provide kayo sa mga mentors natin? Na? Are, are you sure you can provide all the relevant uh, statement? Pagka hindi nyo yan na i-provide, baka matanggalan pa kayo ng lisensya. And those uh, students, those uh, apprentices, na nag-misrepresent din ng logbook, baka hindi rin kayo makakapag-take ng board exam. O sabi ko nga, uh, ipanalangin nila, ipagdasal nila na hindi ako magiging member of PR BOA later on. Eh. Uh, kasi kung ako magiging member ng PR BOA later on, magiging mahigpit ako sa sa requirements. No? Otherwise, walang silbi itong logbook. No? Gagawin nating props. It is for your own good. No? Kasi training nyo to. No, ang purpose ng logbook na pagka kayo ay naging arkitekto later on, wala na dapat kayong iba pang titingnan. Alam niyo alam na alam niyo na yung gagawin ninyo dahil nadaanan na ninyo yung six phases uh, field of practice na required na pagka kayo ay nilagay doon sa sa practice, alam na alam niyo na ako ano ang uh, inyo gagawin. Okay? So, sa logbook na yan nakalagay subscribe and sworn to before me, di ba? Nagpunta ka sa notaryo publiko, 
nagpunta ka sa isang abogado, no? At sinabi doon sa uh, sinabi doon ng abogado, subscribe and sworn to before me. Nagpunta ang taong ito, nangako siya, nag-sworn siya sa harap ko. No? And sinabi mo doon na yung lahat na nakalagay, no? Kasi sinabi mo doon, in truth of all the foregoing. Ang lahat na nakalagay diyan ay katut ay katotohanan at pawang katotohanan lamang. Yung ang ibig sabihin ng logbook, no? Sa mga mentors natin, ang ibig sabihin ng logbook diyan is that nangangako ka na lahat na nakalagay diyan ay totoo at walang misrepresentation or false statement. Ngayon, ang tanong is that paano pagka nahuli? Okay? Take note of this provision of the revised penal code. Yan ang sinasabi natin kanina. Sources of the practice of architecture, one sources is the revised penal code. Bakit? Under Article 183 of the Revised Penal Code, nakalagay dyan, false testimony in other cases and perjury in solemn affirmation. The penalty of Aristo Mayor in its maximum period to prison correctional in its minimum period shall be imposed upon any person who knowingly make untruthful statement and not being included in the provisions of the next preceding articles shall testify under oath or make an affidavit Upon any material matter before a competent person authorized to administer an oath in cases in which the law requires. Any person who in case of solemn affirmation made in lieu of an oath shall commit any of the falsehood mentioned made in this and the three preceding articles of this section shall suffer the uh, respective penalties provided herein. Ibig sabihin, ang affidavit na yon is a solemn affirmation, is an oath. No? sa isang uh, isang administer isang officer to, to authorize to administer oath. at pagka lahat ang nakalagay doon is uh, false statement or misrepresentation tatamaan ang mentor under article 183 of the revised penal code and you will be suffering for uh, a penalty of aristo mayor and or prison correctional in a minimum period so 4 months and 1 day to 6 years no uh, six years and 1 day so yun yung uh, penalty kasi marami ngayon talaga dinadaya lang yung logbook no hindi talaga na comply ng uh, maayos no 2 uh, years nag autocad operator lang no? pero nakalagay lahat ang 6 uh, pages sa uh, field of practice kumpleto Okay? So take note of these provisions of the Revised Penal Code dahil later on, katamaan yung mentor dito. And pag tinignan natin, nakalagay doon sa ating uh, IRR, any applicant who knowingly makes any false statement herein shall be subject to the provisions of Section 13, Article 3 of RA 9266 known as the Architecture Act of 2004, and Section 13, Rule 3, Board Resolution Number 7, Series of 2004, known as the IRR of the Architecture Act of 2004 without prejudice to criminal prosecution if the evidence warrants under RA 9266 and the Revised Penal Code. So binasa ko na yung Revised Penal Code kanina no? under Article 183. So take note guys, no? uh, kung hindi kayo kinakabahan dyan, nakakalusot, no? nakakalusot but... Uh, paano pagka yung isang kaklase mo nag-apply at na-reject and then later on kumanta sa PRC at nag-conduct ng investigation so tatamaan yung uh, apprentice tatamaan yung mentor okay so yon and then uh, the next will be is work from home apprenticeship a new normal in diversified training program for architecture so what is your thought no uh, In this pandemic uh, stage, no, ngayon, uh, matagal eh, no, matagal yung proseso ng uh, pag-defeat uh, nitong virus. So ang tanong doon is, uh, pwede na ba ang apprenticeship natin is work from home? Will it be valid pagka yung apprenticeship natin is work from home? Of course, ang uh, analysis ko dyan is that uh, in that six field of practice, there's only one that is not valid. And that is field superintendents, project management, administration, and the like. Hindi mo ma-work from home yan. Okay? The rest, pwede mong gawin work from home except 
field superintendents, project management, administration, and the like. Saan ka mag uh, saan ka mag uh, supervise, di ba? Ngayon ang tanong is, pwede ba sir, nagagamit ako ng drone, di ba? Naka drone ka sa site. No? For me, in my opinion, the answer is no. Bakit? Eh kung nag-drone ka doon, more on inspection lang yon ng accomplishment. Pero paano ang tinatawag natin na supervision? Okay? So, in this, uh, in this new normal, of course, dapat the board will study. No? Kasi it will last more or less one to two years no? bago magkaro- magkakaroon ng uh, normal uli. No? na yung uh, ating uh, construction industry is uh, magkakaroon ng bagong uh, adoption ng uh, methods and uh, strategies. Okay? So in my own uh, perception, this uh, field superintendents project management is not feasible for a work from home uh, scenario. The rest is pwede siya as a new normal. Okay? So yon. Now, let's go to uh, the next uh, Common question in an architectural intern and the uh, architectural mentor uh, relation, no? with regards pa rin doon sa apprenticeship or diversified training. Ang palaging tanong kasi is that ang uh, apprenticeship ba or diversified training ba may sweldo, may bayad o wala? Okay, that's a big question. No? Yes, sir. Talaga malaking yan. question yan. Malaking question oh. talaga yan. Yes, okay. So, i-discuss natin. Okay. Kasi ito palaging uh, sinasabi nila, walang bayad yan kasi apprenticeship yan. Okay? Kasi wala yan sa 92, uh, 66. Okay? So, ngayon, uh, Architectural Diversified Training Internship shall be governed by Article 60 of the Labor Code as amended by Section 1, Executive Order Number 111, December 24, 1986. Okay? And uh, yung diversified training, dapat ang ini-execute na kontrata is apprenticeship agreement. Ngayon kasi ang mga nangyayari, pagka nag-graduate yung isang uh, aspirants, no? pupunta ngayon sa mga construction firm or uh, kung pupunta man sa architectural firm or kung sang firm, Ang uh, nangyayari is that uh, they execute an employment contract, not an apprenticeship contract. Okay? Pag tinignan natin under the labor code, no, for purposes of academic discussion and reference, the following are the distinction. Practical training, both learnership and apprenticeship involved. Practical training on the job. As to training agreement, learners, learnership is governed by a learnership agreement while apprenticeship is governed by an apprenticeship agreement. And by occupation, learnership involves learnable occupations consisting of semi-skilled and other industrial occupations, which are non-apprenticeable, while apprenticeship concerns apprenticeable occupations or any trade form of employment or occupation approved for apprenticeship by the Department of Labor and Employment Secretary. Nasa libro yan ni uh, uh, Chan ng uh, Labor Code. No? Kaya nga ang sinasabi dyan, pagka ikaw ay pumasok sa apprenticeship, dapat ang pinipirmahan mo sa iyong mentor, sa isang architectural firm, apprenticeship agreement, hindi regular employment. Kasi magkakaiba ang duties and responsibilities ng mentor, magkakaiba yung duties and responsibilities ng trainee doon sa apprenticeship compared doon sa regular employment. Okay? Now, let's go to the compensation. May bayad ba? The answer is yes. Okay? Apprenticeship, mayroong uh, sweldo, 75% of the regular uh, wage of the regular employee. That is written in the uh, labor code. No? Pagka yan ay apprenticeship, learnership, 75% of the statutory minimum wage of that of a regular employment. Makikita yan under Section 29, Rule uh, 6, uh, Book 2 of the Labor Code, Number uh, 1, or sa uh, Department of Labor and Employment Handbook on Workers, Statutory uh, Monetary Benefits. Okay. Pero, 
Okay, ang sinasabi ng batas, the Secretary of Labor and Employment may authorize the hiring of apprentices without compensation whose training on the job is required by the school or training program curriculum as a requisite for graduation or board examination. Okay, yun ang sinasabi ng batas. Pagkayan ay requirements for board examination, the uh, Secretary of Labor may authorize. Take note guys, na yung wording ng batas is not absolute. Hindi sinasabi ng batas na talagang walang bayad. Ang sinasabi ng batas, 75% ang uh, sweldo ng apprenticeship sa uh, sa minimum wage na tinatanggap ng regular na empleyado. Pero kung ang uh, purpose is for board examination, ang sinasabi naman ng uh, labor code is that the Secretary of Labor and Employment may authorize. Hindi sinasabi doon shall authorize. Kasi ang uh, paggamit ng word na may is discretionary while the use of the word shall is mandatory. So the labor code, use of the word may, discretionary yon. Ibig sabihin, kailangan mo munang i-apply sa Secretary of Labor na pagbigyan kang uh, walang bayad ang apprentice because it is for purposes of board examination. Ngayon, pagka iyan ay hindi mo ginawa. Hindi ka nag-submit uh, nag, uh, ng iyong uh, request for approval sa Secretary of Labor and Employment na sasabihin mong paki-approve ito dahil ito ay purposes of board examination. Then, ang uh, general rule is that apprenticeship shall be paid 75% of the regular wage of the uh, regular employee. Okay? So that's the rule ng uh, payment under apprenticeship uh, program. Okay? So sa mga mentors natin, hope it is clear no, that sinasabi ng labor code na 75% ng regular wage ng uh, regular employee ang bayad sa ating apprentice. Okay? Except, magpa-approve kayo sa DOLE or sa Secretary of Labor na walang bayad because it is for purposes of board examination. Okay, so the rule is not absolute. Kailangan ng approval ng Secretary of Labor. Uh, clear po. Okay, so next. Let's go now to architectural diversified training obtained abroad. Okay? Uh, kanina, di ba, diniscuss ko uh, that uh, in the diversified training, in the apprenticeship uh, program, dapat ang kontrata is apprenticeship agreement under the labor code, not irregular employment. Okay? So ngayon, ang tanong is, is diversified training abroad allowed? Diba? Kasi merong uh, SPLA, no? may mga taga Doha, Qatar tayong uh, nanonood ngayon, meron tayong taga Saudi Arabia dyan, merong uh, UAE. Uh, nakita ko kanina doon nung magsulat sila kung saan sila galing nakita ko yung Doha Qatar uh, so merong uh, ah may welcome po sa taga taga Doha and. so yon okay so let's discuss first the legal basis ano yung legal basis ng examination abroad during the time of Gloria Macapagal Arroyo nagkaroon ng executive order 835 okay yung executive Order 835, instructing the DOLE, instructing the PRC, instructing the consulate to conduct licensure examinations abroad. Okay? Kaya nga nagkaroon ng examinations uh, abroad ngayon because of this executive order number 835. Okay? But you know, this is debatable. No? Itong uh, executive order na to, this is uh, debatable. Okay? Later on, i-discuss natin yan. Okay? So nagkaroon ng Examination abroad because of this executive order as signed by Gloria Macapagal Arroyo. Yun ang tawag na is PLBE. No? Ngayon, in that examination abroad, syempre mayroong requirements ng logbook. Okay? And that logbook, pag tinignan natin, mahirap siya i-comply. Diba? Mahirap siya i-comply. Bakit? Ang sinasabi ng RA9266, no ating batas, nung binasa ko yung qualification kanina, di ba? Sa letter C. Pag binasa mo yung qualification, you must be a graduate of Bachelor of Science in Architecture. And uh, in addition, you must have a uh, 
diversified training, equivalent to two years, signed, di ba malinaw doon na nakalagay signed by or certified by the architect mentor. So, arkitekto lang ang pwedeng mag-sign nung logbook. Question, is the uh, certification by an architect abroad valid or not? Okay? For me, the answer is not. Bakit? If you are outside the Philippines, ang yung authority to practice has no full force and effect. Bakit? It is only limited within the, the, with the Philippine jurisdiction. Subukan mong pumerma sa building permit doon sa ibang bansa kung tatanggapin. Diba? Hindi nila tatanggap din yun. Unless there is a reciprocity agreement in the practice of the profession. But how about this, the uh, certification of the logbook? Okay? That is the reason why in uh, 2017, mayroong resolution uh, 2017-1034 na nirelax ng uh, PRC and PR BOA ang logbook sa uh, ibang bansa. No, like uh, Dubai, Doha, Qatar, no, Riyadh. Nirelax ang requirements ng logbook at ang nakalagay lang doon, nire-require lang na mag-comply or uh, mayroong certificate of related work experience signed by the employer. The question again is this. Is that employer an architect? Magtininan natin yung qualification doon sa letter C ng RA 9266 kasi sinasabi sa qualification sa applicants for examination under our law is that it should be certified by an architect mentor. Malinaw yun doon. So ang employer ba is allowed under our law? The answer is no. The answer is no. Okay? Certificate of uh, Related Work Experience. Yun ang ginawa ngayon ng PRC. So nirelax ang logbook. In, in short, nirelax ang logbook doon sa overseas uh, employment. But uh, take note guys sa mga kaibigan natin uh, nasa abroad na nanood ngayon. No? I'm not telling na talagang invalid no? because our uh, our uh, government officials, no? yung actions ng ating government officials has a presumption of regularity. Ibig sabihin, lahat ng actions ng ating uh, public officials considered as valid kahit pa yung executive order for example is invalid no isa sa paningin natin kahit pa yung resolution ng uh, PR BOA is invalid sa pagkakaintindi natin as long that there is no court uh, order to uh, declare that uh, executive order or to declare that resolution unconstitutional then the actions of our uh, public officials considered as valid because of the presumption of regularity. Kaya nga sinasabi ko, debatable. No? Pagka yan ay may nag-question sa court later on, pwedeng papasok yan. No? Debatable siya. Okay. Bakit ko sinasabi yan? Kasi pag tinignan natin, kaya nirelax yung logbook dahil walang arkitekto na pwede mag-sign. No? Kasi walang full force and effect ang, ang sign and shield ng architect doon sa ibang bansa, ng Filipino architect. Kasi nga, ang uh, ating uh, authority is uh, full force and effect lang within the uh, Philippine jurisdiction. Pangalawa, hindi niya project ang mga project na nandun. Okay? Although under his uh, supervision siguro, but that project is not under with his charge and supervision kasi hindi niya naman project yun eh. Impliyado ka ron. Pangatlo, kung ikaw naman ay uh, apprentice, yung uh, pinirmahan mong kontrata nung pumunta ka ng Middle East, nung pumunta ka sa ibang bansa, is a regular employment, not an apprenticeship agreement. Okay? So, sinasabi ko lang na debatable. Okay? But until such time na walang nagkikwestiyon sa court, all actions of the public officials is invalid because of the uh, presumption of regularity. Okay? So, yun ang nangyari sa examinations abroad. Kaya mayroon tayong uh, examinations uh, abroad. Okay? Question. Paano, sir, pagka, limbawa, later on, may nag-question sa court? Alam, alam mo, na-challenge yung uh, Executive Order 835. Na-challenge yung uh, Resolution 2017-1034. Yung mga pumasa ba na, na, na nag-exam dati is, uh, alam mo, na-declare unconstitutional. So, hindi ba sila arkitekto? The answer is no. Arkitekto sila. Okay? Ang mga susunod lang, pagka tinuloy pa rin yan, yun lang yung 
hindi magiging arkitekto. Kasi na-declare na ng uh, court unconstitutional kung may declaration, for example. But those previously uh, passed the board uh, prior to the uh, declaration of the court of that uh, executive order or resolution unconstitutional, still, that is considered as uh, architect or uh, pass the board under the uh, under that uh, giving of examination. Kasi meron tayong tinatawag na uh, doctrine of oper operative uh, pact. Okay? So sa doctrine of operative pact, ibig sabihin na pagka yung isang uh, laws, executive orders, resolution no, that was imposed and later it was declared unconstitutional, kung sino man yung mga nag-take ng exam during that time na constitutional pa siya, that is considered as valid. Pagka na-declare as unconstitutional, yung mga susunod lang ang affected. Okay? So ngayon, kaya ko dinidiscuss yan yung regarding sa logbook of diversified experience na nirelax ng uh, PRC sa mga uh, nasa abroad and dito sa Pilipinas kasi magkakaroon ng possibility ng effect of the violation of equal protection clause of the constitution. No? Kasi under uh, the constitution, uh, no person or class of person shall be deprived of the same protection of the laws which is enjoyed by the other person or other classes in the same place and in like circumstances. So, ang nag is dito, pariho lang naman ang, uh, ang uh, kailangan yung uh, gawin. No? Ang pagkakaiba, ikaw apprentice dito, doon uh, regular employment. So, pwede magkakaroon ng equal protection of the laws under our uh, Bill of Rights. Okay? But if nobody will question that in court, then that is considered as valid. No? There will be no questions uh, to that uh, later on. Okay? Next. Do you want to take a break? Antok na kayo or you want to continue the discussion? <laughs> Anyone who want to take a break or continue? Sir, ano po? Kayo po. I think we can have a 10-minute break if you like. For me, okay lang. But I, I, don't, I don't know with the participants. No? Short break lang po. Okay lang. Sige po. Okay, can we have a uh, can we take a break? Short break. Uh 10 minutes. Is that okay? Okay, so sir, pero bago po tayo magkaroon ng break time, may mga questions lang po. Okay. So, yung una pong question, kapag retaker ka ba ng ale? Ano magre-retake ka ng ale, no? Do you do, do do you need to submit your logbook again? I think uh, the PRC is still looking it. Ah, okay. So the PRC are still but, looking you know, for it. Oh, uh, you know, diyan ang difference sa sa Supreme Court, no? Because uh, bar applicants uh, sa profession ng lawyers, pagka ikaw ay uh, nagretake, no? Either take two, take three, take four, hindi na sila nagpapasubmit even yung uh, mga requirements ng uh, ng uh, yung uh, credentials. Sa so, Supreme Court, mm. once na nag-submit ka ng first application mo, for example, and then uh, hindi ka pumasa, and then nag-apply ka for the second time, hindi ka pumasa, third time, hindi ka pumasa, hanggang fourth, yung application form lang yung pipilapan mo sa Supreme Court. No? Yung mga requirements mo na yung diploma mo, yung uh, transcript of records mo, hindi na nila hihingin yun kasi meron na silang record. But I think the PRC uh, requires yeah, all okay. of these again, no? uh, which is uh -huh. sabi ko Ah, saan na napunta yung database? Diba? Dapat nag-database dahil uh, database, uh, computer age na tayo ngayon. Dapat pagka uh, nag-reapply, uh, eh, kasi hindi naman magbabago yung academic uh, credentials mo eh. Diba? So, dapat Nandun pa rin. Hinihingi, no? Nandun eh. pa rin naman. Same pa rin oh, naman yun. No? yun. So dapat hindi na nila hinihingi yun. Even the logbook, dapat hindi na nga hihingi yun. Eh. Alam ka naman mag-apprentice ka uli. Diba? Ina-comply mo na yung dating uh, two years equivalent mo for example. So dapat hindi na nila hinihingi yun. But I don't know kung uh, what is the program of the uh, PRC bakit hanggang ngayon paulit-ulit na hinihingi no, yung mga documents na yan pagka ikaw ay nag-reapply. <laughs> Apos sir, thank you po. Tapos meron po dito nagtatanong, bakit wala po tayo hazard pay when we have to go to construction sites? Okay. 
Hazard pay kasi is not mandatory with the labor code, no. It is uh, discretionary with the uh, discretionary with the uh, employer, na no? kung uh, magbibigay ng uh, hazard pay depending on the nature of the uh, nature of work. Okay? You know, I have an experience for that. When uh, I was employed with Santa Clara Corporation before, I was assigned with Surigao uh, del Norte doon sa PH Wall Project and wala kaming hazard pay. No? Pero ang trabaho namin doon is uh, planta. No? Wala rin hazard pay na binigay sa amin. But you know, uh, nung pinasok kami ng mga rebelde doon noong October 3, 2011, pinasok kami ng mga NPA ron and then pinalabas kami sa construction site, sinunog yung mga equipments namin. And then pagbalik namin, wala nang gustong bumalik. Then natakot na. Then that's the time that uh, the company provide us for that hazard pay. <laughs> so minsan yung uh, mga companies, minsan pagka walang nangyari, hindi magte-take action na. No, diba? Nabigyan natin ng hazard pay. No? Pag nakita nila na, oh, baka wala nang uh, bumalik, no? mag-offer tayo ng hazard pay. No? Yan ang problema minsan na nakikita natin sa mga private companies. Thank you sir. Tas meron din po si Arnel Dumuswai, Dumaswai. Ano po no siya po ay amate nitong Zoom platform, uh, Zoom na webinar natin. Sabi niya, after you pass the boards, how many years can you sign the log sheet diversified for Ale? So kunyari kapag may ano kami nagpapasign sa iyo. Well, you can sign the logbook uh anytime no kasi ang una-una ang uh, sa pag-sign ng logbook kasi hindi naman yan kailangan na 2 years sa iyo ang isang uh, apprentice okay halimbawa pumasa ka and then you start practicing architecture on that day one na nag-practice ka ng architecture you are now qualified to be a mentor to the newly one no halimbawa nagkaroon ka ng project and then uh, nag day one ka and then meron kang isang apprentice na pumasok nung day one on that day one niya pwede ng apprenticeship sa iyo yon no, di diretso na yon. Halimbawa, 5 months lang siya sa iyo. No, and then after 5 months lumipat siya sa ibang firm. So yung 5 months lang din na na apprentice niya sa iyo, ang i-certify mo at kung anong ginawa niya sa iyo for that period of 5 months. So hindi uh, iba kasi sila sabi nila, kailangan 2 years ka muna bago ka makapag-certify ng uh, logbook. No, kasi 2 years daw ang diversified training, no. Ang logbook naman ay hindi kailangan mag-stay ka sa isang uh, architect or sa isang architectural firm. You can go with other architects, no? In fact, pag tinan mo yung six uh, field of practice natin, pwede nga uh, yung uh, portion ng uh, project management mo doon ka sa project management firm, hindi sa sa architectural firm. As long na mayroong architect ang project management firm na mag-certify doon ng, uh, ng uh, logbook mo na part ng project management firm. Halimbawa, bidding, general conditions, pwede kang pumasok doon sa mga uh, firm ng uh, quantity surveying firm para matutunan mo ng uh, properly yung uh, paggawa ng bidding documents, general conditions, and kung ilang hours lang yung uh, pag-stay mo doon sa kanila, being an apprentice, yun lang din yung number of hours na isi-certify nila on the logbook. So hindi, wala requirement sa logbook that uh, once you go for the apprenticeship, you will stay with uh, one architect. Kasi hindi ka naman nakakasigurado that, that uh, the all uh, six field of practice doon sa apprenticeship natin is nandun sa isang arkitekto lang. No, pwedeng wala sa kanya yung iba doon. So pwede kang lumipat doon sa uh, ibang architects na nag-o-offer noon. So on that day one na nag-practice ka ng architecture, you can you can uh, make Sign. you can hire an apprentice na 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 ilang uh, o oh, ilang months na sa sayo or days na sa sayo. Then that will that the only uh, number of hours that you are going to certify in the logbook. Okay, thank you sir. Tas last question po before we take our break. Uh, questions asked by uh, Sushmita Cruz. Sabi niya, hello po architect, we have friends who happen to graduate October 2018. Mm. They plan to take the boards nitong October 2020. Questionable po kaya yun? Well, una una, uh, they have to count kasi the equivalent two years. No, pag pag uh, tinanan natin doon sa requirements ng uh, applicants for examination, uh, it will count after graduation. Okay, it will count after graduation yung two years na yun. Gaya ang sinasabi ko kanina, wala ng OJT no, na napaloob doon sa yung uh, academic uh, schooling na nag-OJT ka at ma-counted, wala na. So, if nag-graduate siya ng uh, end of 2018, pagka hindi umabot na equivalent ng two years, 
uh, hindi talaga ma-comply ang uh, logbook. No? In fact, sinasabi ko kanina, dapat nga hindi ka talaga nag stick sa equivalent na two years. Pag nakikita mo sa sarili mo na hindi ka pa talaga qualified later on. No? Although, well, siyempre lahat tayo nagmamadali na magkakaroon ng uh, lisensya. No? Uh, ayaw ng patagalin pa. So, kumukuha ka agad ng examination. Uh-huh. So, so I think also no to add to that no si Keso Schmita I think kasi uh, meron namang January na 2021 parang I think it will be safer kung yun yung kukunin niya na lang na schedule no Okay so thank you so much po so let's have a 10 minute break Okay Okay thank, thank you. you sir
Thank you. 
Kamusta po kayo? Nakapag-break? Nakapag-break tema? Nakarecess? <laughs> okay, so sir, architect, meron po tayo mga questions dito before we can start. Sige. Okay po. Uh, sabi po ni Abigail Joy, no, Adeya, no, sabi niya, is overtime hours counted on the minimum diversified experience prior on taking the alley? Yes, uh, overtime is uh, allowed as long that it can be proven. No? Ang, uh, ang point ngayon that sa logbook, di ba, nakalagay na mayroong uh, statement na kung sakali man hihingan ka ng uh, Board of Architecture or PRC ng evidence to support. No? Example, yung mentor. Nakita no? ng PRC. Uh, two years apprenticeship but you comply with the 3,840 hours and sasabihin mo dun may overtime. Of course, magkakaroon ng doubts yung PRC. No? But if it will be supported later on by evidence, by uh, like, for example, time record na talagang nag-overtime naman, then that can be granted. No? That can be granted. Okay, thank you po. And second question po, uh, also from Abigail Joy, sabi niya, as mentioned earlier, project management, administration, and the like is not feasible. How about communication with stakeholders and construction document management through WFH arrangement? Nanag na, 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 WFH arrangement kami ngayon. Yeah, okay. Sa so, sa so work from home nga ang uh, medium ng Zoom kasi pagka document based, pwedeng mai-present sa client, di ba? So mm -hmm. pagka document based ang uh, work, so covered 'yon, di ba? Pero ang supervision kasi Diba? Pagka nag-supervise ka, how can you supervise using uh, Zoom? Diba? Sabi ko nga, pwedeng monitoring ng uh, accomplishment, pero supervision, malabo ang supervision. Diba? Sa superintendents and the like, sa project management, malabo yung supervision. But uh, for those aspects of uh, document base na pwedeng i-present through medium ng uh, katulad ng ginagawa natin ngayon sa Zoom, so, allowed yon. Okay. Thank you, sir. Tapos meron po, third question niya, ano po, experience to other countries is acceptable po ba? Kunyari, nag-apprentice po ako sa Pilipinas, te, pero nag-apprentice din po ako sa Singapore. Kasama po ba yon? Well, ang, ang question kasi dyan is uh, who will sign the uh, logbook of diversified training? Diba? Gaya nga na sinasabi ko is uh, under... Uh, RA 9266 tingnan natin sa qualification of an applicant for examination mm. tingnan lang natin 
Pero sir, kunyari po meron kang mentor tapos na witness naman niya na nagtrabaho ka sa Singapore, ka- pwede siya yung mag-sign. But he's only a witness, not under his charge and supervision. Opo, hindi po siya yung talagang diba? uh, oh. witness lang po yung mentor oh, not niya. Not under his charge and supervision. Mm-mm. Oh, nakalagay is uh, two years uh, or equivalent of diversified architectu- uh, architectural experience, duly certified by a registered licensed architect. Pero ang nakalagay sa logbook is usually under your charge and supervision. Mm-hmm. Okay, sir. Sige po. Thank you po. Meron pa? Ayun ah, lang po, sir. Oh. Ay, ito po. Ay, sorry, sir. Meron pa po pahabol si si yeah. Arnel. No, sabi ni Arnel di Masuay, is it possible supervision via Zoom or video call? Kung supervision, ang, ang point ko nga doon, kung uh, supervision, sa tingin ko hindi feasible. Okay. Uh, ngayon, kung uh, pag, pag cellphone kasi, di ba, how can they present work sa site? <laughs> di ba? Oo nga. Kung may... Sir, paano okay. kung nyari, yun nga, yun nga sabi niyo mo kanina, di ba, parang merong ano, may cameras, tapos merong hmm. flying drone. Hmm. Sabi ko nga, site inspection pwede. Mm-hmm. Site inspection pwede kasi makikita mo sa site inspection pag uh, determination lang ng accomplishment. Yes. Pero kung uh, supervision, how can you supervise and communicate with the foreman, for example? Mm-hmm. on how to do the works. Parang yeah. limited pa, no? Oh. With our present technology, parang medyo magiging Malabi limited pa. pa. Oh. Okay, thank you, sir. Sige pa. So, guys, no, so if you have any questions, just uh, use our chat window. Okay? okay. Uh, yeah, so enjoy learning. Sige pa. Okay, may napansin lang ako dun sa chat group kanina. Um... Uh, may nag-question doon na bakit kailangan 5 years ang gap sa qualification ng member of the board. No? Uh, sagutin ko lang yon. why 5 uh, years or uh, you are not engaged in teaching for 5 years to, ano yon, to uh, establish uh, credibility in the licensure examination na dapat uh, hindi magkakaroon ng leakage sa school kung saan siya nanggaling. O kaya nga binibigyan ng timeline na dapat hindi ka na nagtuturo, kailangan 5 years yung uh, gap para wala ka ng connection sa institution na kung saan ka nang galing. No? For the credibility of this uh, licensure examination. In fact, ang ginagawa ka niyan, uh, hindi masyadong pinapaalam no, na, na i-appoint as uh, PR BOA. Okay, so that's the purpose. No? To maintain uh, credibility in the licensure examination, and uh, to avoid the uh, possible connections doon sa uh, present no kasi simply pag uh, after for example ng uh, one year or six months fresh pa yung connection ng magiging uh, applicants for member of the board doon sa institution so baka sasabihin magkaroon ng leakage no na magkakaroon ng favor doon sa institution or sa academic institution kung saan siya nanggali okay So let's continue now with the uh, the practice of architecture. Okay? Uh tuloy-tuloy na tayo, no? Wala na tayong break. And uh ito na y- ito na yung uh, focal point no sa practice ng architecture, yung section 25. Okay? So under section 25 sa practice of architecture, nakalagay diyan registration of architects required. No person shall practice architecture in this country or engage in preparing architectural plans specifications or preliminary data for the erection or alteration of any buildings located within the boundaries of the Philippines or of this country or use the title architect or display or use any title, sign, card, advertisement, or other device to indicate such person practices or offers to practice architecture or is an architect unless such person shall have received from the board a certificate of registration and be issued a professional identification card in the manner herein after provided and shall therefore or thereafter comply with the provisions of this 
Act. Take note, no? In Section 25, it uh, mentioned only the word person, okay? So the person in uh, mentioned here is that not only limited to natural person, okay? It includes also juridical person like corporation, okay? Kasi nga, uh, sa corporation, uh, palagi nang sinasabi ng uh, Securities and Exchange Commission that corporation is not allowed to practice architecture. Later on, i-discuss ko yung uh, regarding sa juridical person like corporation. No? Kasi marami tayong mga corporations na uh, or, or marami tayong mga firm na a group of architects and nag-re-register as a corporation no? para pag tinignan medyo malaki yung, uh, yung firm. No? But uh, sinasabi ng ating batas na uh, a corporation is not allowed to practice architecture. So this person mentioned in Section 25 is not only limited to natural person. It includes also juridical person like corporation no? who is not allowed to practice architecture or in this country. Or engage in preparing architectural plans, specifications, not only limited to architectural plans and specific specifications, but those enumerated in Article 1, Section 3, Number 3, and 4 of the uh, RA 9266. Ano yung Article 1, Section 3, and 4 ng 9266? Scope of practice of architecture, general practice of architecture. So, ibig sabihin, pagka ikaw ay uh, hindi pa nabigyan ng certificate of registration, you are not an architect, you are not allowed to perform the scope of works, the scope of practice enumerated in Article 1, Section 3, Number 3, and 4 of RA 9266. Uh, okay. Now, kaya nga, pag tinignan nyo dyan, ang next wording niya is uh, specifications or preliminary data for the erection or, or alteration of any building located within the boundaries of this country. Napaka-specific, sinabi ng batas under Section 25 na you are not allowed to perform such services pag wala kang certificate of registration located within the boundaries of this country. Kaya nga sinasabi ko pa ulit-ulit kanina na yung, yung authority to practice, yung license mo, walang full force and effect outside the uh, Philippine territory no, kasi sinasabi ng, 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 ng batas natin, yan ay within the boundary of this country, so sa Pilipinas lang. Okay? Question, sir, pwede ba ako mag-practice sa West Philippine Sea? The answer is yes. Okay? The answer is yes because yung West Philippine Sea, kung saan nagpapatayo yung mga, mga Chinese ng structure, is part of Philippine territory. Hindi naman natin narinenounce yun. No? Hindi naman natin sinabi na sa kanila na talaga. In fact, still we are claiming it as a uh, portion of Philippine territory. But the question is simply, punta ka ron. No? Titingnan natin kung hindi ka itataboy ng mga Chino. No? But the question kung pwede ka mag-practice doon, the answer is yes. Because that is yet considered as boundary of Philippine uh, territory. Okay? So yan. And use the title architect. Ibig sabihin sa Section 25, hindi ka pwedeng gumamit ng word na architect pagka ikaw ay hindi pa na, ka, na-issuehan ng certificate of registration no? and uh, taking of an oath. Okay? Use the title architect and display or use any title. Take nota, use or display any title. Anong ibig sabihin ng any title? Example, architectural designer. Because architectural designer implies that you are practicing architecture. Malinaw yung Section 25. No? It is not only limited to the word, the use of the word architect, but also to the use of the word or display any title, any title, sign, card, or advertisement, or other device to indicate such person practices or offers to practice architecture or is an architect. Okay. Pag-uusapan natin ngayon yung mga Facebook post. Okay? Marami dyan yung mga students. Marami dyan yung mga graduates, you're not yet an architect, na nagpo-post sa social media ng kanilang mga rendering works. Violated Section 25 or not? The answer is it violates Section 25. Bakit? Sinasabi ng Section 25 or display or use any title, sign, card, 
advertisement. So what is the purpose of posting your uh, rendering works to social media? To advertise. Okay? To advertise. That is the intent. So once you advertise in social media, which that work, you know, yung rendering works is only intended for a registered and licensed architect under Section 25, you are prohibited dapat na gawin yun. No? Ang, ang point lang, hindi na regulate yung ating mga students, hindi na regulate yung ating mga graduates. No? Kaya, pag nakikita natin sa Facebook, no? ang dami mga posting ng, uh, ng mga uh, prospective renderings. Okay lang yan pagka licensed and registered architect. No? But for the student, it should not be allowed. Because Section 25 says, or display or use any title, sign, card, advertisement. Okay? Posting in social media is a kind of advertisement. Or other device to indicate such person practices or offers to practice architecture. O di ba? Kahit hindi wala kang lisensya, posting of advertisement in the social media offers to practice architecture. That is considered as device indicate such person practices or offers practice of architecture. Kahit hindi pa yan architecture. Okay? Then unless such person shall have received from the board, a certificate of registration and be issued a professional identification card. Sinasabi ko kanina na if you are not yet issued a certificate of registration, you are not an architect. Kasi malinaw sa Section 25. No? Hindi ka pwedeng gumamit ng titulong arkitekto, hindi ka pwedeng mag-advertise, hindi ka pwedeng maglagay ng title, sign, unless you were issued a certificate of registration. Kaya ang tanong is, Sir, pumasa ako, eh nagkaroon ng pandemic, na-postpone ang aming uh, oath-taking. Architect na ba ako? The answer is no. Because lack of the requirements. Ano yon? Issuance of certificate of registration and taking of an oath of profession. So, so pag sir, wala hanging, pa po, yun, hanging no? pa po yung pumasa ng January, no? Yes. So, oh, hanging yun, po sila. Pag, mm-hmm. take out, they are not allowed to sign and seal. No? Kahit, kahit nag-register na yan sa PRC, no? nabigyan na sila, alam na nila yung kanilang uh, PRC number, they are not allowed to practice architecture. Bakit? Wala kayong certificate of registration. Hindi kayo nag-take ng oath of profession. Take note, under Section 25, para maka-practice ka ng uh, scope of practice ng architecture enumerated under Article 1, Section uh, 3, Number 3 and 4, you must comply the requirements under uh, Article 3, Section 12, examination. Okay? Ibig sabihin, pumasa sa exam, hindi yung nakakuha ka ng exam. No? Kasi pwede kang kumuha ng exam, hindi ka naman pumapasa. No? Kailangan pumasa sa exam. Okay? Pumasa sa exam, after uh, you pass the examination, then you register with the uh, Professional uh, Regulation Commission. Then, compliance to Article 3, Section 18, Certificate of Registration, the issuance of Certificate of Registration, compliance to Article 3, Section 17, the taking of a uh, solemn undertaking of an oath, and then, doon muna magagamit ngayon yung seal and yung pag-indicate ng iyong PRC and PDR number in all documents na kailangan mong i-perform. Okay? So lahat ng mga details na yan, pwede mo nang ilagay doon. So you cannot practice those uh, enumerated in Article 1, Section 3, 3, and 4 in compliance with Section 25 pagka hindi mo na comply ang Section 12, Section 18, Section 17. Okay? So take note of that uh, requirements. Okay. Sir, may questions po kasi parang very interested po sila. Hmm. Oh. Si okay. Mikael po nagtanong, is posting thesis violates the Section 25? Yes. Oh. It uh, I will make it, this as an example. Yung nangyari sa kaya dun sa UST student okay. na nag-present personally ng thesis niya kay Isko Moreno. Ah, okay po. Okay? Ngayon, nagtalo si Architect Senyo, si Dean uh, Sly and si uh, Architect uh, Joey Manalad. Di ba? Kasi ang uh, position ni Architect Senyo, bawal. Ang position ni Architect Manalad pwede. Okay? Mm. So may uh, may opinion to that is hindi talaga pwede. Bakit? 
the thesis uh, requirements is the the, the, the uh, thesis of a student is a requirement for graduation. It is not mm. for purposes of implementation. Okay? That thesis is only a test of the skills of the students whether pwede na silang uh, pakawalan sa academic institution or not. In fact, pag tinignan natin yung thesis uh, proposals, once na na-approve ng institution yan, na nag-deliberate ka, for example, ang owner niyan, dalawa na kayo, the institution and the students. Mm-hmm. So pag wala ka dapat yung uh, authority ng uh, institution, hindi mo dapat pwedeng i-present basta-basta sa kahit kanino para ipagawa yung uh, thesis. Okay. Mm, okay, thank you sir. May isa rin po uh, from architect yeah. Isa, sabi niya, what if projects that are posted are projects overseas? Well, project overseas, uh, wala namang problema yung project overseas as long na na arkitekto ka, di ba? Mm-hmm. But uh, ang point kasi doon is uh, why do you have project overseas if you are not allowed to practice uh, architecture overseas? Mm. Wow. Kunyari po, nagkatrabaho po sila sa ibang bansa. Parang, oh, ngayon, can they naman, post their projects? Nagkatrabaho ko sa ibang bansa. Then later on, ang uh, advertisement po is that uh, this is our project and uh, I I was an architect uh, inspector or QAQC architect for this project before. Walang problema doon. Mm-hmm. Diba? Kasi ang, ang advertisement mo is that in, hindi mo na advertise na project mo yon. Ang ina-advertise mo is your function when you were there. Mm-hmm. So, hindi unethical yun. Okay? Pero, okay. inos mo, claim mo, na project mo, abay, maling-mali yun. No? Yun, mm-hmm. yun, yun ang ethical doon sa, sa advertisement mo yun. Okay, okay, sige po, sir. Sige, what else? Meron pa? Uh, si Cherry Ann Alaba po, sabi niya, question po, yung paglalagay po ba ng architect or acronym na ARC ay bawal or pwede pa Pwede ka ba kasuhan kung hindi ka pa talaga architect? Well, kung ako ang tatanungin mo, legally speaking, the answer is not allowed. Kung hindi ka pa architect. Okay, because so that title, na pag binasa mo yung, yung certificate of registration, nakalagay doon na ikaw ay uh, binibigyan ng pribilihiyong maggamit ang titulong arkitekto. Mm, doon okay. nakalagay sa ating certificate, mamaya ipapakita ko ang aking certificate of registration. Ano? Doon palang makikita na pwede mong gamitin ang titulong arkitekto. So kung hindi ka pa arkitekto, hindi ka talaga pwedeng magbitbit ng titulong arkitekto. Kaya nga mali na sa section na 25, di ba? Huh? Okay. Uh, or use the title architect unless such person shall have received from the board a certificate of registration. Kasi nandun nang galing yung ating authority. Mm. Okay, okay, okay po. So bawal. Okay. Ah, po. May mga nagsabi po, hala, ang dami naglalagay ng architect sa pangalan nila. <laughs> oh, bawal. Bawal yan. Okay. That is already tantamount to uh, illegal practice of the profession. Okay. 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 Thank you po, sir. Okay. So, now let's uh, read some cases. No? Uh, related cases. Uh, ito ay foreign cases. No? Uh, so, this is a borrowed legislation. Ang tawag namin dito is uh, borrowed legislation. Kasi wala pa tayong ganitong case ngayon sa Pilipinas. No? So, even Supreme Court, pagka nag-decide ng mga cases, tapos uh, wala pang... Uh, the same case, for example, in the previous uh, uh, previous justices na nag-retire na, wala pa silang na-decide ng mga ganitong case. So, ang ating Supreme Court is uh, nagre-rely din sa mga foreign cases. No? Ang tawag doon is borrowed legislation. Okay? So, let's uh, read some case. No? Itong case na to is uh, itong case ng state uh, Israel law versus Howell. No? Unlicensed architect. Okay? nag uh, gumagamit no in in relation to section 25 ah gumagamit siya ng uh, letterhead no ang letterhead niya at saka yung business card niya mayroong logo no tapos sa kalagay doon George L Howell Associates Architects and Designers bawal okay na prosecute kasi hindi siya architect eh pero gumagamit siya ng business card no may logo pa no tapos sa kalagay pa Associates, Architects, and Designers. Okay? So, wag ayahin. No? Kasi bawal under Section uh, 25. Ang, ang, unless uh, the board has issued a certificate of registration, pumasa ka. No? And uh, nakapag-take ka ng O. Okay? So, ito, unlicensed. Pero gumawa ng business card. Pampa-impress siguro. No? Ang nilagay niya doon na uh, George L. Howell, Associates, Architects, and Designers. 
no, nag-sign pa siya ng uh, dokumento no sa space designated only for architect okay so na na charge sa court next case sa uh, South Carolina no uh, yung appellant is uh, owner siya ng architectural design business that consulted with clients determine their needs viewed their property and prepared architectural plans for the construction of commercial office buildings and residential structures was engaged in the unauthorized practice of architecture kasi hindi rin siya licensed uh, architect no pero nagtayo ng architectural design business no so practice of architectural profession is not a business it is an occupation or uh, profession so na charge doon sa South Carolina another one is a uh, draftsman no yung uh, draftsman engaged in the uh, practice of architecture cannot recover for services rendered because he was he was uh, a principal to the contract. Further, Dobson was not the agent of the licensed architect with whom he consulted because licensed architect did not give Dobson authority to bind architect's firm by contract. So itong uh, Dobson, katulad ng mga ginagawa dito sa atin na gagawa ng uh, plano, papasign and seal sa isang architect. No? So, uh, in fact, itong case na to, yung application dito sa atin is yung... Uh, Section 36 ng 9266. No? Pag tininan mo yung Section 34 ng RA 9266, non-registered person cannot claim equivalent service. Ibig sabihin, pagka ikaw ay hindi lisensyado, hindi ka pwedeng gumawa kung ano yung uh, nararapat lang para sa isang arkitekto. No? And yung Section 36 ng ating RA 9266, nakalagay din doon na non-registered person cannot claim equivalent, uh, cannot claim professional fees. So ito yung kaakibat nito doon sa Maryland. No? that this uh, draftsman is naniningil. No? So, sinasabi dito na ang draftsman was not the agent of the licensed architect na nagkonsulta siya ron at sinayin ang seal yung kanyang uh, gawa. No? Because licensed architect did not give draftsman authority to bind architects firm by contract. Okay? So, ang gandang kaso. No? Napakagandang uh, kaso. So, na-charge yung uh, draftsman dito. No? So, bawal. Then another one in Oregon, uh, owner of drafting and design business, practice architecture without a license, is a violation of the state uh, statute, even though the buildings planned and designed were never erected. So kahit wala pa yan, hindi pa yan pinatayo, as long na gumawa ka ng, ng uh, services, ng uh, design, pagka ikaw hindi arkitekto, then that is prohibited by the law. In fact, uh, over yan ang ating Section 34 sa RA 9266. Uh, Okay, so yon. To continue now, uh, mayroong progressive requirement, tatlong progressive requirements before a person can practice architecture. Ano yung requirements na yon? Pass the board, take the uh, auto profession, and issuance of the certificate of registration. Hindi na yung aking certificate of registration, batang bata pa ako dyan, no? Totoy na tutoy ako dyan, no? Payat ko pa. So that is by certificate of registration. Okay? So diyan sa certificate of registration, diyan makikita na binibigyan ka ng titulong arkitekto. Okay? So pag wala yung certificate of reg registration na yan, ibig sabihin hindi ka pa binigyan ng authority para gamitin mo ang word na architect. Okay? So pag na-issue lang ang certificate of registration, doon ka pa lang binibigyan ng authority pag binasa niyo yan. No, hindi ko alam kung ma-blue up, no, but later on, titingnan natin. No, nakalagay dyan. Okay? So, yun ang, ang three progressive requirements. You pass the board, you register with the PRC and uh, take an auto profession, and then issue once of the certificate of registration. Okay? Uh, issue once of certificate of registration. Ang kadalasan na nangyayari, pagka ikaw ay pumasa, no, ay uh, nagpapainom ka agad. Diba? So, pagka-release ng result, inuman yan pagkagabi. No, blow out dito, blow out doon. <laughs> blow out na kagad. <laughs> Sinasabi, architect na sila. No? But take note, guys. Take note. Huwag na huwag kayong magpainom pag pumasa kayo. Magpainom kayo pag kayo ay nakapag-take na ng oath at naibigay na sa inyo ang inyong certificate of regis registration. Bakit? Pagka ikaw ay nagkaroon ng kaaway sa inuman at ikaw ay nasaksak na barel, Hindi ka arkitekto. Bakit? Lack of the following requirements. No? Taking a ban off and the issuance of the certificate of registration. 
Naalala ko lang kasi meron isang kaso sa Supreme Court. Pumasa sa bar exam. Nung pumasa sa bar exam, nung na-release yung result, nag-blow out nung gabi. No? Nag-inuman. Lasing nung umuwi. Nagkaroon ngayon ng traffic altercation sa Buindia. No? Sa Buindia. Na barel, patay. So, hindi nakapag-take ng oath. O, oh, di ba? Lawyer ba siya? The answer is no. Bakit? Hindi siya nakapag-take ng oath of profession. At hindi siya nakapag- hindi na-issue sa kanya ang kanyang certificate of registration. Okay? So, wag mo nang uminom pagka kayo'y pumasa sa sunod. Antayin niyong maibigay sa inyo ang inyong certificate of registration na makapag-take ng oath. No, mapagbiro ang tadhana. No, baka hindi kayo umabot doon sa dulo. Okay? So 'yon. Napakaimportante 'yan, guys. You know. Uh, you pass the board, you register with the PRC. The next thing will be to take an oath of professionals. So ano ba itong oath of professionals? Dapat ma- maintindihan natin, no? Ano itong oath of profession? Kasi ito ay napakaimportanteng undertaking. Pag wala ito, hindi ka arkitekto, hindi ka professional. Okay? So sa auto professionals, ito yung i-recite natin, no? Nakalagay diyan, no? Pag uh, pumunta na kayo sa PICC later on pag nag-take kayo ng oath, no? So sabi niyan, I uh Gerardi yeah. of uh, <laughs> uh, Metro Manila hereby solemnly swear. That I will support, I will support and defend, and the, defend constitution the constitution of the Philippines. That I will bear I will appear faith true and faith and, and allegiance to the same. Uh, that I will, that obey, I will obey the laws, laws legal, orders, legal orders, and executive, executive order promulgated by, promulgated by duly presented authorities of the Republic of the Republic Republic of the Philippines. And that, and I, that I impose this obligation upon myself, upon myself voluntarily, voluntarily without, without mental, mental reservation. reservation. Or purpose, or purpose of, of evasion. evasion. Pag binasa natin yung first paragraph ng auto professionals, it refers to the oath of allegiance and obeying the laws of the Republic of the Philippines. Nangangako ka doon, susundin ko ang mga alintuntuning batas ng Pilipinas. Pero pagka naging arkitekto, nadami ng reklamo sa batas ng Pilipinas. Di ba? <laughs> Pero nangako ka during oath taking, di ba? Nasusundin mo ang batas ng Pilipinas. Ano ang nakalagay? Well, ito. Sinasabi pa natin diyan, no? Uh, dahil uh, ito ay oath of allegiance, no? Di ba? That I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. Pero pag naoperan tayo ng uh, green card abroad, no? Citizenship abroad, goodbye Philippines. Di ba? Nawawala yung ating oath of allegiance, no? Nawala ang ating loyalty sa Republic of the Philippines. Okay? The second paragraph now says that I solemnly swear that at all times and places, I will adhere closely to the ethical, the ethical standards, standards and, and professional, professional rules, rules generally accepted, accepted with the architecture, with architecture profession in the Philippines. And that, and that I will, I will faithfully, faithfully discharge, discharge to the, the best, best of my abilities duties and duties and, and obligations in an incumbent, incumbent upon, upon legally, legally authorized, authorized architect, architect practitioner. practitioner. So help me God. And daming, ano dyan, and daming, uh, ang daming mga unethical practitioners din. No? Dinamay pa nga yung Diyos eh. Nuno nga ako, so help me God. No? Paano nga tutulungan ng Diyos? <laughs> diba? Ikaw mismo. No? Hindi mo rin tinutulungan yung sarili mo. Nasusundin mo ang alituntunin ng iyong auto professions. Take note guys, no? that the second paragraph of the auto professionals is an adherence to ethical standards and professional rules. So dapat susunod ka sa ethical standards, hindi ka lalabas doon. Okay? So, yun yung purpose ng ating auto-professionals. So, ano itong auto-professionals? Hindi ito ceremony lang. Kasi sinasabi ng iba, naku, ceremony lang yan. Wala naman yan. Pagkatapos yan, wala na. Take note, an auto-professionals is a sacred trust, not a mere ceremony. To which all professionals have subscribed in solemn agreement to dedicate themselves to the pursuit of the profession. It is not a mere ceremony or formality for practicing a profession to be forgotten afterwards. Nor is it a mere words, drift and hollow, but a secret trust that the professionals must uphold and keep inviolable at all times. Sinabi yan ng uh, Supreme Court sa case ni uh, Ting Dumali 
versus stories na hindi ito ceremonial, hindi lang ito ceremonial, but it is a solemn undertaking no? to uh, de- dedicate uh, yourselves to the pursuit of the profession. So take note of that auto professional. Kasi sa totoo lang, ang pinakamadaling magtanggal ng lisensya natin, ang pinakamadaling uh, mag-revoke, uh, pinakamadaling mag-suspend, pag sinight yung auto professions that you violate your auto professions, yun yung pinakamabilis. Kasi catch all provision to eh. No? Hindi na siya magsasight ng uh, single provision sa 9266 kung ano yan. No? Sasabihin niya lang that you violate your auto professions, mas mabilis magtanggal ng lisensya itong of, of, of uh, professionals. Okay? Now, you pass the board, you take, uh, you undertake your uh, uh, auto professions and you were issued a certificate of registration. The question now is, ano ngayon ang privileges in passing the licensure exam no? and after complying all the requirements? Okay? Ang uh, privilege ngayon is that you can practice the architecture profession within the boundary of the Philippine territory. Bakit ko sinasabi within the boundary of the Philippine territory? Kasi nga, di ba, sinasabi ng Section, uh, section 25 kanina, hindi ka makapag-practice ng architecture pagka hindi ka na-issue ng certificate of registration within the boundary of this uh, territory. So ang ating uh, practice of profession is territorial in nature. Okay? So once you pass the board, you take an oath, you issue the certificate of registration, one privilege for you is to practice the architecture profession within the boundaries of the Philippine territory. Exception, reciprocity agreement under Section 27 of RA 9266. No? Kung merong uh, reciprocity agreement yung uh, Hong Kong sa atin, then pwede ka mag-practice doon, pwede sila mag-practice dito. Okay? Number two, he or she can sign and seal architectural documents. So, pwede ka na po merma ng architectural documents prepared by him or under his direct supervision. Take note of that word. No? Prepared by the architect or under architect's supervision. Okay? Doon yung ang sanay, sanay signing and sealing. Kasi, pag binasa ninyo yung Article 1, Section 3, Number 3 and 4, wala sa group of practice ng architecture ang signing and sealing. No? Kaya nga, hindi tayo pwedeng mag-sign and seal ng gawa ng ibang tao. Ang sariling gawa lang natin na pwede natin i-sign and seal kasi hindi scope of practice natin yan doon sa scope of practice sa enumerated under Article 1, Section 3, and Number 3 and 4 ng 9266. Okay? And then, uh, an, an architect can collect professional fee to the services rendered. Doon ka palang pwedeng maningil. Okay? Dahil yan ay pribiliyo mo bilang isang arkitekto. And then, uh, he or she can perform the services enumerated in Article 1, Section 3, Number 3, and 4, which is the scope of practice and general practice of architecture. And number five, he or she can avail the privileges provided by the integrated and accredited professional organization of architects. Anong privileges na yan? Hindi ko alam. No? So, I have payment of IAPOA use, uh, CPD. <laughs> okay? Now, I will go back with number two. No? Kasi critical sa atin is yung he or she can sign and seal architectural documents. Okay? Maraming mga arkitekto nagsa-sign and seal ng gawa ng mga draftsman, gawa ng mga graduate of architecture. Okay? That is an unethical practice of the profession. Hindi pwede. Kasi wala tayong signing and sealing na scope of practice gaya na sinasabi ko kanina. Okay? Ang signing and sealing natin is under Section 32 ang sarili nating trabaho or under our charge and supervision. Okay? Kung yan ay uh, gawa ng draftsman, yan ay gawa ng isang uh, unlicensed individual, students, at pinapirmahan sa'yo, that is not considered under your charge and supervision. That is considered as aiding or abetting that person in the illegal practice of architectural profession. In fact, Itong New York State Law, naglabas ng kanilang komentaris. No? Sinabi ng uh, New York State Law sa komentaris nila in signing and sealing architectural documents na the practice of certain builders, developers, and contractors who attempt to have construction documents legitimized with a seal of a licensed professional after they have been prepared by an unlicensed individual is illegal. Such person 
is known as rubber stamping. And the licensee is guilty of professional misconduct. So unethical sa part ng architect, illegal sa part ng uh, non-registered person. Okay? Take note. Pag binasa mo ang ating seven, uh, section 7.9 ng Code of Ethics, doon ngayon makikita na hindi ka pwedeng mag-sign and seal ng gawa ng non-registered person. Ano sinasabi ng ating uh, section 7.9 ng uh, Code of Ethics? The architect shall not affix his or her signature and still to any plans or professional documents prepared by other persons or entities and not done under his or her direct personal supervision. So malinaw sa ating Code of Ethics na hindi tayo pwedeng magperma ng hindi natin trabaho or not within our charge and supervision. So wala tayong business of signing and sealing no? na maraming uh, gumagawa niyan sa industry. Okay? So hope that it is uh, clear with uh, all of you guys. Okay? And to the architects out there na nanonood din. Okay? Yes, sir, may mga tanong lang po sir. Parang ang dami okay. nilang tanong. Ano. So Sige. sir, kapag ganun po, ano yung nangyari po na hindi nga ikaw yung nag-drawing tapos pinirmahan mo Ang magiging violation mo is illegal practice. Tama po ba? Yung violation mo is, uh, if you are an architect, yung violation mo is unethical practice. Ah, unethical practice. If you okay. are not an architect, yung nagpapirma, yung violation mo ngayon is illegal practice. Ah, uh, kasi yung magiging okay. grounds, no? In fact, uh, pag tinina mo yung section 23 ng uh, RA 9266, aiding or abetting a person in the illegal practice of architecture, that okay. will tantamount also to malpractice of uh, the profession in the in case of uh, a license and registered architect. That is one grounds for the suspension and the uh, revocation of our professional license. Oh, I see. Okay, hmm. sir. Tapos meron po si Riz Angeline. Sabi niya, sir, what if nag-exam sa ibang bansa like sa Doha, Qatar, hmm. if he or she will be considered as an architect here in the Philippines, will he or she be considered as an architect in the Philippines? Yes, of course. Gaya nga sinasabi ko kanina, no, doon sa nang diniscuss ko yung examination abroad, no, na hanggat hindi ma-declare unconstitutional yung Executive Order 835, valid yon. They are architects. Okay. Tapos, sir, meron po dito si Miss Ana Fontelia. Sabi niya, in reference to what you said, sir, na if QAQC po kayo, you can post that you, that you work for a firm as a staff, but if nag- post po kayo ng thesis or personal works ninyo and makes it seem that like like you are advertising your services as an unlicensed architect. Unethical po yun. I would like yeah. to ask po if being unethical po is defined by the way you word, you caption your social media? Ano yung uh, pinaksin ko sa social it, media? Parang sabi po niya, I, I would like to ask po if being unethical po is defined by the way you word your captions sa social media mo? Well, kasi, uh, diba, uh, yeah. dalawa kasi yung magiging dalawa kasi yung magiging uh, kalalabasan. No? Either it is unethical because of the wording you posted or it is unethical because it is not supposed to be posted. Di ba? Yes. Kasi kung, kung uh, yung material itself at pinos mo sa social media na talagang unethical pag pinos mo yon that is considered na kahit wala kang wordings doon that is considered already as unethical okay pero kung nagpost ka sa social media alam mo nang unethical at isipin naglagay ka ng wordings well it's the same unethical di ba i see okay yun lang po sir okay so our architect seal is a professional seal no granted to us by uh, section 20 of RA 9266 and it is not a business seal no na anytime pwede nating i-stamp no sa kahit uh, kaninong gawa okay so take note of that our professional seal is a professional seal in the practice of profession and not a business seal okay now kanina ang uh, tiningnan natin nung pumasa is privilege no? Ano yung privilege yung pagpumasa? Ngayon naman, ano yung characteristics of the practice of architecture? Okay? So, characteristics of the practice of architecture is that a practice of architecture is a privilege, not a natural right, 
not a constitutional right. Privilegio, no? Kaya nga, anytime, pwedeng tanggalin sa atin ng gobyerno. Yung mga nagre-reklamo, di ba? Ngayon, sinasabi natin, yung mga health workers natin hindi pwedeng lumabas ng bansa. Okay? Because that is considered as police power of the state. No? Di ba? Sa, 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 sa iyong uh, uh, pag-take ng oath, sinabi, sinasabi mo doon na uh, ikaw ay susunod sa batas alituntunin ng Republika ng Pilipinas. Okay? So ngayon, may pandemic tayo. That is one kind of uh, an action of the state as uh, part of their police power. No? That they have to secure first the uh, the the people of the Republic of the Philippines other than uh, giving service to other country kasi pag tinitingnan niya natin ang privilege na binigay sa atin kung tayo ay lisensyado the same with the health workers ang lisensya nila is a privilege granted to them by the state na no? that it should only be practiced within the Philippine uh, territory pero nagagamit sa labas pero pang lumalabas yun dahil hindi pinapayagan ng lumabas ng bansa nagiging uh, masama pa yung uh, gobyerno no but take note that that practice of profession no in all practice of profession the practice of profession is only a privilege granted to us by the state no it is not our natural right it is not our constitutional uh, right no so anytime pwedeng tanggalin sa atin ng uh, gobyerno subject to the uh, uh, subject to the uh, due process. Okay? And then, uh, practice of architecture is a high uh, personal privilege. Bakit? Because we are governed by the code of ethics. Okay? Practice of architecture is limited to citizens of good moral character. No, na, Continuing position of good moral character. Kasi pagka wala kang good moral character, matatanggalan ka ng lisensya. Later on, makikita ninyo, no? Pagtanggal ng lisensya doon sa isosite yung case. No? Uh, based on lack of good moral character. And then practice of architecture is only for those persons with specialized uh, educational qualifications. Sa nag-aral lang. Pagka hindi ka nag-aral, hindi ka magiging arkitekto. No? Kaya nga, a juridical person is not allowed to practice architecture. Practice of architecture is duly ascertained and certified to licensure examination. And then uh, practice of architecture is not a trade or business, but a profession or occupation. Hindi ito negosyo. No, ang pagiging arkitekto, it is a profession or occupation. Cannot be subject of succession. Hindi natin pwedeng ipamana. No? Sasabihin niyo pag namatay ako ang bunsong anak ko ang magiging arkitekto, hindi pwede. No? Because it is only granted to you by the state kung sino lang yung pinagbigyan ng pribilehiyo, sino lang nag-aral, sino lang nag-exam, yun lang ang pwedeng maging arkitekto. No, hindi mo pwedeng isama ito sa iyong last will and testament na yung lisensya mo is ipamana mo sa iyong mga anak. Okay? Practice of architecture also cannot be bartered or leased. No, wala, wala kang pera ngayon, wala akong project, pwede bang isanla ko muna yung aking lisensya? No? It cannot be done. <laughs> no? Hindi pwede yon because uh, th- this is only our privilege, that a natural right and not a constitutional right. And this can be taken away by the government anytime subject to the requirement of due process. Okay? And practice of architecture is a noble profession. Being a noble profession we are governed by the code of ethics okay and we have the duties to the client duties to the contractor duties to the manufacturers dealers and agents duties to colleagues and subordinates and our duties to the public take note guys ha yung lecture natin pag nakikita ninyo nililink ko siya doon sa mga ibang applicable laws no kasi ganito dapat ang pag-aaral ng batas no so we have the duty being a noble profession we have the duty to the client the contractor the manufacturer, dealers and agents and subordinates, and the duty to the public. Bakit nakalabas yung duty to the public? If there is a conflict with all the duties, duties of the public ang mga ibabaw. Although yung uh, nangyayari is uh, majority ang our duty is uh, to the client, uh, yun yung uh, ating kliyente. No? But uh, if there is a uh, need, no? and there is a conflict between uh, that four duties and the duty to the public, the duty to the public prevails. Okay? Yan. And then, uh, who can practice architecture now? Okay? So, only natural person who has a certificate of registration or a professional license issued by the board is allowed to practice architecture in the Philippines. Juridical person such as a corporation cannot practice architecture in the Philippines. Why? 
Bakit ang juridical person like corporation ay hindi pwedeng mag-practice ng uh, architecture? Because corporation as a juridical person cannot acquire academic qualification. Ang corporation hindi naman nag-aral ng architecture. ba? Diba? Ang nag-aral ng architecture, ang kanyang uh, yung uh, kanyang ano lang, yung nag-create sa kanya, so yung uh, stakeholders. Yun ang nag-aral ng architecture. And there is a distinction between a natural person and a juridical person, separate and uh, distinct personality with uh, that incorporators. Okay? A corporation cannot take, cannot, uh, take licensure examination. Diba? Hindi pwede mag-exam ang uh, corporation. No? Mag-detect siya ng board sa PRC. Sino magre-represent sa kanya? Presidente? CEO? The answer is no. no? Because uh, they have uh, separate and distinct personality. Corporation cannot can take an oath of professions. Hindi rin sila pwede mag-take ng oath of professions. No? Because of lacking of the uh, academic uh, qualification. Okay. Now, pumasa ka na sa board exam. Alam mo na yung privilegio mo. Alam mo na yung uh, characteristics ng practice of architecture. Ang tanong ngayon is, kailangan ko bukumuha ng business permit. Okay? ba? Diba? Kasi marami sa atin, di ba? Pag uh, tayo ay pumasa, nakapag-take ng oath, nakapag uh, na, na issued na yung certificate of registration, nagpapa-register sa DTI. And then after registration sa DTI, kumuha ng business permit. Okay, take note guys that uh, sa practice of profession, hindi ta- natin kailangan kumuha ng DTI. Separate from our uh, issued certificate of registration. Pag uh, marami ako nakikita diyan, no na na-issue yung certificate of registration in their name kasi sa pangalan lang natin pwedeng i-issue yung certificate of registration dahil tayo lang ang nag-aral tayo lang ang nag-exam tayo lang ang nag-take ng oath so sa certificate of registration natin sa PRC ang ating pangalan lang ang binigyan ng pribilihiyo no at binigyan ng authority to practice such profession ngayon kung halimbawa gagawa ka ng other name pina-register mo sa DTI and sinabi mo architectural firm that name na iba sa pangalan mo is not allowed to practice architecture because that is considered as juridical person, not a natural person, which is yun ang mga pagkakamali ng karamihan. Okay? So the only allowed to practice architecture is only ourselves. No? Dahil tayo lang ang binigyan ng authority, ang certificate na binigay sa atin ng PRC to practice our profession is only addressed to our name na nagtapos, nagtake ng oath, nag-exam, and na-issued ng certificate of registration. So, hindi natin kailangan kumuha ng DTI to practice architecture profession. Certificate of registration is enough for you to practice your profession. In fact, hindi rin natin kailangan kumuha ng business permit because practice of profession is not a business. Ang business permit is only uh, given to those uh, engaged in uh, business and not to the practice of profession. Architect, meron lang pong question dito. Yeah. Ano talaga sila? Very engaged po ang ating pong mga uh, participants. So, sabi po ni Cherry Ann, sabi niya, question lang po, <coughs> kapag si Architect A ay nasa abroad, tapos yung project niya ay nasa Pilipinas, okay lang po ba na maghanap siya ng iba arkitekto na pwede mag-sign in seal ng project niya since wala yeah. siya sa Pilipinas? Tapos, hmm. ang kukunin po niya na magsa-sign and seal na arkitekto ay kaibigan o kakilala niya na architect din and aware naman sa project ni Architect A. Okay. Generally, the answer is not. No? The answer is not allowed. Okay. Bakit? The one who will sign is not the author of the plans. Okay. Alibawa, nasa abroad yung uh, gumawa ng plano. And then, pagdating dito sa Pilipinas, iba yung magsa-sign and seal. Yun ang sinasabi doon kanina sa sa New York State Law Commentaries na that is considered as rubber stamping. Okay? Ngayon, since na hindi siya pwedeng mag-sign ng seal doon sa abroad, no? Dahil uh, wala siyang uno na, wala siyang PTR dito. Okay? Edi yung uh, ipangalan niya sa kaibigan niya rito, ang lalabas is that uh, yung architect na kaibigan niya sa Pilipinas, yun yung pangalan niya doon na nalabas sa title block. Kung kung bagay's parang hindi ako pwedeng mag-practice diyan, ibibigay ko na to sa iyo. Parang ganyan, oo. Oo. Kasi kung pangalan mo, wala ka dito sa Pilipinas, di ba? 
nag-i-exist yung pangalan mo pero wala ka, wala ka dito. Later on, sino yung mag uh, sino mag-claim ng liability? I see. 'Di ba? Kasi the one who will sign and seal is the one liable, no? And uh, under Article 1723 ng uh, Civil Code, ang nakalagay doon, kung sino yung architect who drew up the plans, no? In fact, ang nakalagay sa Article 1723 is not the one who signed and sealed the plans. Mm-hmm. Ang nakalagay doon is the one who drew up the plans. Okay. Okay, so okay. Diba, pa- parang na parang pangit nga din sa side <laughs> na mag-sign and seal yan eh, di ba? Sige po. Tapos sir, meron pong tanong si Mark Calderon. Sabi niya, hmm. sir, yung seal, dry seal lang po ba ang pinaka- pinapayagan o posible din po bang gumamit ng ink type? Okay. Pag ako ang uh, tatanungin mo, uh, for me, kasi the law does not, does not provide for does not provide for a dry seal. Okay? Ang sinasabi lang ng batas natin is seal. Okay? And the uh, rubber stamp can be considered as a seal. No? Kung tinignan nyo yung mga nagnodotaryo publiko mm-hmm. sa sa lawyers, dati naka-dry seal yan. Apo. Pero ngayon, pag tinignan nyo yung mga lawyers, rubber stamp lang. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. Ang, ang, ang tinitinan kasi dyan yung, yung seal na design. Okay. okay? But, uh, well, nobody attempt, no? nobody attempt that No kasi well uh, considering pa yung mga building officials natin minsan na ang hirap din uh, paintindihin no pagpasok sa building permit application siya pag nakita nilang rubber stamp ang uh, sinil mo diyan baka hindi nila i-accept no mm-hmm. pero kung ako tatanungin mo rubber stamp is uh, considered as uh, accepted uh, accepted okay so, thank you sir yung design, yung design ng seal natin is uh, nandoon no mm-hmm. but nobody tested that no if siguro okay. If somebody will test that uh, later on sa office of the building official, uh, that was considered. In fact, kung, uh, kung alibawa, documents mo lang, no? alibawa, mga estimates mo lang, pinipresent mo sa client, sinasubmit mo sa client, hindi naman for building permit purposes, sa tingin ko, rubber stamping uh, can be uh, acceptable to uh, to ano, to uh, testify genuineness of uh, the documents. Pwede. Document. Okay. Uh, tapos sir, si Nathalie Azur, sabi niya, Sir, bakit po very common yung mga architects or engineers sa City Hall? They are accepting plans for them to sign. Though, mm-hmm. chin- check naman po nila yun before they sign it. Unethical pa rin po ba kahit chinek nila yung content ng construction plans? Uh, yes, unethical. Yes, unethical. You know okay. what is the reason is that... Uh, Number one, those who are engaged in the government practice are not allowed to sign and seal plans and specifications because they are engaged in limited practice unless they were given uh, authorization from the Civil Service Commission. Okay? And of course, they are not allowed to sign and seal within their uh, respective jurisdiction. Okay? Lalo na pagka sila ay uh, nasa office of the building official. Okay. Tapos sir, ito po, very ano to, millennial kasi. No? Renz, sabi si Renz Irvin, sabi niya, Good day po sir. May I ask, kapag nag-story po ba ako sa Instagram ng works ko, bawal rin po ba yun? If you are not an architect, yes, bawal. Okay. okay. If you are so, an architect, any, any, no, if, you any, are not, uh, if you are not an architect, bawal. Kasi nga, di ba advertisement, yung sinasab- sinabi ko kanina sa section 25. If you are an architect, hindi bawal. Kasi that is not at uh, that, that is not paid advertisement naman eh. Okay. So, sa architect, well, later on kasi yung advertisement i-discuss natin. No? Okay. Yung mga Facebook na i-discuss natin later on. Okay. Tapos sir, ito po, sila, ang dami po nilang questions. Hmm. Ito, mga last two lang, sir. Okay. Jonathan Jones said, Sir, may action na po ba ang UAP regarding sa engineers na pumipirma ng architectural plans? Kasi ang alam ko is may mga LGU na inaalaw na pumirma ang mga engineers sa architectural plans. Hmm. Uh, number one is uh, I am not uh, a fanatic of UAP. So, <laughs> I am uh, a PIA member. Although okay. I am, uh, well, with the, that IOPOA requirements, no? so I became member of UAP Negrense wherein I was a chartered officer of uh, the UAP Negrense before. Mm-hmm. But for the question if uh, the UAP has an action, uh, well, I don't know no? kasi hindi ako involved sa mga programs ng uh, UAP with regards to that. Okay? But uh, the case was already with the Supreme Court. No? Okay. Kaya kung akong tatanungin, 
uh, mahirap makipaglaban uh, sa problem with uh, the CEs. Kasi yung isa lang naman sasabihin later on sa inyo eh, there's no yet finality of judgment on the case in the mm-hmm. Supreme Court. So we will wait for the decision of the Supreme Court. Kaya nga sabi ko, uh, better to leave that issue. No? Kasi pag nagbigay ako ng opinion ko later on dyan, baka masubjudisi ako ng Supreme Court. I see. <laughs> because there is pending court with the Supreme Court now. So, may may pending case sa Supreme Court uh, with the uh, injunction uh, previously ng ating uh, Section 302 ng PDT 96, di ba? Na mm-hmm. nag-intervene si uh, UAP. Okay? But for the practice of uh, engineering and architecture, I have my discussion to that later on. Okay. May follow-up question lang, sir, regarding dun sa mga pinopost sa social media. Hmm. Kunyari po, theoretical project lang, parang practice lang ng rendering. Pwede po ba? Well, the answer is no. Kasi you are practicing uh, rendering. Why you why you want to post it in uh, the social media? For what purpose? Mm, unless na yun po ang binebenta mo, yung practice, yung rendering mo. Well, yung siguro, rendering ano po, skill. tutorial ka, and that tutorial is a business, then pwede. Mm. Diba? Okay, sir. Tas lastly po, K. Arnel D. Masuay. Sabi niya, mm. you are a licensed architect and you have an architectural design firm office in a commercial area. Do you still need business permit? Okay, ito nga i-discuss natin yung business permit. Ah, oh, sige. So, yan na po. Sige, thank you, sir. Okay, sige. So, now we go to business permit kasi ang, ang, uh, bago tayo magkaroon ng question, ang topic natin is uh, the registration of the firm sa DPI. No? Uh, separate and distinct doon sa pangalan natin sa PRC. Ngayon, ang tanong is kailangan ba natin kumuha ng business permit? Okay? Uh, under local government code, sa local taxation or sa business uh, permit uh, provision sa local government code, hindi kasama ang practice of profession. So, kaya kasi nasabi ko, practice of profession is not a business. It is an occupation. It is a practice of profession. So wala doon ang uh, practice of profession sa list of businesses na kailangan ng business permit. What uh, requires to us by the local government code is only the payment of the uh, professional tax uh, required. No? Kaya nga pag nagbayad tayo ng uh, PTR ng 300 pesos, that is already uh, covered our practice for the, for the whole uh, country. No? 300 pesos lang ang requirement sa atin. Okay? Previously, maraming uh, kumukuha ng business permit dahil sinasabi nila hindi ka pwedeng uh, mag-apply ng resibo sa BIR pag walang business permit. Okay? That is uh, contrary to my belief. No? Sa BIR, pwede kang kumuha ng resibo kahit wala kang business permit. Ang iti-check mo sa application for uh, registration sa BIR is practice of profession. Do not check sa box ng single proprietorship. Okay, or single proprietor. We are not a proprietor of our profession. We are only given a privilege. The proprietor of our profession is the state. Okay? So when you apply for the B, for uh, registration sa BIR, ang uh, ipipil in mo doon or i-check mo doon is practice of profession. Okay? Not uh, sole proprietorship. Otherwise, magkakaiba yun. Okay? And mababa yung tax na ini-impose sa practice of profession compare doon sa mga sole proprietorship as a business. Okay, now, business permit tayo uli. There is a case in uh, Gapan, Nueva Ecija. Ito yung uh, pinupost ko ngayon na na uh, resolution ng uh, DILG. Pag binasa nyo, yung, eh, wala ko mababasa ninyo no, sa mga malalaking screen ng computers ninyo, yung item uh, 6.2, no, kung mababasa nyo dyan. Ang nangyari sa Gapan Nueva Ecija is that mayroong uh, dental clinic uh, and yung dental clinic na yan nag-operate without a business permit. Ni-require ng business permit ng uh, munisipyo. And then, uh, well, nagtalo, umabot sa korte. Okay? Hanggang RTC, hindi niya, hindi niya umakit sa, sa higher court. No? Ang sinabi ng court, ng RTC, is that tama ang dental clinic. No? Ang practice of profession is not required to get a business permit kasi wala naman talaga doon sa local government code na kumuha ka ng business permit sa practice of profession. Okay? Pero ang qualification diyan is that, halimbawa, ikaw ay dental clinic, nagpa-practice ka ng profession mo, at the same time, nagbebenta ka ng mga dental apparatus. 
yung pag pag uh, sell mo ng uh, mga dental apparatus, yun ang may business permit. Kasi business yun, hindi yun practice of profession. Pero yung consultancy, bunot, no? that is practice of profession, na kung yan lang ang services mo, hindi ka nagbebenta ng mga dental apparatus, then you don't need to get a business permit. Okay? In fact, yun din yung qualification dyan ng uh, DILG okay? and the uh, Department of Finance. Ngayon, sa so practice of architecture, for example, you are holding office in the practice of profession. Okay? Consulting uh, clients, preparation of architectural drawings, then you don't need for a business permit. No? Pero kung ikaw ay uh, architectural firm, nagpa-practice ka ng profession mo, at the same time, mayroon kang plating business. No? Photocopying business. Then ibang usapan yon, Okay? So yung practice of profession mo, walang business permit, pero yung pagbebenta mo or pag-render uh, mo ng mga plating services, photocopying services, printing services, that needs already of a business permit because that is already considered as business separate to your practice of uh, profession and not, that is not already an occupation but you know in the opinion of uh, the uh, bureau of local government sa department of finance no uh, pag binasa niyo yung number 2 sinabi naman ng uh, department of finance no sinabi ni uh, DOF na a professional who has paid his or her professional tax shall be exempt for the payment of business permit fee in the operation of his or her clinic or office. However, a professional shall still be required to secure a business permit at no cost. So, yun ang sinabi ng uh, Department of Finance. So, to make the long story short, is that sabi ng Department of Finance, kumuha ka pa rin ng business permit, pero wala nang bayad. Okay? Wala kang babayaran. Pero kung akong tatanungin, why do I do that? Hindi parang, parang kumuha pa rin ako ng business permit for a business. Kaya nga, tinawag na business permit yan this, because that is only intended for the business. no? But you know, this is a strategy na para ma later on, uh, malaman nila kung uh, mayroon kang extra uh, business rather than the practice of profession. So malinaw na sinabi na rin ng Department of Finance na hindi talaga kailangan ng business permit kung tutuusin. No? And uh, sinasabi nga nila kung kukuha ka ng business permit, talagang wala kang babayaran. No? But for me, there is no essence to, to get a business permit at, at the same time. Uh, hindi talaga business ang practice of profession. Okay? So yun ang sinasabi ng Department of Finance. So generally talaga hindi kailangan ang uh, business permit sa practice of profession. Now, makakakuha ba ako ng resibo sa BIR? The answer is yes. Okay? So kahit wala kang business permit, pag pumunta ka ng BIR, alawa, freelancer ka. Hindi ka naman nagre-rent ng office space, commercial space. Nasa home office ka lang, sa bahay ka lang. No? Kinonvert mo lang yung garahe mo into an office. And hindi ka halata na may office dyan. You cannot, uh, you, you are not uh, preclude to get a business permit. Apply, just apply for a uh, official receipt sa BIR. No? So, pagbibigyan ka ng BIR pagka-practice of profession. Okay, so, wala tayong question. Okay? Now, sir, paano, sir, yeah. paano po ba, pwede po ba daw maglagay ng signboard? Tapo, kasi pa kapag may signboard, may business permit. No. Uh, walang uh, requirement ng business permit ang signboard. Okay? Pag naglagay ka ng signboard, just see to it na mayroon kang official receipt sa BIR. Okay? Kasi kahit mag-ikot ang uh, munisipyo, ng uh, business permit requirement, practice of profession, malinaw naman na hindi kailangan ng business permit. Uh, pero alam po, naglagay ka ng signboard, wala kang OR. Wala kang, uh, OR. Ang BIR ngayon ang hahabol sa'yo. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so automatically po, yeah. pag meron po tayong license, we uh, mm -hmm. we can practice, tapos we can apply for uh, uh, BIR no, para meron tayong uh, resibo. Okay. Yes, pwede ka makakuha ng resibo sa BIR. Okay? Thank you. So now, uh, we will go now to the corporation. Okay? So, tapos na tayo doon sa business permit, DTI, hindi pwede. Eh, a corporation ba pwedeng mag-practice ng architecture? The answer is no. no. In fact, may, mayroon nga yung uh, bagong corporation code, yung uh, Republic Act 11232, uh, uh, 11 signed by uh, President Duterte, na nakalagay doon na one-person corporation is allowed. 
no? Kasi di ba pag gumawa ka ng korporasyon, tatlo kayo, apat kayo, no? Ngayon, kahit ikaw lang mag-isa, no? Pwede ka nang tawagin korporasyon, no? Yun yung pagkakaiba doon sa dating corporation code at sa bago, no? Sa dating corporation code, tatlo kayo, apat kayo para matawag kayo corporation. Ngayon, ikaw lang mag-isa. Pwede kang tawagin one person corporation. Pero may kulatilya, no? Sinabi doon sa kulatilya ng batas na uh, provided for there that a natural person who is a license to exercise a profession may not organize as a one-person corporation for the purpose of exercising such profession except as otherwise provided under special laws. So hindi pa rin pwedeng kumuha ng... Uh, hindi pa rin pwede mo pa-register ng korporasyon ang practice of profession because corporation is not allowed to practice architecture. Okay? Yan ang sinasabi doon sa one-man corporation. No? Na, na that a natural person. You know, that, that a natural person who is licensed to exercise a profession may not organize as a one-person corporation for the purpose of exercising such profession except as otherwise provided under special laws. Now, itong sinasabi ng uh, Securities and Exchange Commission para lang mas maintindihan natin ng mabuti. No, paulit-ulit na sinasabi ng Securities and Exchange Commission. Sabi ng Securities and Exchange Commission, the practice of architecture is a professional service. Admission to which shall be determined upon the basis of individual qualifications. Kaya pag binasan ninyo yung ating uh, RA 9266 sa creation of a corporation, individual pa rin ang magiging liable doon sa separate actions nila. Okay? The legislature in authorizing the formation of the corporations to carry out on a local business did not intend to include the work of the learned profession. So sinabi doon, nung uh, naggawa ng batas sa pagporma ng corporation, hindi doon kinonsider na ang uh, learned ng work uh, professionals like us, no, practice of profession, is kasama. So, hindi talaga kasama doon. No? So, sinabi yan doon sa Supreme Court uh, ruling cited in the Department of Justice Opinion number 144, series of 1989. Practice of profession cannot be registered as a corporation upon the premise that the practice thereof must be based on individual personal qualifications, human personal qualifications for the practice of professions requiring a license cannot be possessed by a corporation. Uh, sinabi yan ng uh, Securities and Exchange Commission Opinion, dated April 25, 1996, addressed to Mr. Frank O. Asuncion Sr. Opening up a foreign representative or branch office instead will not make any differences. Personal qualifications for the practice of civil engineering and architecture professions cannot be possessed by a corporation and in view of the distinct and separate personality of a corporation from the individual members or stockholders. It could not have the power to do an act requiring a license which only individual members, stockholders could obtain. Diba sinabi ko kanina doon na lack of qualifications ang, ang uh, corporation as a juridical person. Eh, hindi nag-aaral ng architecture, hindi nag-exam, hindi nag-off kasi ba, hindi, hindi qualified sa uh, ganung requirements. Okay? Now, Liability in partnership, no? while uh, the Securities and Exchange Commission pursuant one to Section uh, 24 of RA 544 as amended uh, and uh, Section 34 of RA 545, now RA 9266 as amended, does not permit civil engineers and architects to practice as a corporate entity. It allows engineers and architects to form and uh, register as partnership, wherein all partners thereof are duly licensed as such under Philippine laws. But in such case, it is the individual engineer or architect and not the partnership firm who engages in the practice of engineering or architecture and is responsible for its own acts as such. Kasi marami tayo dyan na gusto natin na malaki tingnan no, ang ating firm. No, kaya sinasabi natin minsan, and associates, and partners. Pero sa totoo lang, minsan mag-isa ka lang. No? So yun ang sinasabi ng Securities and Exchange Commission. Okay. And then, uh, as an incorporator, an architect or engineer can be an incorporator in a business like construction company. So, pwede magiging incorporator no? to render his services as such. The hiring of which is merely incidental to carry out only the business on the practice of architecture or civil engineering. 
The Professional Regulation Commission is the government agency which has the position to determine the extent of professional service of professional. So, walang kinalaman ang Security and Exchange Commission. So, kaya nga sinasabi ko, kung ano lang yung pangalan doon sa Certificate of Registration, yun lang ang pwedeng mag-practice. No? Kasi yun lang ang binigyan ng authority ng PRC. No? Hindi mo na kailangan mag-register sa DTI, hindi mo na kailangan mag-register sa Securities and Exchange Commission para sabihin mo na magpa-practice ka ng architecture na malaki yung firm mo. Okay? Can the word architects, engineers be used in a corporate name? The answer is no. Okay? Sinabi ng uh, Security Sciences Commission, the use of the word engineering as part of the corporate name as a general rule is prohibited to avoid possibility of misleading the public to think that the corporation is engaged in the practice of engineering or architecture profession. Admission to which must be determined upon personal qualifications which requires a license from the Professional Regulation Commission. It cannot be undertaken by a corporation in view again of the distinct personality of the corporation and the stockholders itself. The word engineering may be allowed only if it will not confuse the public, such as it merely modifies another word pertaining to a thing or a product which a corporation intends to manufacture or sell. In such a case, it may not be misleading since the, the use thereof is merely descriptive. So clear, ha? So hindi rin pwedeng gamitin yung word na architects or engineer. Okay. May a foreign architect and a Filipino architect uh, may form a partnership? Generally, no. Okay. Hindi pwedeng mag-partnership ang foreign and the uh, local architects. Except if there is a reciprocity agreement. Except uh, yung foreign corporation is registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Mayroon siyang uh, special temporary permit. Okay. How about architect and unregistered persons? Prohibited. Okay. Kasi hindi talaga pwedeng pagbibigyan ng authority ang non-registered persons to perform services uh, intended only for a registered and licensed architect. Okay. Now, who are those persons not allowed to practice architecture? Okay. Sino yung mga taong hindi allowed to practice architecture? Number one, those persons who are not registered and licensed as, as architect, hindi pwedeng mag-practice ng architecture. Okay. Non-registered persons, so graduates ng architecture, hindi pwede mag-practice ng architecture. Okay? Ang pwede lang doon is diversified training. Yun ang limitation. Foreign architects who are not holder of a special temporary permit, bawal din mag-practice sa Pilipinas. Those registered and licensed architects whose registration are being revoked by the Professional Regulation Commission, kung na-revoke ang iyong lisensya, bawal ka na mag-practice. Kung na-suspend ang iyong lisensya, bawal ka na mag-practice. You are not allowed to practice architecture already in the Philippines. Dead architects, magugulat ka pag patay na, no, nakasilyo pa. No, kasi maraming ganyan, no, ginagamit yung pangalan ng mga patay na architect doon sa mga ibang lugar, no? In fact, uh, dati mayroon kami na discover na patay na yung architect, ginamit ng isang uh, architect doon na nagpakilalang architect na hindi naman pala architect. Okay? So bawal, okay? Next So, section na 34. Sir, saglit lang po, sir. Okay. Kasi po, regarding sinabi nyo kanina, yung architects at engineering na term, hindi pwede. Hmm. Pero, paano po na-approve yung mga firms na may architects plus engineers na pangalan sa name nila? There's okay. a few of them. Dahil po ba masyado lang lenient ang ngipin ng batas kaya nakalusot po itong mga to? Okay. Hindi ako nagsabi noon. No? Ang nagsabi noon is the Securities and Exchange Commission. Okay. <laughs> Uh, kaya nakakalusot yan kasi ganito yung mga nakaupo naman sa sa registration no sa SEC is hindi naman technical and uh, have legal background no sa mga lumalabas na mga resolutions uh, nakokol na lang yung attention yan pagka may nagcomplain and uh, umakyat sa legal division para magbigay ng legal opinion yung legal division pero pagka yan ay sa mga application no The uh, Securities and Exchange Commission will not uh, invalidate your application. Bakit? Revenue collection yan. May nagpaparegister, may nagbabayad. Okay? Hmm. Later on, magugulat kayo pag dinis ko yung PRC ID natin. No? Yes, na. Masabihin ba ng PRC yan na hindi dapat ito pwede? No? Otherwise, walang revenue collection. 
Okay? So, siyempre, pagka pumasok yan sa government institution, hindi naman nila sasabihin na hindi pwede. No? Kasi collection of, uh, part of the collection of taxes sa lifeblood of the nation yan. No? But uh, marami na, ayun ay uh, sarili na nga uh, legal opinion ng uh, Securities and Exchange Commission, di ba? Na sinasabi nilang, hindi pwede gamitin yung engineering no? unless descriptive ng isang product. Okay? Pero sa practice of profession, hindi pwede. Okay? Okay. Sir, quick question lang po from yes. Nathalie. Mm. Sir, kunyari po may architectural partnership. Si mm. Architect A, siya po yung architect of record. Mm. Isa naman, Architect B is the architect in charge of construction. Okay. Kapag na-collapse po yung building, who will be liable? Both of them. Ah, both of them. Okay. Both of them. But the, depending on the scenario, no? Kasi baka mamaya, uh, limbawa, si architect of record, tama yung nasa plans. Safe yung nasa sa plans. And then si architect in charge of construction, pagdating sa construction is uh, binago niya yung detalye. So, hindi liable si architect of record. Magiging liable ngayon si, ar- si architect in charge of construction. Okay? Halimbawa, yung plano, talagang defective. No? Hindi talaga constructability no? pagdating dun sa site. Sinunod lang din ni architect of record. Ah, ni, ni architect uh, in charge of uh, uh, construction, hindi rin siya nag-comment. Both of them will be liable. I see. Okay. Okay, sir. Si yeah. Mark Calderon po, sabi niya, can a person who is a non-architect or non-engineer put up a business running an architectural or engineering service? The answer is no. Okay. So, later on, may papakita ako dyan uh, isang case na Uh, in fact, nag-hire nga siya, architect nga siya, nag-hire siya ng 200 uh, non-licensed architects, sinabi ng court doon na bawal. Okay. Sir, may, medyo saglit lang po. No? Meron po kasi tayong mga students na kakapasok lang din po, sir. Uh, may tanong po sila na, sir, pwede po ba mag-practice ang foreign architect dito sa Pilipinas? Pwede. As long na mayroong special temporary permit uh, granted by the PRC. Mm, okay. Sige po, sir. Thank you. Okay. Oh, Section 34, ito yung malinaw that uh, non-registered persons cannot claim equivalent service. No? Sa mga sa mga non-architects, sa mga students, apprentice, ito yung malinaw sa batas natin. Non-registered person cannot claim equivalent service. Ano yung equivalent service na yon? Those enumerated in Article 1, Section uh, 3, 4, and Section 3, number 3 and 4 of RA 92, uh, 66. Okay? And of course, since na you are not allowed or you are not allowed to claim equivalent service, you are also not allowed to collect professional fees. Hindi kayo pwedeng maningil. No? Minsan, na uh, ang, ang yayabang ng mga non-registered persons. No? Mahal yan si architect. Dito ka na lang sa amin. No? Tutukusin na uh, that is uh, uh, illegal yung ginagawa. No? So, malinaw sa ating batas that uh, they are not allowed to practice uh, architecture profession. Okay? Now, can architect advertise his profession? Okay? Ayan can na po. architect advertise? General rule, architects are prohibited to advertise his profession in paid advertisement. Ibig sabihin, kung ikaw ay arkitekto, pupunta ka sa TV station, radio station, at sasabihin mong i-advertise mo ako dyan itong bayad, hindi pwede. Okay? Kailangan na uh, non-paid uh, advertisement. Okay? And uh, ang rationality behind is that uh, it is not proper for an architect to solicit services through direct business advertisement for the following reason. Architecture is a profession, not a business, and architects are not merchants. Okay? Advertising is an undignified way of making known an architect's services and is of bad taste that is considered as lowering the dignity of the profession. You know, meron akong in-invite ako ng dito, no? Kukos natin si architect. Kalimutan ko na. At sa din ba? No? Doon sa uh, house design or house plans, no? Makikita mo dun talagang talamak ang uh, advertisement no and then I saw I saw lot of architects din nandoon sa page sa sa page na yan no? although uh, hindi ako nagko-comment no 
pag tinin na natin uh, that that uh, page is ethical no dapat nga hindi yan inahayaan house plan na- daw si eh. house plan house plan yes no in fact uh, dapat uh, kung uh, kung tayo ay uh, mayroong uh, malasakit no sa sa practice ng ating profession that uh, page dapat nire report na yan and uh, to be you know na to be removed no kasi it ano eh, it damage no it cause prejudice to the to our profession in general no so bawal lang uh, ganong uh, setup dapat kasi parang di ba parang palengke no parang palengke no our profession is we should not label our profession to the uh, label of merchants hindi natin natin pwedeng ibaba yung sarili natin na para tayong nagtitinda ng uh, ng uh, ating uh, uh, mga gawa sa publiko no So we are allowed in an indirect advertisement actually. No, pag uh, tinanan natin sa ating uh, direct advertisement, ang sinasabi ng ating uh, section 3.04. No, ang pwede tayong mag-advertise as indirect advertisement, no? Like for example, advancing public knowledge of the architect's function in society. Ano ibig sabihin noon? Uh, gumagawa ka ng mga uh, tawag nito, yung mga articles sa newspaper, no? So pwede 'yon. No, advancing public knowledge. Hindi nakalagay yung pangalan mo doon by architect uh, ganito. That is considered as advertisement, indirect advertisement actually, no? But that is considered as advertisement. No? Well, uh, that is not paid advertisement, advertisement so allowed ng ating uh, code of ethics. Then an architect of to write books. Okay, ako, sumulat ako ng libro, no? And at the same time, promotional services 'yon. 'Di ba? So allowed 'yon under our uh, code of ethics then uh, be a columnist to a newspaper for uh, publication allowed yon that is considered as indirect advertisement then uh, actively participate in any forum seminar workshop or similar assemblies through verbal or visual uh, presentation so yon yung uh, mga indirect advertisement na hindi bawal okay pero pag paid advertisement bawal na bawal yon yung magbabayad ka. Okay? Alam mo ba? One, pay, one whole page ng iyong uh, perspective sa newspaper. Ibayad ka sa newspaper para i-present. No? Bawal yun. No? In fact, yung pag-post mo ng perspective sa newspaper, that is considered already as uh, lowering the uh, dignity of the uh, profession. Okay? So, prohibited advertisement, paid advertisement, self-laudatory. No? Yung parang nagbubuhat ka ng bangko. Okay? Bawal. Exaggerated. No? Sobra-sobra naman yung pag-advertise mo bawal din under our uh, code of ethics misleading publicity bawal din okay sinasabi mo masters ka ng ganito hindi ka naman masters that is already misleading publicity so bawal yon under our code of ethics okay architect meron pong question For, kunyari po ano ininvite po kayo sa TV parang like invite example, po kayo sa TV tapos po Ah, uh, parang nag parang regarding po for example sa paano po magtayo ng mas ma ano, mas mas safe na space for COVID-19, 'di ba? Parang kunyari meron pong ganung feature. Tapos hmm. pwede po ba 'yung ganun? Yes, because that is advancing public knowledge. Ah, okay. Pero okay. kapag binayaran po kayo sa TV, kunyari, syempre in-invite po kayo tapos nagbigay sila po ng bayad. Oo. Oh. Apo. Ano so, po ba? Ah, hindi siya bawal. Ang bawal doon pagka ikaw ang nagbayad. Ah, okay. Eh, ikaw ang nagbayad para i-advertise mo yung sarili mo. Yun ang bawal. I see, I see. Pero kung ikaw ay inimbita, nagsalita ka for uh, advancing public knowledge and binigyan ka ng honorarium, hindi mm-hmm. bawal yun. I see, I see. Mm-hmm. Sir, kunyari po, kun- ikaw, ikaw kunyari yung ano, architect, tapos meron kang segment sa TV, ikaw yung parang host... Hmm. Kunyari na isang program, na-invite ka na ikaw maging host na isang program, tapos ang fini-feature mo, puro mga bahay, puro architecture, ano po ba? Okay po ba yon? Well, pwede yon. Pero pagka nag-host ka, tapos sasabihin mo later on sa hosting mo na, pagka kailangan yun ng architect mo nagpagawa, <laughs> so, bawal yon. I see, okay. I see. Hindi na yun advancing public knowledge. That is already considered as solicitations. Okay. Sir, ang dami ng tanong regarding dito, o. Oh. So, sir, paano po yung mga construction firms na nag-o-offer ng design services? Ano po ang sanctions na dapat sa kanila? Marami po kasing ganito ngayon. Nagpapapirma lang hmm. sa arkitekto. 
Well, the question is, why architects sign? Ah, yung architect. Uh, ang sinasabi ko is, uh, nung, nung, uh, kung, kung napanood nyo yung video ko kanina nung bago magsimula, di ba? Na kailangan ba natin ng panibagong batas? The answer is no. Kasi kung ikaw okay. mismo, hindi mo rin implement sa tili mo yung uh, provisions ng batas, wala mangyayari. Katulad yan, alam mong bawal mag-sign ng seal, di ba? Alam mong bawal mag-sustaining uh, technical employee, yung tinatawag natin STC o STE. Pero ginagawa mo rin because of money. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, ibig sabihin is that uh, ikaw mismo ang nagbabiolate. Uh, kung ayaw mong i-practice siya ng uh, mga construction firm, dapat tayo is manindigan na hindi natin sila isi-serve. Kasi hanggat mayroong okay. nag-serve na arkitekto sa kanila, gagawin at gagawin nila. Okay? Pangalawa, who was the duty to uh, to police that practice? Okay. Diba? Apa. So, yun Sir, apa, meron po nagtanong po dito si Roger Abisamis po na sabi niya, Sir, question. Regarding sa advertisements, may isang product, example, milk tea, o hmm. kaya Shopee, o kaya food products, which is not totally related to architecture. They wish the architect to advertise their product. Allowed po rin yun, sir? Yes, allowed. Under our ah. code of ethics, ang hindi pwede sa architecto is mag-promote ng construction materials. Okay? Pag nag-promote ng construction materials, unethical. Hmm. Halimbawa, ikaw may business ka at the same time, milk tea. Diba? Hmm. Tapos pinumot mo yung business mo, milk tea. Tapos sa kalagay doon, uh, owned by architect uh, Gerard D. <laughs> hindi bawal yun. Ah, hindi so, bawal yun, sir. In your uh, milk tea business, and not your name, mm-hmm. sinabi mo lang doon na ikaw yung owner. Diba? Mm-hmm. Halimbawa, uh, nakalagay doon, uh, Avon Products by uh, architect Gerard D. Oh, dami kong business, sir. Hindi ba wala kasi you are not introducing uh, architecture architecture work works, no? Mm. Pero siyempre, sino nilagay mo lang doon na ikaw yung yung owner para malaman naman ng mga kaibigan mo ay may business pala si architect na ganito, baka pwede tayong mag-franchise. I see, I see. Okay, but if you are soliciting uh, architectural uh, works, then that is undignified already. Okay. So, uh, meron din po dito nagtanong kasi po meron pong isang sikat na architect na naging beauty queen. Hmm. Tapos po, nagpo-promote po siya sa, na, parang meron siyang advertisement na Home Depot. Hmm. Ano po ba yon Paano po yung situation niya? Talagang ayon yung tantanan si Santi. Oh. <laughs> meron Ma, pa rin kayo tantanong. Uh, 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 Shamsi is not uh, advertising welcome by the use uh, of uh, her profession. Okay? Shamsi advertising welcome being an ambassador of being a beauty queen. Yes. Okay? She's an ambassador of welcome being a beauty queen and not being an architect. Nagkataon lang that welcome is uh, selling construction materials. Mm-hmm. Diba? So, mm-hmm. well, uh, indirectly, uh, pag, tina- pag tinina natin, parang you use it interchangeably with the architecture mm-hmm. profession and being an ambassador, being a beauty queen. Okay. Diba? Thank, thank you, sir. Meron mga anong ganitong question. Mm-hmm. Mas meron din po ito, I think, para lang po maging clear. Uh, sir, kung sakaling architect na po ako, pwede po ba ako mag-hire ng ibang writer or blogger para i-promote yung mga trabaho ko? Then that is already a paid advertisement. Ah, so kasi binayaran mo, nag-hire ka ng ibang tao eh, no? You so, can okay. hire marketing representative, not blogger. Oh, blogger. Kasi oh. pag marketing representative, that is considered as business development officer ng office mo. I see. Okay, but being a blogger, that is, re- that is tantamount to advertisement per se. And since you paid that blogger to advertise your profession, that is considered as paid advertisement, which is prohibited by the Code of Ethics. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Tapos may last question po. Sir, hmm. kailan lang po magkakaroon ng civil liability ang consulting architect? Well, if the uh, result of uh, his professional advice uh, is the product of the collapse of the building, then he will be liable. I see. Hmm. Okay. 
Thank you, sir. Ayan, ang dami po talagang questions. So very engaged po ang ating mga participants. Thank you. Okay, sige, let's continue. Okay. Uh, in our code of ethics, no, uh, there were instances where solicita solicitations may be permitted. Kasi sa general rule, no, ang uh, sinasabi ng ating code of ethics, the architect shall not solicit nor permit to solicit in his name advertisement or other support towards the cost of any publication presenting his or her work. He shall refrain from taking part in paid advertisement, endorsing any materials of construction or building equipment. And then the architect shall not deceive the public as to his or her professional competence, nor claim any professional specialization unless supported by academic qualifications, track record, or relevant expertise. Professional resources available to him or her, which will enable him to handle the work particularly requiring such specialization and sanctions by his or her peers in the uh, profession. Okay, so generally, sa kodobetis natin is uh, solicitation is not allowed, okay? Not permitted, okay? But there are instances where solicitations may be permitted. So ano yung uh, instances where solicitations may be permitted? For example, by the use of an architect service profile. Okay? So nagbigay ka ng service profile mo sa isang uh, tao, sa isang kumpanya, that is considered a solicitation. But of course, that solicitation is permitted. Okay? Kasi paano nila malalaman ngayon yung uh, standing ng office mo, no? ng existence ng office mo, pagka hindi ka nagbigay ng iyong service uh, profiles, no? paano ka makapag-close uh, ng contract sa owner, pagka hindi ka nagbigay ng iyong, ng iyong service profiles. Okay? So by submission by that service uh, profiles sa isang owner, sa isang uh, corporation, no? uh, that is not amount also to solicitation of architectural works. But that is uh, an instance where solicitations is allowed. Okay? By the use of architect's letterheads, Siyempre, pag, lumabas ka na, pag nagpalabas ka ng mga correspondences mo, uh, meron kang letterhead. No? Like, for example, yung nakalagay dyan, meron akong letterhead. A simple letterhead. Okay? And then, uh, by the use of the architect's business card. Okay? I will emphasize this, guys. Uh, wag nyo sabihin dyan na calling card. Okay? The correct term is business card. No? Or professional uh, business card. No, kasi pag calling card yan, hindi naman kayo call boy at call girl. Ang calling card, pang call boy lang at saka pang call girl. No? Gusto yung call boy sa call girl. Okay yun. Okay. So dapat tawag namin sa business card. Oh, business card. No? Okay, so, okay. Yun. Then, oh, yan uh, yung so, alam nyo na guys ha. Business card po ang tawag ha, hindi calling card. Calling card. Okay. And then by the use of the architect's uh, professional uh, biographical and informative uh, data. Well, ngayon, Pagka gumawa tayo ng resume ngayon, medyo creative na, di ba? May mga photos na, no? dito na ng uh, dati na biodata lang. Okay? So, allowed yon Okay? Inclusion of an architect's name in telephone directory, that is allowed. Okay? All the solicitations yon indirect solicitations, but that is allowed. Inclusion of an architect's name in the organization, membership directory is allowed. Publication of an architect's name in a newspaper in soliciting hiring employees allowed. So, alam nga naman ano ilalagay mo dyan. We are hiring. Saan ang hiring? Okay? Eh, may nagtanong, Sir, pwede ba maglagay ako sa orbituaris? Okay, kung namamatay ka na, ilagay mo pangalan mo sa orbituaris. <laughs> Doon ka okay. nag-advertise. Nag okay. so, so, advertisement pa rin ng firm. Okay? Pero halimbawa, sa, sa orbituaris, na may namatay, client mo before. And then, naglagay doon na... Uh, Nag-greet ka doon sa obituaries or nagpa-ads ka sa obituaries. And nilagay yung name ng firm. Bawal ba o hindi? Hindi. Kasi hindi naman solicitation of architectural works yun. So, so that is allowed. Okay? So, yon Pag nakita ninyo yung aking uh, letterhead, business card, napaka-simple. No? Wala masyadong uh, design. No? Yung makikita mo lang yung name, yung logo ng uh, PIA, no? pangalan. Kasi... Sinasabi sa ating section 3.7, no? The architect may exhibit his or her professional single outside his or her office or display a project billboard indicating relevant information which may include pictorial uh, reproduction thereof in a modest manner. 
So, in a modest manner. Ibig sabihin, in a modest manner, hanggat doon sa pinakasimple, no? yun ang, uh, ang required sa atin. Although ngayon, siyempre, marami ng uh, naka-LCD na. No? Yung mga rendering works natin, maganda na yung pagkakarender. So, hindi mo na siya matatawag na in a modest manner. But our code of ethics uh, provide it as a modest manner. Well, that is still uh, 2006. No? So, kung uh, kailangan natin uh, mag-align uh, so uh, sa industry kung ano yung trend ngayon dapat we have to amend the uh, code of ethics no para mabago ito okay uh, sir, pwede to... sorry, sorry sir hmm. sir pwede daw po ba na ilagay yan sa decal or stickers decal ah, oh wala well, ilagay nga tayo dapat sa atin na uh, sa arkitekto sigurado okay pero kung uh, nag decal sticker ka and uh, nag uh, solicit ka ng uh, services then that is tantamount to undignified already. Ah, okay. Sige po. Uh, Meron po okay. bang bawal sa design ng logo na gagamitin sa letterhead ng isang architect? Well, logo is not uh, prohibited. No, In fact, uh, sa title block natin, nakalagay ang uh, ang logo. Okay? Ang uh, kailangan mo lang tandaan sa logo, that uh, yung logo mo dapat is walang copyright infringement. Okay. So, uh, naglagay ka ka ng logo, kinopya mo naman yung logo ng iba. So, doon ka tatamaan. Okay. Sir, kung yung sticker po lalagay sa mga kotse, nakalagay doon yung pangalan ng opisina mo? Valid. Pwede. Ah, mm. sa kotse pwede yung ilagay. Pwede naman yun kung pangalan ng firm. No, indirect solicitation. So, huwag ka lang magsabi okay. doon na uh, for your plans and services, call us at ganito. Actually, dapat kapal ko. No? Okay. Pero kung okay. pangalan ng firm, uh, yung uh, advertisement ng pangalan ng firm, pwede yon Pero wag ka lang maglagay na parang nag, nagbebenta ka ng services. Okay. Okay. okay? Thank so, you, sir. In, in our code of ethics, no, nakalagay doon na in a modest manner. No? Meron nung isang book na nabasa, nakalagay sa book na a business card 3 by 4 in size indicating data and photo is unethical. The size of the card and the inclusion of the person's photo takes it away the ambit of in a modest manner that are allowed. It is a form of self-laudation, is undignified and considered as commercialism. O, biroin mo yun. No? Nakalagay yan sa isang uh, libro ng legal ethics. No? Ibig sabihin, pag lumabas ka doon sa size ng uh, business card na 2 by 3, no? that is already considered as commercialism. No? So, take note of that uh, provisions sa ating uh, code of ethics. Okay? Now, advertisement. Oh, kasi dito sa section 33, oh, pag tinignan natin, uh, mahilig tayo mag-advertise ng ating mga works. No? Mahilig tayo mag-post sa social media ng ating mga rendered works, no? perspective. Okay? Pero ang tanong doon, hanggang saan ang limit ng copyright? Diba? Kasi pag dininan ninyo, ito nakita ko to sa isang group din sa social media. Itong uh, gawa ng uh, Tire One Architect. No? And uh, pinost din ng contractor. Pinalitan, tinanggal yung pangalan ng arkitekto. And then uh, pinalitan ng in, 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 in gum uh, builders. So medyo nag-ingay yung uh, architect. No? Kasi talagang uh, copy-paste eh. No? Copy-paste. So, ang tanong doon is, may habol ba si architect? May habol ba si architect? Pag binasa ninyo yung section 33 sa ownership of plans, specifications and other documents, drawings and specifications and other documents, duly signed and sealed as instrument of service, are the intellectual property and documents of the architect. Whether the object for which they are made is executed or not, it shall be unlawful for any person to duplicate or to make copies of said documents for use in the repetition of and for other projects or buildings, whether executed partly or in whole without the written consent of architect or author of said document. So ang tanong ngayon, kinopya ng contractor yan, mayroon bang violation ng copyright? Meron ba? Take note guys, ha? sinasabi ng ating section 33, magkakaroon lang tayo ng instrument of service if it is duly signed and sealed. 
So, paano pagka hindi natin sign and seal? Di ba? Pag binasa ninyo yung section 33, malinaw, drawings and specifications and other contract documents, duly signed and sealed as instrument of service. So, paano pagka hindi natin signed and sealed? Do we have copyright under section, uh, section 33? The answer is no. Kasi malinaw ang sinasabi ng section 33 eh. No? Un un unless pinermahan mo yan, you have the copyright. Kaya nga, usually, when you present to the client, for example, schematic uh, design, preliminary drawings, hanggang site development, let that document signed by the owner. Ibig sabihin, pag nag-present ka sa owner, no? ito yung first stage, schematics muna tayo, mag-comment si owner. Pag nag-comment si owner, let, that, let the owner sign to that schematics then develop it into preliminaries. Once done with the pre preliminaries, no, may blockings ka na, and then present it to the owner. Pag nag si owner, may comment si owner, let the owner sign that preliminaries. Okay? Next, nag-design nag, uh, development ka. Pinorma mo na yung floor plan, no, mayroon ka ng conceptual uh, approach, may mga perspective ka na, na more or less, ito mong, ito mong ngyayari sa interior, ito yung mga materials. No? Either may comment yung owner or the owner will approve that. Let the owner sign that document. And of course, in every stages na sinasabit mo sa owner, dapat ang architect is naka-signed and sealed. Okay? From uh, schematics, preliminaries, design development, hanggang sa final. Dapat naka-signed and sealed ang lahat ng works ng architect. Bakit? Delikado ang section 33. No? Marami tayo dyan. Nagsasabi lang tayo, nilalagay natin yan sa plano na these drawings is the instrument of service of the architect cannot be reproduced, copies, duplicate, etc. No, nilalagay natin sa, sa, sa drawings. Pero sinasabi nga doon, duly signed and sealed. Pagka hindi mo yan signed and sealed, hindi ka protected ng Section 33. Maraming na may mislead dito. No? Kasi hindi nila napapansin yung word na duly signed and sealed. Akala nila, pag nag-present sila sa owner without their signature, covered na ng Section 33. Okay? Mm, I see, I see. Yeah. Kasi maraming gumagawa nito. Nakakala nila pag nag-present sa owner, walang perma, plain lang, no? covered na ng Section 33. Take note, ang sinasabi ng Section 33, it should be duly signed and sealed by the architect as instrument of service. Pag pinakawalan mo yan na wala kang perma, matatalo ka using Section 33. Take note, napaka-broad ng uh, RA8293. Uh, okay? And nakalagay doon is copying. So, ito malinaw na copying eh. Duplicating nga eh. No? So, ang tanong nga is signed and sealed ba to? Okay? Yan. Pangalawa, okay, pangalawa, you posted it in social media. So, you post it in social media, what is now your assurance that your work cannot be copied? Take note guys, mahilig tayo mag-post sa social media, pag nag-render tayo, hindi pa na-approve ng owner minsan. No? Propose project, owner ganito, pero hindi pa yan na-approve ng owner, totally pinupost na sa social media, pinipresent na. Pag nakapi yan, will you be protected as your instrument of service under section 133? Hindi po. Take note, walang mga sign and seal yan, di ba? So, yun ang, yun, yun ang problema natin dyan sa mga posting natin sa social media. Okay? Take note of that. No? Kasi hindi biro yung sinasabi natin ang galing natin sa perspective rendering. No? Uh, ang galing natin to, to, to present. No? We want to market clients. But take note of uh, the consequences in posting it in social media. Uh, kasi if it is not signed under Section 33, you are not protected. You are only protected by Section 33 as ownership to that plans, drawings, specifications if it is duly signed and sealed. Malinaw ang wordings ng Section 33. No? Hindi yan napapansin ng karamihan. Okay? Clear tayo dyan. No? So in this project, pag tinginan mo, di ba? Hindi naman nakalagay lang yung pangalan ng architect. Pero hindi niya signed and sealed. Will he or she be protected? Isinabi ng Section 33. No? Tatakbo ka ngayon doon sa RA 8293 Intellectual uh, Creation no? 
copying. Okay? So next. Now, itong sinabi na Supreme Court sa case ni Olanyo versus Lim uh, Engineering Company, March 2016, fresh na fresh itong decision ng Supreme Court, 2016. Sabi ng Supreme Court, to constitute infringement, the usurper must have copied or appropriated the original work of an author or copyright proprietor. Absent copying, there can be no infringement of copyright. The copyright gives no exclusive right to the art disclosed. Protection is given only to the expression of the idea, not the idea itself. Okay, take note, ah. Ang protection under copyright law, under 8293, it is only given on the expression of the idea, not on the idea itself presented. Diba? So pagka nag-present ka sa Facebook, ng perspective mo, okay, hindi ka protected ng pre-present mo doon. Protected ka lang ng idea. Eh, paano pag yung idea mo is ginaya mo rin sa iba? No? And you cannot prove the originality of your ideas. You are not protected by the copyright law. Diba? So mahirap ang posting sa social media. Okay? So under 8293, sa section 186, sinasabi doon sa work of architecture, copyright in a work of architecture shall include the right to control the erection of any building which reproduces the whole or substantial part of the work, either in its uh, original form or in any form recognizably uh, derived from the original, provided that the copyright in any such work shall not include the right to control the reconstruction or rehabilitation in the same style as the original or building to which that copyright relates. Example, dito sa uh, section 186, sinasabi doon, alimbawa, original design mo yan, okay, pinatayo. Hang, nung, pinatayo yan, nung, nung pinatayo yan, you have the control. No? Hanggang uh, pinatayo yung building, you have the control no? kung ano yung mangyayari sa design. Okay, as author of the design. But be sure that being an author, talagang sure na sure ka that you have the originality of that design, hindi mo rin ginaya sa iba. No? Kasi pagka hindi mo ma-probe na originality mo yung design, kinuha mo lang din sa iba, pinagpasil-pasil mo, you are not protected under copyright law. Okay? So protected ka nun hanggang sa umakyat yung building at natapos of that copyright. Pero alimbawa, ang sinasabi dito, pagka yan ay later on na-renovate, hindi ka na-protected. Kasi pag nag-renovate at nag-iba na yung uh, design, walang violation doon sa portion na copyrighted mo. Okay? May copyright ka lang doon sa portion na ginawa noon noong time na yon. Pag ni-renovate yan at nag-iba yung design, hindi ka protected para sabihin mo na sinira mo yung design ko. No? Hindi, hindi ka protected noon. So allowed ang pag-iba uh, ng design after your work was completed and iba na yung gumawa ng uh, rehabilitation and new construction or addition to that building or structure. Okay. So, mayroong isang uh, copyright in architecture sa, sa US. I, I don't know kung nababasa nyo yung uh, mga text na no? medyo maliit masyado. Uh, a case demonstrating this sa uh, Nova Design versus uh, Grace Hotel. The plaintiff was an architect who had designed the Holiday Inn Express. The owner and the architect had uh, falling out and the owner hired another architect to complete the project. May, may original na architect, nag-away sila, no? pinahire out yung architect, nag-hire ng panibagong uh, architect. The original architect sued the owner and others to copyright infringement. The trial, granted, the trial court granted summary judgment to the owner and the affiliate court affirmed. The problem with the architect's claim was the failure to identify what was original in the drawings and thus protectable under copyright law. Hindi ma... ma Masabi ng arkitekto na itong drawing na to, no, ito yung pag-use ng material na to, ako lang talaga ang original. Hindi na prove ng architect. Okay? So na dismiss ang uh, pag-file niya ng uh, copyright. Okay? In the case of uh Siliuski versus Sisiro Builders, an architect sued for copyright infringement, asserting he had created and uh, licensed various designs for colonial homes for uh, to construction companies. But the design were infringed upon when the contractor used them after the license expired. The architect uh, alleged the defendant using uh, other architects to create the infringing design 
had copied the overall size, shape, and silhouette of his design, as well as the replacement of rooms, windows, doors, uh, closets, stairs, and other arch architectural uh, features. The trial court granted judgment in favor of the defendant and appeal followed. Okay, so yung mga cases na yan under copyright, mahirap i-prove. No? Mahirap uh, i-prove. Kaya kapag ka nag-post kayo sa social media, no? hindi kayo nakasigurada that you are protected no? by uh, your design. No? And, uh, and other cases na pag tinignan natin. No? Yeah, sir. Hindi tayo, Architect, uh, Maestro, hmm. meron pong mga questions po ulit dito. Ano, sir? Very yes, comments sir. lang po nila. Thank you so much kasi ang dami daw po nilang natututunan ngayon. Delikado daw po pala mag-post sa social media and yeah, lots of learning from this webinar. Yes. Tapos mm. sa, sabi po ni Aisa, thank you Architect Fernandez. Dapat lang lahat ng arkitekto na nagpa-practice makinig dito. Hindi <laughs> <laughs> natin ma-invite lahat, ano? <laughs> oh, eh, de, try po natin yan, no? Next po is meron po dito, Sir, may RA8293 naman po tayo, di ba? Doon hmm, pwede ba may habol po tayo? Well, ang uh, point ko nga doon sa RA8293, uh, mahirap i-prove ang copyright. You can use, you can uh, sue them. No? Pero mahirap nga sa nasabi ko nga is mahirap nga mag-prove ng uh, originality ng copyright. Mo. Okay? Kasi may special tayo, di ba? Pag wala tayong special law under RA9266 sa, ka, sa copyright, pupunta tayo sa 8293. Mm, 8293, okay. Mm. As architect, meron po dito challenging sa part of digital files pala when coordinating yes. with client. Paano mm. po if OFW ang client and online communications po ang meetings, tapos ang mm. submittals din po is online, how mm. can we be protected if duly signed and sealed po? Okay. Uh, number one, kaya nga sinasabi natin is uh, before you engage with the owner, you sign the service agreement. Okay? Para sa service agreement, ilagay mo na doon yung lahat ng uh, conditions mo, lalo na sa pag-send ng mga drawings. No? Ilagay mo na doon lahat. Okay? Kasi pag wala kang service agreement, madaling kopyahin ang design mo at pwede kang ma-thank you. Mm. Okay? Oo nga, sir. Kasi marami sa atin dyan na ang bilis natin pagka nag-ipag-usap yung kliyente, walang service agreement, ang bilis natin magbigay ng drawings. Opo. Then later on, <laughs> nag-window shopping lang pala. Mm -mm. Tapos sir, meron pong mga follow-up lang dito, sila Baren, ano? Baren Paul. Sir, if sa schematic stage pa lang, pwede na ba i-apply ang sign and seal? Yes, of course. It ah, okay. must protect your work. No, ginagawa namin 'yan, no, every time na mag-present ka sa owner, da dapat naka-sign and seal ang gawa mo and uh, let this, the client also sign. Alam mo, nag uh, naglagay ng correction yung client doon sa schematics mo. Let him sign that uh, corrected uh, sheets. Okay. Thank you, sir. Tas meron din pong mga questions sila, Ani na Ponce. Sir, is there a basis for how many times is it okay to revise detailed architectural engineering plans? And may well, charge po uh, ba yung revisions? Yel, yeah. ang, ang revisions natin, hanggat hindi nag-finalize si client, kwanto sawa yan. Hindi ka, pwedeng, uh, hindi ka pwedeng magsabi na hanggang pitong revision lang tayo. Okay? Because they are clients. Di ba? They are the one uh, that uh, you will satisfy. Be, uh, the, the client should be satisfied by your services. Kaya nga, ang point natin dyan is, uh, ano yan eh, Uh, kailangan mahaba yung pasensya mo kasi hindi lahat ng kliyente okay kausap. May kliyente na madaling kausap, may kliyente ang hirap din kausap. No? You know, I have one clients no, in Paranaque and uh, nag-uusap kami. Ang ganda ng usapan namin no, kasama yung uh, asawa niya. Tapos pag-uwi ko, biglang tatawag sa akin yung asawa niya, architect, ayaw kasi talaga nung asawa ko ganito. <laughs> diba? Hindi siya na nagkakaintindihan. No? Nag-finalize kami, ng, uh, nag kami ng, ng, uh, ng design in the table no, sa bahay nila. Kasama rin yung husband niya, comment, comment. Okay na yan, architect. Okay na, pag-uwi mo. Sasabihin nila, architect, ayaw talaga na ginito. Eh. Hindi pala sila nagkaintindihan. So, biroin mo yun. No? Kaya nga sinasabi natin, uh, the client should pay us during the stage na nagpipresent pa lang tayo ng mga services natin and we are being paid dapat 
commensurate doon sa services na nirender natin kasi hindi natin alam kung gaano kabusisi yung kliyente no pagka ikaw ay nag-submit ng mga proposals mo mm-hmm. yeah, sir tapos meron pong tanong si Joey May Arian Sir, hmm. if your project was renovated or changed some parts within the 15 years liability period, are you still the one liable for that project? Then after the 15 years period, hindi ka na liable. Naglapse na. Pag within? Within, yes. Uh, alibawa, hindi na ikaw yung, yung original architect. Apo, iba na po ang oh. professional. Pagka hindi na ikaw, uh, kaya nga sinasabi natin da- dapat, kung may ibang architect na papasok, uh, that new architect should communicate with the old car, uh, with the old architect no as uh, an ethics kasi kung ako uh, dapat uh, kung ako yung old architects no at hindi na ako hinahanap ng client what i will do is that okay sige uh, let's execute a waiver uh, a waiver let's uh, execute an affidavit na magdi-drill ka mag uh, maggigibakan uh, ng mga beams columns and uh, my previous design will be affected so since na there is an effect with the st- structural integrity of the buildings, I will waive my uh, my uh, liability on my previous uh, designs dahil i-distract mo yung unang structure na dinesign ko. So that that is the thing that I will do. Mm, okay. Ta sir very eager po talaga sila mag- maging licensed architect. O, may tanong po si Natalie. Sir, mm. what if humingi ng copy yung client ng schematics? for their copy, pwede po ba magbigay? Yes, of course. We should provide the client of all that uh, instrument of service na sinserve natin sa kanila. That's the purpose of uh, paying us. Pero kung ikaw naman ay walang bayad, wala ka pang hindi ka pa binayaran ng client, nag-sketch ka na, ask for a payment muna. Yes, yes, yes. Ask for a payment. Ayun. Okay, hmm. yun lang po, sir. Thank okay. you. So, yun. So, copyright, uh, Protected ba tayo in our privacy? No? Yung, yung privacy ba natin sa Facebook, protected tayo? ba? Kasi mahilig tayo mag-post. No? Alimbawa, marami tayong postings dyan. Then hindi mo alam, kinakalkal na pala ng mga kliyente na gusto nila yung mga designs mo. Kinakalkal na ng kliyente yung Facebook mo dahil hindi ka naman naka-private. No? Kasi siyempre hindi ka makapag-marketing pagka hindi naka-public ang iyong uh, Facebook uh, post. So tayo ba ay... Uh, protected sa ating uh, privacy? The answer is no. no. In fact, you cannot go to court na sasabihin mong uh, na-violate ang aking uh, rights of uh, privacy sa social media na yung, yung uh, design na yan is uh, sa akin yan. No? Kasi katulad dyan, yung, yung uh, finishing dating perspective na pareho kanina, one from architect and one from contractor, kung hindi in-engage ng architect na yun yung contractor, hindi makukuha ng contractor yung design. Baka kasi si kontraktor naghalungkat lang doon sa kanyang uh, Facebook account at kinuha lang yung perspective. No? And pinalitan, eh, pre-nesend. Okay? So in the case of uh, Ronda uh, Abies Vivares and Spouses Margarita David Sopa versus uh, St. Teresa's College, dito sinabi ng Supreme Court no, kung ano ang uh, ating uh, gagawin dapat sa social media. Kasi itong nangyari sa case na to, uh, high school, hindi pinagraduate, hindi sinama sa list of graduation kasi sinarjan ng uh, academic institution ng immorality dahil uh, nag uh, nag swimsuit no nag bra lang and then uh, pinos sa social media kumalat so parang ang tingin ng swilahan is that parang it uh, it lower down the integrity of the institution kung saan sila na enroll okay so umabot ng Supreme Court and uh, ang sinabi ng Supreme Court kasi sa Facebook kumalat no sinabi ng Supreme Court dito it is thus incumbent upon na uh, internet users to exercise due diligence in their online dealings and activities and must not be negligent in protecting their rights. Equity serves the vigilant. Demanding relief from courts, as here, requires that claimants themselves take utmost care in safeguarding a right which they alleged to have been violated. These are indispensable. We cannot afford protection, no? so, sinabi ng Supreme Court. We cannot afford uh, protection to persons if they themselves did not uh, did nothing to place the matter within the confines of their private zones. Online social uh, network users must be mindful enough to learn the use of privacy tools, to use them if they desire to keep the information private, 
and to keep track of changes in the available privacy settings, such as those of Facebook, especially because Facebook is notorious for changing the settings and the site's layout often. Kasi yung sinabi ng, sinabi ng uh, mga bata doon sa case na to is that na-violate daw yung kanilang right of privacy dahil kinalkal ng teacher nila no? and uh, pinakita sa iba no? through social media din na ito yung uh, mga pictures. Okay? So, in this case, sa perspective kanina, baka kasi kinalka lang din ng, ng uh, contractor no? at nakuha yung perspective na yon. So, ang architect, hindi niya pwede sabihin dun sa contractor na you, by, you violate our rights of privacy. No? Na nagalungkat kayo dun sa mga pictures ko sa aking social media at nakuha niyo yung perspective na yan. Kung ang uh, Facebook account ng architect na yon, for example, is hindi nakaset sa only me. No? Kasi... Ito nga ang isa nangyari dito sa case na to. Nakaset na ang makakakita lang uh, her friends and friends of friends. So sabi ng Supreme Court, with that uh, privacy settings, ibig sabihin kahit nakalimit yan sa friends and friends of friends at hindi the whole public, still ginawa mo na wala ka pa rin protection and you make it public. So kung gusto mong uh, hindi ma hindi ma-violate ang iyong uh, privacy, you have to set that sa settings mo as uh, only me. Only me. So, well, siyempre, uh, dahil tayo naman ay gusto nating ipakita yung mga work samples natin, yung mga renderings natin na ang gaganda. So sigurado hindi mo na yan ililimit sa only me. No? Otherwise, ikaw lang makakakita. <laughs> no? The problem later on is that the consequences, di ba? How can mm-hmm. you charge them in their, uh, in, in the... Uh, violation of your uh, intellectual uh, property rights if uh, mm. ikaw mismo is hindi mo rin pinoteksyonan yung sarili mo na mm. yung mga uh, posting mo is uh, for private consumption. No? Kasi pag nilagay mo yan sa social media, it becomes public. Anybody can see it. No? Tingnan yes. nyo guys, time na wala pang social media, the only advertisement of an architect is billboard. Okay? Yes. Ibig sabihin, pagka nag ang client ng isang architect, nobody knows the design except the billboards. Okay? Uh-huh. Kung nakuha na niya ng building permit, no? and uh, nag-start na yung construction, doon na ngayon lalabas yung, yung billboard sa site. No? Architect, tapos yung perspective. No? At nakalagay doon, uh, kung anong sponsor ng billboard mo, Boy, Senba or Davis. Doon lang ngayon uh-huh. advertisement limited. Kaya walang issue masyado sa copyright. No? Ang issue sa copyright dati is that may copy yung client, pinahiram sa kumari niya, pinagaya. Pero ngayon, yeah. sa computer age, in this uh, online social media age, kahit sino na lang, no, nagpo-post sa Facebook and nagiging palengke na yung Facebook sa mga works na mga renderings na yon. Ang problema doon, pagka nagaya later on, magugulat ka na lang pag, pag punta mo sa ibang lugar, parang design ko yan ah. Nakuha na sa social media. No? So, yung still getting client, No, hindi ka nakakuha ng kliyente na paggawa pa ng iba yung posting mo sa social media. So, yun ang problema natin sa advertisement with social media, no? Na kailangan din dapat uh, i-regulate, no, ang uh, mga postings ng uh, mga perspectives natin. Okay? Sir, yeah. parang talagang very uh, re- relevant ngayon yun dahil everything now is being yeah, uh, uh, posted online. Mm-hmm. Even the portfolio of the architect is posted online. Kasi yes. di ba may website na mismo ang architect? Mm-hmm. Uh, so may kapag ganun, sir, ah. kunyari, merong, merong kang portfolio <laughs> online, tapos kinuha yung design from your portfolio sa website mo, ayun, subject for ano po yun, ano? But yung, yeah, uh, you, you, do, you, ano, you, you will never know. Di ba? Pag dinownload yes. ka yan, hindi mo naman malalaman yun eh. Lalo na't naka-public ka. Yes. Kunyari sir, screenshot niya lang yung ano mo. Oo, kahit yung screenshot niya. Mo. Ay, alam mo, taga Manila ka. Eh, taga Mindanao naman siya. Paano mo malalaman yun? So instead mm. na you will generate income by your uh, perspective, you lose income kasi dinownload nila doon. Nag-shopping sila sa Facebook for free. And pinagawa nila doon sa ibang lugar na hindi mo alam. Okay? Yes. So that's the consequences of uh, posting uh, our perspective in social media. No? Kaya nga dapat uh, mag, mag, mag-post kayo, mga sketches lang, not the, the total uh, design. Otherwise, later on, baka ang tagal mo na nagpo-post dyan, wala ka rin kliyente, pero dami na palang uh, 
kagandahan sa gawa mo na pinapagawa sa ibang lugar na wala kang so, bayan. Ibig, so, ibig sabihin nun, sir, parang when you post online, parang you're open for its consequences. Yes. So, kasi kahit, kahit lagyan mo pa yan ng copyright uh, statement, bakit? Kilala mo ba sila? Uh, alam mo ba hmm. kung kinopya nila o dinownload na nila yung uh, designs mo? Alam, uh, alam mo ba kung uh, na-screenshot nila yung design mo at pinagawa sa ibang uh, lugar at pinagawa daw sa mga uh, illegal practitioners, di ba? Yes. Ay, yun ang yun consequences ngayon sa ating uh, social media sa posting ng ating advertisements. Okay. Tapos po may tanong po si Roger Abisami. Sabi niya, yes. Sir, may liability po bang architect pag purposely sinira yung building For example, binomba in form of terrorism, safety concerns lang po. Thank you. Okay, pag uh, terrorism then uh, the architect is not uh, liable. No, kasi liable ka lang ang nakalagay sa ating uh, Article 71023 due to the defects in plans. Okay? Mm-hmm. Due to the defects in plans. 'Yun ang nakalagay sa ating uh, Article 71023. So kung 'yan ay halimbawa uh, uh, case of terrorism na bomba, no? So, exempted yon, So, walang liability yung architect doon. Uh, citing the case of Juan Nakpil and Sons versus uh, yung nagpagawa ng uh, mga ng, ng building doon sa uh, Binondo noong 1970s, I think, no? Na, uh, yun nga is uh, force majeure. No? Force majeure yung uh, sa case ni Juan Nakpil and Juan Nakpil and Sons. Yun na uh, nag, naglindol nag collapse yung building nag tilt alang uh, parang uh, leaning tower of pisa no sa intramuros noon naka tilt uh-huh. oo so la- naging liable si Juan Nakpil and the contractor so, bakit biruin mo Two years pa lang na na-construct yung building naglindol yung mga katabi na matagal na hindi nag hindi nag tilt yung uh, project na yon na dalawang taon pa lang yun yung nag tilt So, nung nagkaroon ng investigation, na-discover na nagkaroon ng deviation sa plans and specifications. So, sabi ng court uh, sa, sa case ni Juan Nakpil and Sons is that kung ito ay walang deviation sa original plans, wala sa nang liability ang architect. Okay? Kaya lang, nagkaroon ng deviation in plans. So, kahit force major yan, ang cost ng collapse is not due to force major but the deviation in plans and specifications. So, mm-hmm. mo yon, di ba? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. Questions pa? Oh. Ayun, sir, meron pong sinabi dito si Ira. Sabi niya, think hmm. before you click. Yes. Yeah. Oo. Iba gaya nga ng isang points to ponder ko sa, sa Facebook. No? Uh, ang digital marketing is that uh, when you post, there should be a caution. Diba? May caution. Mm-hmm. Ano ba yung magiging effect nito pag pinost ko to? Apa. Hindi yung uh, ganda ng gawa ko, i-post ko to sa Facebook kasi gusto mo magpabibo. No? Pero uh, ang, ang tanong is, did you get client by posting that to Facebook? Diba? <laughs> so, baka sa, <laughs> Oo nga. <laughs> sa isang katutak na pinupost mo sa Facebook, hindi ka naman nakakuha ng isang kliyente, why posting it? Diba? Mm. Better for you to communicate with client directly na sigurado ka makukuha mo yung kliyente kisa naman mag-post ka ng post sa Facebook na wala ka naman napapala. Mm. Ba? Pinagod pa yung sarili mo Nag-render ka pa ng free assistance doon Sa mga nagagandahan ng <laughs> Hindi ka naman kinuha ng architect Ng bahay nila Di ba? Okay Yan. Okay? Okay so, po, thank you sir to, uh, Let's go na to Code of Ethics no? uh, Ganito yung pag-aaral ng batas Kailangan na uh, nililink-link natin Okay? So, okay. Code of Ethics uh, Selected uh, provision sa so, kodobetis natin, nakalagay din that the architect shall refrain from associating himself, herself with, or allowing the use of his or her name by any enterprise that may negatively affect himself, herself, or the architectural profession. Marami sa atin pumapayag na magiging STE ng isang uh, construction firm, di ba? Sustaining technical uh, employee na binabayaran ka lang ng kakarampot, hindi ka naman talaga sustaining technical employee pinapalabas lang na ikaw ang sustaining technical employee. Violation sa section 7.7 ng ating Code of Ethics. Okay? Mm. Well, section 7.9 na-discuss na natin kanina doon in, in uh, relation sa signing and sealing. Okay? And then the architect shall not undertake a commission for which he or she knows that another architect has been previously employed 
unless he or she notifies uh, the other architect of the fact in writing and has conclusively determined that the original employment has been terminated and duly compensated. Okay? So, hindi ka uh, mag-undertake ng commission kung meron na yung architect na na-employ doon. Okay? And then, the architect shall not undergo any circumstances or uh, through any means solicit project already known to him as previously committed to other architect. Ibig sabihin, huwag ka nang manulot. Diba? Kung uh, yan ay naibigay na sa isang arkitekto, hindi mo na dapat pwedeng sulutin. No? Then, Hello, sir. Excuse hmm. me lang, sir. Pa, pa full screen lang daw po ng slides. Ay, hindi ba naka, no? Ay, hindi po, sir. Naka full screen sa akin, eh. Mm. Ayan. Ayan, sir. Ayan po. Okay na po, okay. sir. Thank you. Ayan. So... Pagka mayroong uh, ibang architect na, huwag na tayong pumasok, huwag na na rin sulutin. Okay? Kasi violation ng, uh, ng uh, Code of Ethics. Okay? And then, uh, ang pinaka-critical sa lahat is uh, itong 7.7. No? The architect shall not maliciously or unfairly criticize or discredit another architect or the latter's work. Okay? Pag pumunta sa inyo yung kliyente at magtanong sa sa personality or professional qualification ng isang arkitekto, huwag nyo nang siraan pa. No? Kahit alam nyo yung sira na yung pangalan nun. No? We should not discredit no? or uh, criticize uh, unfairly no? even his personality or his work. No? Tingnan nyo yung mga doktor. Pagka nagpa-check up ka sa isang doktor at hindi ka gumaling at mag-second opinion ka, sasabihin lang ng pangalawang doktor, ah, baka hindi lang effective yung uh, gamot na binigay sa iyo. Sa, subukan natin palitan yung gamot. Hindi nila sasabihin na, ah, yung doktor na yan, dami na nagpa-check up dyan, wala namang gumagaling. Hindi ginagawa ng mga doktor yan no? sa ethics nila. Dapat gagawin din natin yan sa atin. O, eh, marami sa atin minsan, ako, ang dami nang uh, niloko niyan, ma'am, huwag ka nang magpagawa doon, ang pangit mga ng mga design niya. Oh, di ba ginagawa yan na uh, Mr. Lito? No? It's a uh, bawal under our code of ethics. No? Hindi, mm-hmm. hindi dapat natin pwedeng uh, gawin yan. Otherwise, na, labas na we are unprofessional. Di ba? Uh, okay. Nilalait na yun. Nilalait, sir. No? Oo. Oh, yun. So, yun. Okay? Now, let's go now to uh, section 26. Okay? Vested rights when uh, the law was passed. Okay? Kami mga under RA 545, nung nagkaroon ng 9266, automatic na registered din kami in the manner kung ano yung registration na mga pumapasa under RA 9266. Hindi na namin kailangan pang kumuha ng exam na panibago. So, converted ang aming certificate of registration into uh, a certificate registration uh, provided under RA 92. 66. Pero hanggang ngayon nire-research ko to, no? Kung uh, ang services ba na nabilong sa RE545 is magbago rin, no? Kasi pag tiningnan ninyo under RE545, kami mga pumasa sa RE545, allowed kami gumawa ng architectural and structural design. Okay? We're in RE9266, pag tiningnan niyo yung dalawang uh, document sa RA 9266, allowed na lang tayo gumawa ng architectural and structural conceptualization. Na wala na yung structural design. Kaya nga unang panahon, kahit hindi mo kailangan ng civil engineer or structural engineer. Because under RA 545, pag binasa mo, sa general practice of architecture, an architect is allowed uh, to uh, execute architectural and structural designing. No? Pag nakita nyo to ito, pag binasa nyo yan, architectural and structural designing. So we are allowed, kaya nga may uh, subject tayo sa ating uh, course na structural, no? from uh, concrete, concrete na steel, timber. No? Kasi sa RE545, we are allowed to design structural uh, analysis, no? neighbor structural uh, detailing, which is na wala yan ngayon sa uh, RA9266. No? Sa RA9266 ngayon, structural conceptualization na lang. Okay? But I'm doing uh, research pa rin, no? 
kung ito bang uh, nasa 545 is affected na talaga na talagang hindi pwedeng uh, mag-perform ng uh, architectural and structural uh, designing and uh, purely structural conceptualization. So hanggang ngayon, uh, nire-research ko pa yan no, kung uh, makakuha ko ng data. Now, nagkaka-problema tayo rito with the practice of the civil engineers. Okay? Kasi ang mga civil engineers, as what you have said a uh, while ago, na pumiperma ng uh, structural uh, ng architectural uh, drawings no so ano ba talaga dapat okay ang problema natin ngayon because there is a pending case with the Supreme Court no yung nagkaso si uh, Lito Gamolo versus uh, Secretary of Public Works and Highways no and uh Ibdani okay nakabinben sa Supreme Court ang kaso hanggang ngayon hindi pa na desisyonan okay and uh, the case is that for RA 9266. It is for uh, the Section 302 of PDT 96. Ang problema, affected ang uh, implementation ng ating RA 9266. Ang problema natin dyan because uh, majority of the building officials are civil engineers and not architects. Okay? But uh, generally, wala talagang injunction, walang TRO, ang RA 9266. Ang hirap lang talaga i-implement because it is affected of uh, the IRR of PDT 96. Pero pag tinignan ninyo guys, ano, Napakaganda ng paggawa ng uh, IR ng revised IRR. Kasi sa revised IRR, IRR binuhay ang lahat ng professionals na, na uh, related sa construction industry. Binuhay doon. No? Ang ayaw lang yung mga kaibigan nating mga civil engineers. No? Gusto pa rin na mag-practice ng uh, architecture at the same time. No? E kung ganyan lang naman, edi, dapat pwede na rin tayo mag-practice uh, ng structural design. Hindi na dapat tayo nag-amend ng ating uh, RE545 no kasi sa RE545 allowed tayo ng architectural at structural design no kung uh, hindi na naamin yun hindi eh, sana wala sila masyadong trabaho no kasi cover na natin ang practice of uh, designing uh, structural uh, designing okay nagkaroon tayo ng RE9266 because of the reason na nagkaroon ng uh, ng usapan no in fact nagkaroon ng memorandum of understanding hindi ko lang makita yung copy ko nagkaroon ng memorandum of understanding na magdelineate ng function no that structural design shall now be given to structural engineers actually not civil engineers no it should be structural engineers and architectural designing shall be the exclusive uh, domain of the architects it was signed no pero nung ipasa na yung 9266 majority of the uh, engineers turned their back no hindi nila sinunod yung uh, kasunduan na yon and indirectly, uh, they filed the case with the uh, Secretary Ibdani no, ng DPWH to uh, prohibit the implementation of Section 302 no, na nakalagay doon sa pagka-architectural documents sa architect, pag-structural uh, design sa structural uh, engineers. No, kasi may, may mga engineering firm na nagpa-practice ng architecture at the same time engineering profession. So, with that... Uh, Amendments ng ating 9266, noong 2015, nagsulong din ang mga group of civil engineers to amend RA544, no? the, the old uh, civil engineering law. Kaya lang doon sa kanilang uh, sinusulong na bill sa Congress, ang uh, practice of architecture, kasama pa rin na gusto nila mag-practice pa rin ng architecture at the same time sa bill nila. So naguluhan itong si <coughs> Honorable uh, Philip Chano Bilmonte during that time, 2015, Yung uh, Speaker of the House of Representatives is uh, Honorable Feliciano Bilmonte. Okay? So sabi ni Bilmonte, bakit uh, nasa bill pa rin ng uh, mga civil engineers ang uh, scope of practice ng architecture? So nagkakaroon pa rin ng, ng uh, overlapping. So hindi matuloy-tuloy ang kanilang uh, bills no, to amend RA544 in uh, in new civil engineering law because of that uh, problem no, na nasasama pa rin yung practice of architecture. So what uh, Honorable Belmonte did is that uh, nagsulat siya sa Professional Regulation Commission. Okay? And uh, sa sulat niya sa Professional Regulation Commission, humingi siya ng opinion kung ano ba talaga dapat ang practice ng architecture. Ano yung practice ng civil uh, engineering. Okay? So on April 13, 2015, ang PRC nag-reply uh, sa sulat ni Honorable uh, Feliciano Belmonte. No? And uh, itong nakalagay doon sa reply nila kay uh, Feliciano Bilmonte. Okay? So basahin natin yung uh, malinaw na portion. No? 
Dito sa evaluation, ito yon, ito portion na to sa sulat nila. <clears throat> ito yon. No. So sabi ng PRC, ang sabi ng PRC kay Honorable Feliciano Belmonte. Sabi nila ito yung evaluation namin on academic training, the academic uh, requirement of the civil engineering degree vis-a-vis the architectural degree demonstrates that civil engineers are not academically uh, academically competent to practice architecture nor to prepare and certify architectural documents. A typical civil engineering course does not include a single unit of architectural design, planning, or drafting. On the other hand, a typical architecture course has 10 semesters of mainstream architecture that includes design, planning, graphics, visual techniques, engineering. and units in building technology and engineering sciences similar to civil engineering. A civil engineering curriculum does not have the same comprehensive design and planning subjects. It is worth noting that for a civil engineer to become an architect, it will take the full five-year course to attain the degree, whereas an architect will only take two years to complete the civil engineering degree. This shows the competencies of its profession practicing the other. So malinaw ang sinabi ng uh, PRC that civil engineers are not really allowed and not really acad- academically qualified to practice the profession of uh, architecture. Ngayon, ang sinasabi ng CIS, pagka yan daw ay ginawa sa kanila, dinidisenfranchise daw sila for the passage of that architecture business. Ano ang sabi ng PRC? Hindi ko na makita yung second uh, page kasi nito. No? Pero ang sinasabi lang doon sa second page is that the bill will not deprive civil engineers the right to practice their profession as it is a requirement for all buildings and structures that civil structural design plans and analysis are to be signed and sealed preferred by the civil or structural engineers. Yun lang ang sinasabi doon. Kaya lang, ang tanong ngayon is what happens to this letter? I don't know if this letter uh, also given uh, copy or furnished copy with the UAPSD Ayapawa. No, kasi kung ako ang nakakareceive ng sulat na to, dapat nag-manifest ako sa Supreme Court doon sa pending case no, that uh, Your Honor, the PRC has already give their opinion and therefore the case uh, submitted to this uh, court is already moot and academic. No, so dapat tapos na yung boxing. No? So I don't know what happened to this uh, letter if uh, this letter was submitted to Supreme Court. No, kung nasubmit ito, dapat tapos na yung boxing kasi uh, the court surely will decide the case uh, in mootness. Okay? So, yon. Okay. Sources of authority. Okay. Saan nang gagaling ang ating authority to practice? Okay? Mayroon kayong nakikita dyan, uh, PRCID and yung Certificate of Registration. Okay? Pag nakita niyo yung ating Certificate of Registration, nakalagay dyan. No? Uh, dapat malaman ng lahat na si Alfredo A. Fernandez Fernandez na nakatupad sa lahat ng mga pangangailangan iniatas ng Batas Republika bilang 545 which is ngayon is RA 9266 ngayon ay itinala na arkitekto okay doon ka palang lang sinabihan na itinala ka na as arkitekto at pwede mo nang gamitin yung titulong uh, arkitekto okay so nakalagi diyan na may karapatang gumanap sa naturang profesyon alisunod sa batas tuntunin at mga alituntunin ng, ng uh, lupon na may kapangyarihan humawak na naturang titulo. Okay? Pagdakita ninyo, di ba? Na humawak ng uh, naturang titulo. So doon ka binibigyan ng authority para gamitin mo ang title ng architect or arkitekto. Kaya nga sinasabi natin kanina, Diyan sa mga naglalagay ng architect sa pangalan dyan, ERCA, ER, na hindi pa kayo arkitekto, wala kayong certificate of registration, hindi kayo pwedeng gumamit noon dahil dito nyo lang makikita sa certificate of registration na binibigyan kayo ng authority to use the word architect. Okay? Now, under Section 7, Paragraph E, pag binasa ninyo yung Section 7, Paragraph E of RA 8981, ito yung PRC Modernization Act of 2000. No? It provides that Yung isang uh, duties and responsibilities of the PRC is to admit the successful examinees to the practice of the profession or occupation, cause the entry of their names on its uh, registry book and computerized database, issue certificate of registration slash professional license, bearing the registrant's name, picture, and registration number 
signed by all the members of the board concerned and the chairperson with the official seal of the board and the commission affects that which ito pinaka-importante sa lahat guys no architects uh, reviewers students ang pinaka-importante sa lahat no which certificate shall be the authority to practice malinaw na sinasabi ng section na 7 paragraph e ng R1881 na ang certificate of registration lang ang nagbibigay ng authority to practice our profession in fact pag binasa mo yung dugtong yan and at the option of the professional concerned, ministerially issue the professional identification card to be used solely for the purpose of identification upon payment of the appropriate amount. Take note, pag binasa ninyo yung batas, ang PRCID is only optional and not mandatory. But what happens now, the PRC makes it mandatory contrary to their own laws. No? So, di ba, ang ating certificate of registration, yun ang lisensya natin. Kaya pag binasa mo, issue certificate of registration slash professional license. Kasi yan ang lisensya. Ang ating PRC ID is not a license. Now, in fact, option of the professionals lang kung gusto niya magkaroon ng PRC ID. Ngayon, pag tinignan niyo, napaka-ironic that you are uh, getting... Uh, a mandatory CPD for an for an optional ID. <laughs> Di ba? Nagsi-CPD tayo for an optional ID. No? So parang walang sense. No? Nobody complains it. No? Kasi pagka ito ay uh, kinumplain mo, bay, wala nang magbabayad. Sino magre-renew ng Ayapoa dyan? No? Sino magre-renew sa PRC dyan? Walang kita ang gobyerno. So, but the law says, the PRC ID is not mandatory to every professional. Ang pinaka-mandatory doon, yung Certificate of Registration. Well, kailangan ninyong pakaingatan ang inyong certificate of registration. So, pag kayo ay pumasa o sa mga architects dyan, ang certificate of registration kailangan itong ingatan. Kasi pag ito ay nawala, nasunog, nabasa, at pag nag-request ka uli sa PRC, ang nakapirma sa ni-request mo, yung present na PR BOA ngayon, hindi na yung dating uh, PR BOA or uh, PRC chairman na nakapirma doon sa dating mong certificate of registration. Kasi walang duplicate ito. Okay? So na, napakapangit tingnan na ang nakapirma dyan is uh, 1980s pa no? dati. Pero ngayon ang nakapirma is uh, 2020 no? pero pumasa ka dati pa. No? So ang pangit tingnan. So kailangan uh, ingatan ang uh, inyong certificate of registration. No? Pa paano kung uh, yung dating chairman of the board patay na? Kaya kayo magpapapirma nun? Wala na. No? Diba? So yon Okay? Next is... Uh, Ang nakalagay sa PRC ID natin is ganito. Wala kayong makikita sa PRC ID na nakalagay that that is a professional license. Not like with the uh, driver's license na talaga, nang nakala, talaga nakalagay na professional license. Ang nakalagay lang dyan is professional identification card. ID talaga. Okay? Hindi talaga yan lisensya. ID talaga. And pag tininan mo yan sa likod, pag binasa mo doon, certification. No? Ang nakalagay dyan, this is to certify that the persons whose name, photograph, and signature appear herein is a duly registered professional, legally authorized to practice his or her profession with all the rights and privileges of pertinent thereto. This is to certify further that he or she is a professional in good standing and that his or her certificate of registration is last professional license has not, has not been suspended, revoked, or withdrawn. Take note. This is only a mere certification. No? Ibinanggit pa nga niya eh, na ang iyong certificate of registration slash professional license as is hindi na withdraw, hindi na suspend, or hindi na revoke. Okay? So nagpapatunay yan na ang PRC ID is not really a license. Hindi yan. That is only uh, in a regular ID uh, the same as what other IDs. Okay? Yan. Now, in uh, one book of uh, taxation authored by uh, attorney Abelardo Tidumundon, a prominent lawyer, a prominent uh, reviewer in taxation in the uh, bar uh, review, no? sinabi niya nga doon sa kanyang libro, no? sa, sa taxation niya, na sinabi niya, furthermore, uh, RA uh, 8981, the PRC Modernity is of uh, 2000, does not require renewal of professional license or registration uh, of professionals. There is merely a requirement for the payment of registration fees once every three years. The securing of the professional ID card is merely optional. Oh, so lawyer na yan, ha? prominent lawyer na yan ng uh, 
ng ating uh, country ang uh, nagsasabi na hindi talaga hindi ho talaga mandatory ang PRCID no that is only uh, optional okay now pakinggan natin to please so, ID is a representation of your license to practice. ID is not your license. ID is simply a certification card representing your license. And you must always safeguard your architect certificate of registration, which is your license, and architect C especially from unauthorized use by others, even your own team. Recently, there have been a big bit of we don't know about CPD. The point that this book... Okay. So, even uh, architect uh, Robert Sack, no? In uh, during during that uh, outtaking ceremony, uh, already said no, na siya, sa kanya na rin galing na ang PRCID is not a license no. Pero contrary to his opinion, na sinabi niya doon na uh, PRCID is a representation of the professional license. I did not um, I, I did not agree with that opinion no. Kasi hindi talaga nagre-represent ang ID sa professional license. It only certifies you. So that your license is not uh, suspended, is not revoked, or not uh, withdrawn. Okay? So, yun. Now, uh, we will go now with the uh, continuing uh, requirements. No? To practice the profession, mayroon tayong continuing requirements which is the good moral character and the adherence to the ethical standards of uh, professional uh, practice. Yun ang continuing, continuing requirements na sa practice of the profession. No? And uh, in addition to that, yung continuing uh, CPD requirements as uh, required by uh, RA 10.9.1.2. So dalawa yun, good moral character and uh, RA 10.9.1.2 which is the compliance of the CPD law. Okay. Uh, I will just... Uh, read cases no tatlong case in uh, relation to good moral character no itong case na to is uh, happen in Iloilo in 1992 and uh, para maintindihan lang natin kung ano yung uh, example ng good moral character okay so itong uh, case ni Evangeline Leda versus uh, attorney Tribunian na Taba uh, nag uh, contract sila ng marriage sa Iloilo and was solemnized under the uh, civil code and uh, this is a marriage uh, of exceptional character. Both of them, ang ginawa nila is that uh, nagpa-secret marriage. Uh, so, secret marriage. And then, uh, until na makapasa si, uh, makatapos si uh, Attorney Tribune yung tabang na pag-aaral niya sa kanyang new studies. Okay? So, they had not yet lived as a husband and wife. Hindi, hindi mo na sila nagsama. No? And then, uh, having finished those studies, declared in his application to take the bar that he was single. So, di ba, married na sila. No, secret married. Nung mag-apply siya sa bar exam, sinabi niya doon sa kanya application na single siya. Hindi niya nilagay doon na married siya. Okay? Then, uh, after passing the bar, Leda blocked him of taking his oath. Instituting a complaint of uh, bar matter number 78 that he acted prudently in filing out his uh, application. So, nag-away silang dalawa. And uh, pinrasonal siya ni Leda and sinabi na married kami niyan. No? Pero sinabi niya niyan, single siya. So, sinabi doon na thus tabang should be considered unworthy to take the lawyer's, the lawyer's oath for lack of good moral character no? by uh, misrepresented himself as single and for lack of good moral character. No? So, alam mo anong sabi ng uh, court? Kasi ang uh, question dito is that whether or not tabang committed gross misrepresentation of his status. Anong sabi ng court? No? Yes, tabang committed gross misrepresentation of his status. Tabang's declaration and his application for admission to the 1981 bar examination that he was single was a gross misrepresentation of a material fact made in utter bad faith for which it should, not be, made, it should be made unshareable. That false statement, if he had been known, would have been uh, disqualified him outright from taking the bar examination. So, sinabi ng court, 
na kung ng time na yun nalaman ka agad hindi na siya pwedeng mag-take ng uh, bar exam. Okay? So, sa Supreme Court, ng uh, Supreme Court is that tabang is suspended from the practice of law until further orders for disqualification. So, biruin mo yun, no? With that simple uh, action, no? Na sinabi niyang single siya instead of married, no? Lack of good moral character siya, ang sabi ng ng uh, court. Okay? So, this statement if, if we, uh, we relate this to the logbook, no? Pag nagkaroon tayo ng false misrepresentation, kasi dito nagkaroon ng false misrepresentation, instead of married, single. Sa logbook, magagamit yun doon kanina. No? Pagka nagkaroon tayo ng uh, misrepresentation and filling up the logbook, lalabas doon na we are lack of good moral character. In another case, uh, in uh, the case of Harun Ismiling, ito naman, sa nangyari kay Harun Ismiling is that... Uh, Meron pala siyang pending case. No, may pending case siya pero wala pang final judgment. Okay? No mag-apply siya for the uh, bar. 'Di ba? Usually pag nag-apply uh, ka sa mga application sa kalagay doon, meron ka bang uh, pending case? Yes or no? Sinabi niya doon na no. Okay? Pero meron pala siyang pending case. Okay? Nalaman later on. Okay? So nung nalaman na meron siyang pending case, sinabi niya doon na wala. Sinabi ng ng court sa kanya na good moral character siya by concealing the existence of such pending case. So, hindi siya hindi siya na-disbar dahil uh, may kaso siya. Na-disbar siya because of concealing that uh, existing case na wala pang final judgment. No? So, sa architecture naman, di ba, kasi sinasabi doon that a person or the applicant has not convicted of a crime involving moral torture. Dapat i-declare mo kung meron kang pending case. I-declare mo kasi wala pa namang final judgment. No? So, papakuha, papa, ang uh, PRC naman will allow you to take the exam kasi wala pa namang final judgment yung, yung uh, pending case. Okay? Pagka nagkaroon ng final judgment, doon ka ngayon uh, marirevoke yung license mo kung pumasa ka na. Okay? So, that's what happened to Harun Ismeleng. No? Uh, tinago niya na meron pala siyang pending case. Sinabi niya doon sa application niya na wala. Okay? So, sabi ng Supreme Court, his lack of good moral character. In another case, Villa Santa versus Peralta, uh, successful bar candidate, uh, but was not admitted to the bar because of lack of good moral character. Then, so, ang nangyari naman dito, uh, nag-secure siya ng uh, fake na marriage contract. Okay, so nagpagawa siguro sa recto. Okay, so sabi ng uh, court that is an offense involves moral turpitude. Okay, so hindi siya nakapag uh, uh, take ng uh, oath. No? Okay. So, yun ang nangyari. Now, why is good moral character a requirement? No? Pag tinina natin yung qualification ng uh, applicants for examination, good moral character is a requirement. Pag tinina natin yung qualification ng PR BOA, good moral character is a requirement. So, ang tanong is why good moral character is a requirement? The answer is because good moral character is the test of fitness of a person for the practice of profession. Other purpose to which good moral character is a requirement are to protect the public, to protect the uh, public uh, image of the person holding such profession, to protect prospective clients. So, sinabi ng Supreme Court in the case of Dantes versus Dantes. And the uh, good moral character is not only a condition precedent to the admission to the license or examination, but for the practice of profession. It must be possessed at all times in order to maintain one's good standing in the profession and to the society. Okay, so yun, kaya yun ang pakaimportante ng good moral character, no? Because that is the test of fitness, no? And you have to maintain that one's good standing in the profession and to the uh, society. Okay, so what is now the test of good moral character? Simple lang ang test ng good moral character. Honesty, no? Honesty, such a lonely word. Yun lang. Yes. <laughs> Kaya ikaw ay dishonest, then you lack of good moral character. Take note of that. No? Okay. Uh, good moral character is the test of fitness of a person for the practice of professions. While crimes involving moral turpitude is uh, done in contrary to justice, honesty, modesty, or good morals. Example is tapa. No? and uh, other uh, deceitful uh, actions no? as uh, uh, provided in the revised uh, penal code. Okay? Itong makakagandahan, no? uh, familiar sa inyo itong uh, artista na to, no? 
si uh, Mr. Hayden, Dr. Hayden ko. No? Si Hayden ko nagkaroon ng skandal, no? I believe na panood niyo lahat 'yon, no, yung skandal nila ni uh, Maricar uh, Reyes, okay? Na dis, na, na uh, revoke ang license ni Hayden ko nung time na lumabas yung kanyang uh, sex scandal. Okay? Ngayon, natanggalan ng lisensya si Hayden ko. In fact, natanggalan din siya ng membership sa Medical uh, Association. No? Ang uh, depensa ni Hayden ko sa court is that dapat hindi daw siya matanggalan ng lisensya kasi hindi naman, da, hindi naman daw uh, in relation sa practice of profession niya yung Uh, sex scandal na nangyari. Okay? So, anong sabi ng Court of Appeals? Sabi ng Court of Appeals, uh, the disqualifying immoral conduct need not be directly connected with the practice of the profession. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, kahit hindi yan practice uh, of profession mo, basta nagkaroon ka ng uh, dishonesty, immoral uh, conduct, that is considered as uh, lacking of good moral character. So natanggalan ng uh, lisensya si Hayden ko. But after two years na reinstate kasi pag binasa mo yung ating batas, no? Typical yan na uh, template sa professional uh, regulatory laws. After two years na ma-revoke yung license mo, it can be reinstated. Okay? So pwedeng i-reinstate after two years. Well, discretionary on the part of the board, discretionary on the part of the PRC kung pwede kang i-reinstate kung nagbago ka na. No? So si Hayden ko yata nag-aral ng theology sa Amerika. Uh, so sabi niya mabait na po ako, nag-aral ako ng theology, uh, na reinstate ang license after two years. You know guys, alam niyo mas maganda yung ma-revoke yung license mo isa sa ma-suspend. Kasi ang uh, sinasabi ng batas natin, pag na-revoke yung license mo, after two years, pwede kang reinstate. Pag na-suspend yung license mo, ang pinakamahirap dyan pag nakalagay dun sa suspension na suspended until further notice. No? So nagpalit na yung board, hindi ka pa rin na-notice. No? Mas matagal ang suspension kisa dun sa Uh, revocation. Okay? O, next uh, requirements doon sa uh, pag-maintain ng practice of profession is the uh, CPD law which is mandatory na no, ang uh, pagkuha uh, ng CPD law CPD for the optional ID. Okay? I will not uh, discuss further the CPD law kasi masyadong uh, mahaba pag diniscuss ko pa. Uh, in fact, may sulat ako sa PRC and uh, mahaba masyado yung sulat ko sa PRC. Okay? So, yan. So, Section 23, Article uh, 3, ito yung mga grounds ngayon sa suspension or revocation ng license. Signing and sealing. No? Nag-sign and seal ka ng uh, mga gawa ng non-registered persons that is considered as aiding or abetting. No? False impersonation, soliciting uh, projects without service agreement, and violated RA 9266, it's IRR and the uh, Code of Ethics that is a grounds for the suspension or revocation of your professional license. And then, you will be penalized under Section 29 and Section 30 of the Penal Clause of RA 9266. Okay. Itong sa Arkansas, uh, itong case na to, biroin mo, isang architect nag-hire ng 200 licensed uh, architects. No? Sabi ng court, bawal. No? Wal walang balance. Dapat mas uh, marami yung architect kaysa dun sa non-registered la license. Okay. Uh, license engineer nag-prepare ng uh, architecture, uh, architectural drawings no intended for human occupancy then uh, bawal okay uh, dito uh, engineer nagamit ng title na architect no na prosecute okay then uh, what else okay license uh, professional engineer nag-prepare ng detailed uh, drawings that qualified uh, as plans for the construction of the duplex uh, engaged in the notorious practice of architecture then. Okay, Section 26, vested rights. Uh, Section 26, uh, pagka pumasa ka na under 545, pagdating sa uh, Section sa 9266, hindi ka na kailangan mag-exam pa ulit. Ownership of plans and specifications, we discussed it already no, doon sa copyright kanina. Okay? Positions in government service, Section 35. Ang mga positions sa government service, Uh, ay sinasabi lang doon sa batas is that pagka mayroong open position requiring only uh, a registered and licensed architect, it should be filled up only by a registered and licensed architect. Hindi pwedeng i-filled up ng other individual. Okay? Pero hindi na kang nahulugan doon na kailangan mag-open ng item para sa architect. 
Okay? Kasi hindi mandatory under local government code ang position ng city uh, architect. Okay? And then, uh, Section 40, Integration of the Architecture Profession. I will not discuss it anymore dahil uh, nakapending yung case sa Supreme Court as filed by Architect J. Paul Octaviano against uh, UAP no, and the uh, PRC. And then, uh, well, Section 41, enforce, Section 41 IRR, so may IRR tayo. Section 44, Enforcement. Yung enforcement, kasi ang dami nagsasabi na dapat UAP ang mag enforce Actually, ang mag enforce dapat is uh, any individual person, tayo, no? any person, uh, including UAP, because UAP is considered a person, no? a juridical person. Pwede PIA sa mga members nila, being a juridical uh, person. Kasi sinasabi lang, enforcement, any person can enforce uh, the law, lalo na doon sa mga illegal uh, practices. Separability clause, uh, well, kung uh, mayroong uh, portion of the law that will be declared unconstitutional later on, the rest of the provisions will still be uh, valid. Okay? Then, uh, repealing clause. Uh, well, sa repealing clause, RA 545 was already repealed. Other laws inconsistent to it uh, is repealed and modified uh, accordingly. Effectivity, matagal na. 2004, nag-take effect na yung ating uh, law. Okay? So, May problema tayo doon sa IRR ng PDT-96 sa implementation. So, ang, ang point natin dito is that in case of discrepancy between the basic law, basic law and the rules and regulations, al alimbawa, uh, special law muna. Special law and general law. General law kasi yung PDT-96, special law ang RA-9266. Pag may conflict, special law prevails. Okay? So, RA-9266 prevails. In case of discrepancy naman between the basic law and the IRR, for example, May uh, conflict between the basic law ng 9266 and yung implementing rules and regulations. Basic law prevails no, kasi with the, the doctrine of the spring cannot rise higher than its source. Okay? Kasi ang IRR, ang uh, basis ng IRR is the basic law. So hindi pwede mangingababaw yung IRR doon sa uh, basic uh, law. Okay? So yon. So that's the end of the introduction. So we will now go to the main uh, topic of uh, RA9266. No? Kaya pa? <laughs> Kaya pa ba? <laughs> huh? Okay, so that's the end of the topic, guys. Thank you yep. very much for uh, inviting me. Sana makapag-through picture muna tayo, Architect Gerard, no? Habang ah, sige po, sige po, sige po. Thank you so much. Meron lang kinabahan daw si kinabahan daw sila sir kasi kala nila introduction pa daw yun. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, may question po si Mark Calderon. What hmm. is your thought about CEs changing the word architectural plans like AR1 to CE1 for them to sign plans and without violating the RA9266 because of the petition of PAIS to CA. Okay. That is not a violation of RA-9266. I agree with that. But that is a violation of the IRR of PDT-96. Kasi sa standard building forms ng uh, revised IRR, wala namang CE doon. Wala namang CE plans doon na gagawin mong CE, uh, yung level ng architecture na gagawin mong CE. Wala yun sa revised IRR of PDT-96. So pwede nilang yeah. mabalulate ang uh, revised IRR of PDT-96 or PDT-96 PDT itself. Okay, okay. Thank you so much. So, okay. maraming maraming salamat po. So, meron pong request si Architect Fernandez. Ano po tayo? Magpa-picture daw po muna tayo. <laughs> okay, pero bago po tayo magpa-picture, magpapakilala lang po sa gitang foundry, lalo na po sa lahat ng mga gusto pong mag-board uh, exams ng October tsaka ng January. No, meron po kaming ino-offer na mga courses for you. No, saglit lang po ito. Si Ar, si Ma'am Eds po ba? Ma'am Eds ikaw po ba mag ano? Mag promote? Ako ba? Or I'll Sige. just share this na lang quickly. Sige. I'll just share this quickly na lang po. Okay, so guys, no sa dali saglit lang po ito, no. I'll just uh, show you my my screen. Okay. Where is my screen? Can you see it, guys? Yes po. Okay, I'll just uh, show you this one. So this is our classroom. No, this is uh, Foundry's Lobby located in uh, along Quezon Avenue near Santo Domingo Church. And uh, yeah, so we have a very nice space no, for everyone. 
and we welcome no, all the founders no, to use this uh, lobby for studying. So when, if if the lockdown uh, naglift na po ito, uh, we will still be having our regular classes as uh, coinciding with the uh, with with our uh, virtual classes. So the transition learning for Ale, no. So we have uh, three uh, programs on so the trilogy. Which comprises of the fundamentals, focus on design and vitals, the special courses, which includes the MBE, CME. MBE is the mock board exams, no? The CME is the construction materials estimates, and then the rule seven and eight. And then uh, we have open learning. Ito po yung mga free uh, courses natin, yung open house at saka mga free seminars. So just to give you an idea, no, yung sa sa trilogy po natin. No? So we have the fundamentals which comprises of uh, four major subjects, namely history and theories, building sciences, uh, codes and practice, and the design and planning which, which which will comprise 140 hours or 40 meetings. No, And then focus on design which is uh, we will be having our focus on design this coming uh, June already. No. So it will be 35 hours, uh, 10 meetings po yan discussing the different building types. And then the vitals are refresher, you know? so all the subjects will are included and it is, it is also uh, 35 hours. Okay, so ito po yung uh, topics natin, no? yung, tal, uh, yung apat na core subjects no, that we offer here in Foundry. And the uh, advantages of virtual learning, you know, so we migrated you know, and we offer virtual learning, uh, virtual classes you know, to all of you. Uh, and these are examples of our Zoom cl classes that are really lively and very interactive. You know? And uh, if uh, you also choose to enroll in our courses you know, in Foundry, you know, we, we offer you safe uh, physical distancing and physical space you know, because each uh, class you know, can be... Uh, uh, accommodated no in this uh, uh, space no so nakita po natin ito and then uh, we have flexible space as well no kasi we can accommodate up to uh, 100 uh, persons no kahit na naka physical distancing po tayo okay and then syempre to inspire you with your studies and your uh, creativity no we have this uh, beautiful spaces that are inspired you know, by architects and their works. Okay. And uh, we have this, uh, our social media uh, ecosystem you know, so that you can um, uh, connect with us. So we have a dedicated uh, Facebook uh, community support group, which is the Foundry Alley Mastermind, uh, exclusive for all the founders and students. No, nandyan po lahat ng mga mentors at mga architects uh, teaching and also sharing and supporting each other no, uh, for their uh, board exams. No? And then we have, uh, all, we are available in Facebook and also in Instagram. No? So we also have this uh, website and also some press releases so that if you want to uh, check on Foundry, no, you can uh, check all of these uh, ecosystems. So for a summary of our learning programs, no, here are the number of hours and also the fees no, of our uh, courses. Okay, so for more information, no, you can check out our link tree no, and our Facebook and the social media. So just to give you an idea, these are our learning programs that are open for October 2020 and January 2021. Okay. So uh, isa pong maganda po dito, no, you can customize no, your, your program. So for example, no, you want to have a virtual class. At the same time, meron kang gusto mo, maka-attend ka rin sa physical class, sa on-site classes. No? You, can, you can actually create and, and uh, uh, customize no, your, your program. No, so we can help you, you know, with that. So kunyari, meron kang so, uh, sa, sa fundamentals no, or comprehensive na review, gusto mo ano lang, uh, history lang yung gusto mong kunin o kaya building sciences kasi yun yung weakness na nakita mo, then you can also enroll in the, in those classes only. No, so it is very uh, flexible and it is very uh, uh, it can yeah, customizable, no. It depends on your needs and it depends on your needs and requirements. So here are the the schedule no so for you to study the the schedules no you can check our social media 
pages and also yung link tree po natin no you can check those available uh, uh, schedules so ang pinakamalapit na po mangyayari will be yung June which is yung focus on design no so it is a, uh, a special seminar focusing on the different building types okay so yung uh, uh, regular classes po natin no will start by July no so please check it out both visual uh, both virtual class and on-site classes no so tingnan po natin kung ano yung mga available available uh, schedules okay. okay so ito po yun so we have uh, suggested trilogy programs for you so kung gusto mo ano meron pong options no pwedeng isang option is blended ibig sabihin noon virtual class tsaka on-site pwede rin na puro virtual class lang yung i i enroll mo or kaya ano uh, pwedeng puro on site no so you can you have your options no uh, just talk to us no we are very well uh, we welcome you and we we are very uh, accommodating no of your needs and requirements okay so ito po yung aming link tree no link tree slash foundry no you can uh, check us check us out no in our facebook and social media or you can call 0917-104-3928. So, yun po yun, no? And, uh, yeah, we have to announce this because this is a very special uh, announcement that we offer scholarships, no? And uh, we invite you to become a Foundry Scholar. So, for January 2021 na Trilogy, no, you just have to submit one-minute creative video that tells you your story and why you deserve to be a Foundry Scholar. So we will be giving two full scholarships that will be given in cooperation with base plan of Buen Salido Architects. Okay, so if you submitted your creative video, don't worry. No, if you're a runner up, no, we will be giving you free access to our mock board exams. No, so it's a it's a very nice it's a very nice uh, offer na ito. No, and and just participate. No, by by uh, submitting your one minute creative video. Okay, so please. Uh, uh, submit it on or before June 5, 2020. Okay, so yun lang po yun, no? And then uh, here are our pictures, no? So just to see here, here is our first batch of uh, scholars natin, no? Sa Foundry, and also uh, our Macboard exams, no? And we hope to see you in class, no? So and be part of our Foundry family. Okay, yeah, so that's it, no? Thank you so much, guys, no, for attending this uh, webinar. No, please watch out no, for uh, some webinars. No, we, we still plan to have more webinars no, for you. Yeah, yeah, we have, we we have, have a few more webinars coming up. So just yeah. uh, stay tuned to social media. Tapos, you can also join our Facebook group, Yung Foundry Virtual Class. That's where we announce... Um, Minsan yun kasi yung inuuna namin for sign up. So kapag dun pa lang sa group na puno na, we don't post it outside anymore or to the mm -hmm. general page. So just uh, join the Facebook, Facebook groups. Um, yung Ale Mastermind, just to reiterate, it's only for enrolled students. But yung general group, which is the virtual class foundry group. Yeah, Tas, and... Just want to say happy birthday, Miss Architect Shushmita. Hello, Mata. happy birthday, Sashimita. <laughs> and also, I, I forgot, no, one very important element, no, if you uh, are uh, included in our Foundry community, we have a Foundry online library, no, online library, no, so it, ano, uh, composed of ebooks and reviewers, no, and it will be part of your, uh, uh, parang perks, no, as a founder, no, as a Foundry student. Yeah. Binili namin, binili namin lahat ng mga books outside tas nilagay namin sa <laughs> digital library para para libre para hindi na kayo gumastos. Kaya lahat na tayo nagtitipid. Ayun. So, yun po, <laughs> no, so maraming maraming salamat po. So, we, thank you so much no kay architect uh, uh si Maestro Alfredo Fernandez no for giving such a very wonderful and uh, yes, informative sir. talk no so i i also learned a lot no thank you so much sir so ang dami po dito nagpapasalamat ano that uh, 
they learn so much today no so parang hindi nila inaakala na ganoon kadami yung kanila mapapag-aralan today no and uh, and actually no i really believe that through education this is our way of this is our way of uh, initiating change diba yes. to improve our country to uh, make it more progressive no this is our way of giving back this is our way of uh, uh creating something beautiful in the future no and uh yeah no so uh thank you so much architect fernandez no so i we really guys. appreciate you okay so can we have a photo class no so okay po ba <laughs> paano po tayo magkakaroon ng ano na yan the gallery view yeah so uh yeah so we also acknowledge the presence of our mentors who are also here No, so mga si architect Rads na is here. Hello, si architect EL yeah. is also here. No, sa so marami po tayong mga support, nagso-support po sa atin. Okay, so maraming salamat po. No, so ngayon po let's appreciate each other. No, by just uh, shaking your hands, something like this. This is our way of appreciating. Okay, so aglit lang po ah. I'll just turn on my my video. Okay, so maraming salamat po. No, so one. Hello guys. So thank you so much for attending our uh, Foundry webinar. No, thank you so much. No. And uh, yeah, so see you in class guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. <laughs> okay, do you have any more concerns guys? Do you have any more concerns? And I'm very happy that you also let us see you, no, for following the protocols, no. It it means so much to us when you turn on your cameras. It means that you can follow instructions. Diba <laughs> in the board exams, number one important element is to follow instructions, guys. Yes. So if you know how, if you were able to follow the protocols for today's class, congratulations. No, because that's a very simple indicator that you can pass the board exams because you know how to follow the instructions, right? And also, I would like to promote book. also the book of Architect, book of Architect. Architect Fernandez, so RA9266. So please no, get a copy of that. It's, it's uh, available in Central Bookstore. Or you can directly uh, contact Architect Fernandez because Architect Maestro, meron po bang special ano? Ano po bang special kapag sa inyo directly umorder? Uh, pag sa akin na uh, umorder, ang uh, pagkakaiba niya sa Central Bookstore is that uh, may signature ko yung galing sa akin and may short message ko. Pag sa bookstore kasi, walang signature. Hmm. Pero sa mga malalayo, kasi hindi naman uh, sa lahat ng oras is uh, sufficient yung stocks. No? Kasi usually, <laughs> nag ako is uh, yung dinadala ko doon sa mga walk the talk uh, series no ah okay so, yun, kaya, so wala kong perma yung sa bookstore pag sa akin ang galing may perma ko in a short uh, message okay so mas maganda sana kapag may perma no kasi may basbas yan ni architect fernandez <laughs> okay so thank you so much sir For paano po kami makapag-contact sa inyo how can we contact you uh, karamihan na uh, uh, di contact me in uh, messenger but you can contact me also in uh, 0915 400-6637 Okay, so pakiulit po sir para po mailista po nila 0915-400-6637 Okay, so thank you Isaac Architect Rads na nag-chat na rin po no? So you can check out uh, the contact details of Architect Fernandez Yeah. Okay. Gusto mo, so, gusto mo magbigay tayo ng discount sa no? mga bibili ng books ni Architect Yeah, we wow. can to Foundry. No? Yeah, <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, we can do that. Tama po yun. Okay. Uh, for uh, Foundry students soon, uh, gagawin natin ng uh, 800 instead of 825. Wow, <laughs> thank you so much. Di ba, ang saya-saya hey, natin. Uh, <laughs> mga hindi pa nakasubscribe sa YouTube channel, uh, meron akong YouTube channel and uh, I discuss also professional practice and uh, construction contract management in my channel. So, uh, yeah. let uh, be uh, a coffee talk with Maestro. Yes, that's a coffee talk with Maestro, the YouTube channel. So, guys, no, so subscribe. Ano, ano, hit like, 
share and subscribe. <laughs> and hit the notification bell. Yeah, yeah very important yung notification <laughs> bell. Siyempre, yun po ang kinakaw May... ngayon ng YouTube. Yeah. Millennial na tayo Millennial lahat. Millennial na tayong lahat. Architect. <laughs> also, si Architect Rads na is also here. Meron din siyang YouTube channel. Diba? The Lady Architect. The Lady Architect. Yes. Yes. Hi yeah. po everyone. Hi po Sir Gerard. Hi po. Maestro and Ma'am Ed. Hello. Okay, so, so for those Men- who would like to, to tell us something, no, it's okay. No, so just ano lang to, nagso-socials na lang po tayo. So thank you so much for attending the webinar. I really appreciate all of you, no? And uh, kain po tayo. Sino pa po mga gusto po mag-shout out message diyan? Kamusta po? Sa sino po yung taga Doha, Qatar, Meron no? Maganda. Sino taga Qatar? Sila Cherry, saka si Thank Hello you. po, Aries. from Qatar. Hello, from Qatar. Magandang hapon. Ano na ba? Hapon na hapon po ba sa inyo? Ah, It's maraming 1:30 salamat. 1.30 p.m. 1.30 p.m. Ay, 1.30 p.m. No? So, thank you so much no, for attending our class. Kamusta po kayo dyan? No? Stay safe, Salamat, guys. salamat. Salamat Stay sa pag-invite. Saka kay Architect Fernandez. Thank you. Thank yes, you, and Cherry from Qatar. Yeah, thank you. So for those who would like to express their gratitude, uh, no, you can you turn can. on your microphone yeah, and talk to Architect Fernandez as well. Yeah, kung sino po yung gusto pong mag-message po sa kanila. No? <laughs> si Architect Aisa. Hello, Architect Aisa. Kamusta ka na? Si Architect Aisa po, isa po na ni siyang founder, no? Isa po siya sa mga una po naming estudyante sa Foundry. Architect Aisa, how are you? Hello! May natutulog kasi sa harap ko. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, so welcome, no? Kaya Thank mag- you so much. Kaya no, magpapaalam ako. At saka, uh, highly recommend. Ito na lang masasabi ko, ah. Uh, ang tagal ko nang graduate ng, ano, ng RT bago ako nag-exam. So, 15 years ang inantay ko bago ako nag-take ng exam. Ito lang ang in-enroll ko na class sa Foundry lang. Di ako nag-enroll sa ibang <laughs> ibang ano review center. Foundry lang talaga. So nakatulong uh-huh. talaga sa akin si Foundry. Uh, yung yung preparedness, uh, recommended talaga si MAC board exam. Mm-hmm. Try niyo talaga mag-attend kasi yun talaga yung nakaprepare. Dahil nung nag exam na kami, <laughs> yung mga mistake na nagawa namin nung MAC board, yun yung mga mistakes na iba namin kasama during exam. Ultimo yung ball pen. <laughs> so, <laughs> highly recommended for for preparedness talaga at saka conditioning of, of the mind. So, ah, okay. yun. Kaya thank you kay Architect Gerard. Maraming umaten, salamat din. Yun. Umaten lang din ako ng open house tapos enough na yun to, to convince <laughs> to take the board talaga. Okay, okay. thank you. Bye, Ed. And thanks din kay Architect, ano, for <laughs> Okay, <laughs> maestro. Uh, uh, marami akong natutunan at very informative siya. So, naisip ko nga, parang gusto ko i-screen siya tapos i-post ko doon sa house plans na doon. Pero sige. <laughs> <laughs> bahala na doon si Lord sa kanila. Okay, sige. Ay, bye-bye. bahala na nga si Lord sa kanila, di ba? <laughs> okay, so maraming salamat po. Thank no? you. Okay, so, okay. Bye, guys. So, meron pa po ba tayong nasa ano po natin? No? So, you can, you may go, no? See you soon. Stay safe, no? Mag-ingat po tayo, no? Ayan, maraming salamat po, no? Architect Fernandez, usap po tayo later po. Thank you so much. <laughs>